Thank you. Members, welcome to the council meeting of Tuesday the 9th of June 2020. Acknowledgement of country. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're continuing, of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present remain in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you. Members, I have no apologies or leave of absence this evening, uh, which takes us to the confirmation of the minutes from the 12th of May. And I'll look for a mover with your electronic hands, please, members. Thank you, Councillor Sims, and a seconder, Councillor Kira. Uh, if there's any discussion, if not, go back to the move to summer. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Thank you. Uh, members, we have, a, we have uh, two deputations tonight, um, which are from um, Dr. Bonnie uh, Fogelzang, uh, creating a carbon, a zero carbon city, and also Miss Colette Slight, Independent Legal Review, Hutt Street Centre. Um, I also received a deputation from uh, Miss Kelly Henderson. However, the request has not been allowed at this meeting of council, as uh, we were not given sufficient information from Miss Henderson uh, to assess the merit of the request. She has been invited to submit a future deputation request with sufficient in information to be provided. Um, so we, with that, we will go to the first deputation, which is uh, Dr. Bonnie uh, uh, Fogelson. Dr. Bonnie. There you are. Can you uh, hear me? We can hear you, Dr. Excellent. Fogelson. Excellent. Thank you, you very much. Five minutes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Lord Mayor, councillors, my name is Bonnie Vogel Zhang. I've been a resident of Adelaide City for over 10 years, and I'm a member of the Sustainable Prosperity Action Group, which arose out of a conference hosted from the Adelaide University Economics Faculty earlier this year. I'm immensely proud that Adelaide aspires to be among the world's first carbon neutral cities. Lord Mayor, I will remember you coming to Christie Walk, where I live and talking about these exciting plans, both before and since the last council elections, and we look forward to seeing you there again. For anyone not aware, Christie Walk is a sustainable medium density eco village on Sturt Street, an eco paradise as it was recently referred to quite aptly, I thought. We maintain a high profile through conducting regular tours for school groups and others, and we're well known in Adelaide and further afield. In 2019, we were shortlisted in the Carbon Neutral Adelaide Annual Awards. So the council's plans for a zero carbon future are very important to us. 
as they are to many other residents and business people in Adelaide. Of course, we're living in very strange times and I understand that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a major impact on not only businesses, but also on the income of the council. In these tight economic circumstances, I imagine that all projects are likely to be under scrutiny to see where there might be cost savings to be made. However, I would really like you to consider the following points. Rather than cutting projects, now is actually the time for governments at all levels to be investing to stimulate the economy. We should be concerned about the level, <clears throat> excuse me, of unemployment and its flow on effects on business. We should be much less concerned about levels of debt, particularly when interest rates are at a historically low level and likely to remain so. Right now, what we need is local projects that employ local people, use local materials and have lasting benefits for the community. We can combine this need with continuation of the council's strong commitment to a zero carbon city. The current economic crisis makes this an excellent time to be applying for grants from the federal government for projects that employ people, have lasting benefits to the community and tackle climate change. At Christie Walk, we're particularly eager to see continuation of the council's smart blocks, sustainable in incentives grants. We've had several subsidies under that scheme and it's encouraged and enabled us to increase our climate action ambition towards, towards larger sustainability projects each year. Transport is the next major challenge to tackle in reducing Adelaide's carbon emissions. Bikeways, efficient public transport, parking hubs outside of the city centre, increased cost of parking in the city centre are all ways that transport emissions could be tackled. We desperately need a north-south bikeway in the west of the city. Social housing, there's also an urgent need to address the increasing rates of homelessness on an ongoing basis as we come out of COVID-19, with major benefits in terms of reducing crime and stimulating the economy. I'd be very happy to talk further about these ideas and how they could be funded. Our Sustainable Prosperity Action Group is currently organising a forum to discuss these matters further and you'll be invited to participate in that. As we move out of the immediate COVID-19 health crisis, we at Christie Walk are looking to resume our educational tours. And excitingly, we're also developing virtual tours that will enable us to reach an even larger audience. We look forward to continuing to talk about the plans for a carbon neutral Adelaide as part of the story that we present to those audiences. I thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Lovely to see you again. Members, our second deputation tonight is from Ms Colette Slight uh, to speak on the independent legal review of the Hutt Street Centre and to highlight its importance to the Hutt Street precinct. So I can't see you, Colette, but welcome. Hmm. So, there we go. Let's see if that works. Thank you. Colette, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? I can hear you. We can't see can you, you, but I'm not sure if that. Um, I know, I should be able to, I can see you. Okay. Is oh. your video on? No. There we go. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. No, that's good. No, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, um, uh, Lord Mayor and Councillors. It's, uh, good, it's good to be here uh, to give this deputation on the Hutt Street Precinct. Um, as Hutt Street approaches its master planning process, uh, certainty for our precinct is paramount. The Adelaide City Council must do all that it can to provide certainty to residents, traders and key stakeholders in the street, including the Hutt Street Centre. The independent legal review that will be debated later this evening is an important way that the Council can provide clarity for the precinct 
an independent review conducted at arm's length of the council, the centre, and even the traders I represent here, is a fair and equitable way to answer this important question. While some have chosen to play politics with this issue, attempting to twist it into an argument about whether or not the community supports the provision of homelessness services, I'm here to highlight that it is not about that at all. In fact, it comes down to councillors' core responsibilities for planning, a responsibility laid out by law and conferred upon the council by the government of South Australia. Indeed, the politicisation on manipulation of this issue is unfortunate, to put it mildly. It has left a sour taste in the mouth of many local residents and businesses who merely wish to have the confidence that every business and organisation on the street is acting in accordance with the law. The Hutt Street Traders Association believes that there may be issues regarding the land use of the Hutt Street Centre. However, it is not the responsibility of the association to ensure the centre are compliant. It is a responsibility that lies solely with the Adelaide City Council. As a ratepayer and on behalf of other ratepayers I represent, I would say that this core function of council is one that we expect is delivered with due diligence. The business and resident community in the southeastern corner of the city deserves to have these long unanswered fundamental questions answered. And furthermore, they deserve to know what those answers to the questions are. What the local businesses and residents do not deserve is to be insulted with labels such as rednecks, as Councillor Martin has said, or to be accused of answering some sort of dog whistle, as Councillor Sims has said. Such commentary is incredibly inappropriate. It denigrates the ratepayers you purport to serve, denigrates the council chamber and does not do justice to what is a very complex social issue that deserves a mature argument. The traders have engaged in good faith to inform ourselves on these issues. I never thought that over the course of many months, our committee have engaged with the South Australian Housing Authority, the Don Dunstan Foundation, the state government, including the Premier and many social service providers. In doing this, we have become firm advocates for a housing first solution to homelessness and dramatically increased mental health support. We do not believe the old soup kitchen model of delivering homelessness services is appropriate during this complex age of serious drug and alcohol addiction and record mental health issues. In fact, there is evidence to suggest this outdated model actually enables rough sleepers to continue being homeless, stagnating efforts to raise them up from their circumstances and entrenching rough sleeping habits. The Hutt Street traders have attempted to have mature discussions with the centre about policy, but also other sensible measures that can be taken to improve the circumstances we are in. The last of what was over a dozen mediation sessions with the Hutt Street Centre ended unproductively with the traders sitting opposite to the centre's legal representatives, including an Italian speaking lawyer that was flown in from interstate, if well, not from overseas. That lawyer represented the Archdiocese of Adelaide, or to put it in layman's terms, the wealthy Catholic Church. The traders and residents in this part of the city are locked in a David and Goliath battle, where traders are merely asking for the council to ensure the centre, which comes under the auspices of the Archdiocese of Adelaide, are acting in line with the law. To actively refuse to answer this question would be a most serious abrogation of a fundamental responsibility the Adelaide City Council has and would put council firmly on the side of the Goliath in this circumstance. Choosing the church over the desire of other law abiding businesses to simply have this question answered. Ignorance may be bliss for some who believe this is too awkward a conversation for them to have, but it is not bliss for those that I represent who are exposed to antisocial behaviour every day. We must have this review. It is so important to the Hutt Street Precinct and it will give us confidence to move together forward so that we can rebuild what was once one of Adelaide's premier districts. Thank you.
Thank you, Colette. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you. Uh, members, that takes us to... Uh, no, there are no further deputations this evening. That takes us to 8.1, which is the petition on the free bus. Uh, if I could have a member move that we accept the petition. Sorry, Rob, I'll come to you in just one second. Um, Councillor Martin, thank you. And uh, I have, and Councillor Noel. Members to the vote, those in favour? Real hands, thank you. And thank you, that passes. Um, I, I apologise, Councillor Sims. Uh, I will just find you so that I can unmute you. Hmm. Okay, we'll do this. No. Nope. Oh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Can you hear me? I can, thank you. Thank you. Lord Mayor, I'd like to propose a reordering of the agenda, and that is that my rescission motion in relation to Hutt Street be moved to the next item of business, um, given the public interest in the matter. Ah, Councillor Sims, um, I, will, I was actually going to move that to uh, before the confidential items, um, but it is with leave of the Chamber. I'm happy to consider that. Um, Members, if so, Councillor Sims has asked that it is the next item the, on the agenda. Um, if I could have a show of hands, if you are happy to have that move to the next item on the agenda. Thank you, members. That is carried. So we will go to 17.2. And if you just give me one second so that I can reorder my papers, I will go to 17.2. So, uh, members, that was item num uh, number 17.2 on page 250 of your papers. And Councillor Sims, I will go to you. Thank uh, you now, very much. I, I have just lowered the hands. I will look for a seconder. And I think that was Councillor Martin. Correct. Thank you very much, thank Lord you. Mayor. I moved the motion as printed. Um, and thank you to you and uh, the Council for um, accepting the request to, to move this um, forward on the agenda. Pleasure. Um, Lord Mayor, the uh, discussion around this is, um, or has been ongoing um, for some time. This was discussed at the last uh, meeting of Council when Councillor Hyde um, put forward uh, this proposal for a review into the Hutt Street Centre. Following Council's endorsement of that review, this Council has uh, rightly faced a backlash from the community. Um, the decision to initiate a review into the Hutt Street Centre has rightly been condemned by people from across the political spectrum, including um, the leader of the opposition. Um, who has come out uh, opposing what the council has done. I think, Lord Mayor, that it is really appalling for this council in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of a recession, to be reviewing the work of an organisation that provides vital services to the most vulnerable people in our community. Um, the Hutt Street Centre provides about 40,000 um, meals each year and indeed over the last few months since the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, befalled our city and our country, um, there have been thousands of people who have lost their jobs and we know that in the next few months um, once uh, the government ends its JobKeeper um, packages, once um, the job seeker starts to return to normal, there will be even more people plunged into poverty in our state and in our city that will need the support of the Hutt Street Centre. This is a centre that has been doing this good work for generations. It's been there for 65 years and it provides a vital community service. And um, I, I think the previous speaker in her deputation referred to this as being a David and Goliath battle well, she's wrong when she tries to argue that the uh, Hutt Street Centre is the Goliath here. It's the Hutt Street Centre that is on the side of vulnerable people in our community. 
the most vulnerable people in our community, those that don't have a home and a roof over their head. They've advocated strongly for those vulnerable people for generations and they need that support. And I don't want to see this council going down the path of trying to waste ratepayers' money on a review that is completely nonsensical and illogical, and also to force the Hutt Street Centre to waste its own limited funds at this time when it should be prioritising getting relief out to vulnerable people in our community. I also think, Lord Mayor, that this sit sets a very dangerous precedent for planning in our city. If this decision stands, if council is allowed to press ahead with this review, then that means that any other developer or interest in our city that is not happy with a proposed development and the decision of the council assessment panel can come back to the council and ask council to revisit it. It's going to start what is a lawyer's picnic. It's going to burn through our ratepayers funds. And it's also going to waste the limited resources of an organisation that is rightly focused on helping the most vulnerable people in our community. I recognise, Lord Mayor, that maybe some members of council hadn't thought through this in detail at the last meeting, and that's why I've brought it back again tonight, so that there's an opportunity to knock this on the head and to scrap this senseless review. And uh, I really encourage all councillors to get behind this and to think about what is in the best interests of the most vulnerable people in our community. Thank you. Uh, uh, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Sorry, one moment. There we go. Thank you. Uh, I reserve my right, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I will just check the order. My apologies, my mouse. We all got tech problems. Uh, Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? There we go. Um, I, if, yep, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, colleagues, I too would like to speak in support of the rescission motion um, and without wanting to labour the points that Councillor Sims has already uh, um, expressed, um, I'd just like to provide a couple of clarifying uh, points regarding perhaps some misunderstandings that have exist among some elected members, uh, as was expressed at the committee meeting uh, last week. Um, firstly, the uh, Archdiocese of Adelaide is the landlord. It is not the auspice of the Hutt Street Centre. Uh, so you know, this is a matter about planning, and I would like to clarify the, the, the issue for members' benefit about ownership. The Hutt Street Centre is a not-for-profit company limited by guarantee. It is a registered charity. Uh, it does not make million-dollar profits, uh, but consistent with with all charities, there is a benchmark standard of operating surplus that uh, uh, governments encourage uh, the charitable uh, not-for-profit sector uh, to achieve. And that is in the vicinity of five to 15% of turnover. That then provides, that operating surplus provides organisations like the Hutt Street Centre with the capacity to then reinvest in the services that they provide. Um, uh, it, 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 it has been in existence for, uh, has been said before, decades, um, and it provides services, as Councillor Sims has said, to the most vulnerable, the, 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 the people who are homeless. The Hutt Street Centre is not a drop-in centre for uh, other people who are experiencing disadvantage who are going to be growing vastly in number. There is no question about that. The Hutt Street Centre's mission is very specific uh, that its uh, client group are uh, people who are currently homeless. And when uh, people are housed, the Hutt Street Centre's uh, um, role in supporting them moves on to support other people who are homeless and those who have been housed are then able to access other support uh, from other charities. Um, it's a misnomer uh, to suggest that uh, a, a, a charitable organisation with a turnover of some several millions of dollars is not in fact actually investing that money directly back into the services of its mission. At another point in the agenda, we're being asked to consider this evening uh, grants and I'll, I'll reserve uh, some comments for, for them. 
Um, I, I also just want to uh, finally say this issue uh, has incredibly divisive um, um, karma about it, a very bad juju. Um, if we are the council that is going to uh, choose to spend tens of thousands, potentially 50 to to $100,000 of ratepayers' money uh, investigating uh, an existing legal right, uh, then we open the door uh, and to mix my metaphors, a slippery slidey pole to every uh, single person who has a grievance against uh, the activity of a neighbour. Uh, and where do we then draw the line, councillors? Where do we draw the line? Thank you. Thank you, my apologies. Um, would anybody else like to speak? If not, I will go back to the mover to sum up. Councillor Martin, are you, you don't wish to? Sorry, I have uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Kerra, then Councillor Moran. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I suppose I just wish to reiterate that planning is and uh, has been and remains to be one of the core functions that this council is responsible for. Um, if uh, a body is acting outside of its previous approvals, then we absolutely need to know about it. This is very much just a run of the mill uh, review of the centre here uh, to make sure so that we can all have confidence um, that they're acting in line with their planning approvals. There's, it's, it's, it's not a slippery slope. Um, it's not bad karma. There's no malice attached to it whatsoever. I mean, that's why I proposed we have an independent person do it at arm's length from us, at arm's length from the traders, at arm's, arm's length from the centre. Um, uh, to suggest that this is somehow anti-homeless, um, as the rhetoric has been floating around for a little while, um, I think is is distasteful to say the least and and for councillors to actually um, uh, twist this and 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 say that it's something that it's not I mean um, uh, it's it's one thing to say that the public have um, pilloried us for it more or less um, but it's another thing altogether to go and whip up um, uh, whip up that angst and anxiety in the community and I think councillors have a lot to answer for um, the ones that have been doing that um, uh, and you know I note that well, I've noticed one person in this chamber has been running uh, Facebook ads um, on the issue, using this issue um, to boost their own profile. Obviously, okay. uh, the opposition has done the same thing. And I think it's just shameful because this is a very, very complex social issue. Um, and if you want to look at where the social issues that the city is very much on the front line of, if you want to look at where they come from, they actually come from the uh, failed uh, social inclusion policy um, of previous state governments, which dismantled uh, the mental health services at Hampstead. They dismantled mental health services um, at Glenside. They stripped away the support uh, that the vulnerable need. Uh, and so where do the vulnerable go for support? They go into the city um, and they go and access these services. And uh, it's this uh, huge uptake, this huge growth um, uh, spurred on by um, the horrible uh, methamphetamine addiction that we see in Australia, or in South Australia, in Adelaide. We are the meth capital um, of the world. That's what's actually spurred this on. Um, uh, so when we take all these things into account, we need to we need to bear all this in mind that the centre has uh, seen unprecedented growth from their previous approvals in the mid '90s at 40 visitations a day. We're now sitting at 200 visitations a day, um, and it's excellent work that they're doing, just as it's excellent work that other social service providers in South Ward and in the city do. Uh, but residents have a right to know, um, and residents have a right to to be able to be acting with confidence in their precinct to know that everyone in the street is abiding by the law. That's what we're asking for here. That's all we're asking for. Thank you. I think that was the bell. Thank you. I have Councillor Kira. 
Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I think some of my reservations have been addressed by, by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, let me just state at the outset that there is no one, I can say absolutely confidently that there is not a single councillor uh, present tonight who wants to see a reduction in services to the homeless. Let me make that absolutely clear. There is no one here who wants to see any reduction in the amount of services provided to the homeless. Um, what we have before us is a motion uh, that is essentially to rescind a decision that we made at a prior meeting. And the problem is, uh, for those who are pushing this rescission, they have not presented any new material facts that would warrant a rescission of a decision we have already made. Um, in fact, I'm led to believe um, from discussions both public and private that the only reason this rescission motion has been brought forward is the presence of Councillor Mackey. Um, with no disrespect to Councillor Mackey whatsoever, um, that, that is akin to fronting up to court uh, and, and saying uh, you know, to, uh, to the judge uh, that you wish to uh, reopen a matter that's been litigated for no other reason than there's a new lawyer at your firm. Um, it's not something that we should uh, be indulging because it sets a terrible precedent. Um, on the substantive matter, I cannot say things better than the Deputy Lord Mayor has put this. This is a very delicate topic and it is not served whatsoever by councillors seeking to politicise and to uh, take advantage for political benefit. Uh, may I reiterate, uh, may I reiterate uh, that the language that has been employed thus far um, with respect to residents and traders Residents and traders whose concerns are not illegitimate, they are not illegitimate. The language being used about them, that is, that there is dog whistling uh, by Councillor Sims. Okay. And that they we don't need to repeat them, Councillor Kerra. This is vitally important, Lord Mayor, because these councillors must be reminded at this juncture of what have they have chosen to say. Councillor Sims and Councillor Mark. Councillor Kira, you, your, your yeah. argument is on the rescission motion and we don't actually need to be repeating things that have already come into the chamber. Well, okay, I'll, I'll respect your, your decision there, but I will just say that we should reflect uh, on uh, uh, how important it is not to turn this into a polarising and an absolutely extreme discussion when it is not. We are on the same page. Um, so, Lord Mayor, I'll, I'll just reiterate to councillors, we, we, we're dealing with a, a rescission motion. We're not dealing with a, a question of the substantive issues of the Heart Street Centre, which, with great respect, Councillor Mackey, um, is not relevant here. Uh, you know, those, those, those questions of, of the, the, the financial uh, uh, background of the Heart Street Centre, we're dealing with a rescission motion. I put it to the councillors, this is not the appropriate time to do this. Thank you. Um, and the bell is very quiet, but I think we can hear them. Councillor Moran, your hand went up and then down, so I'm just checking in with you. Okay. Hang on. I will try and unmute you. Mm. There we are. There we go. Thank you. Before I start, can I just ask that you um, just repoint out to the members that they're supposed to be debating to you they're not supposed to be denigrating and naming other councillors. And I noticed that you stepped in late in the piece, but you allowed a lot to get through. And I find that very disappointing. Um, the personal abuse coming from Team Adelaide to non-Team Adelaide is ridiculous and your job to stop it. Um, I have views on this, um, but I will listen to the others before I make up my mind how to vote. Uh, could I be asked you, um, as you may not be the, may or may not be the deciding vote, if you could give your views on this uh, motion. Um, I will give my views on the motion when we get to summation, once everybody's had a chance to speak. But you are not the mover, Lord Mayor, so you won't, be, you won't be able to speak after summation. No, before summation, I'll speak. Thank you very much. So are, are you speaking to the rescission motion, Councillor Moran? No, I'm going to listen to what you have to say, Lord Mayor. So, Councillor Canal. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I can appreciate all of the, uh, the concern both ways, but we heard, a, we heard a deputation 
And I mean, they have concerns too. And this is not about whether it exists or not exists, whether it's there or not there. It's more about settling the, the conversation in the, in the first place. And that is, if there is any doubt, this will continue on and it'll just fester and it'll only uh, you know, continue the arguments, et cetera. And this is merely to say, okay, what is the circumstance? What is the reality? And once that's once you've got that out in the open, then you can deal with it, <coughs> and, and you can move on, and, uh, and then at least enable uh, uh, you know us as a council or whoever uh, has the capacity to uh, be involved uh, to settle it, has something to work with, and then also settle it. And I think that's the important part. And there's, it's, it's certainly not about uh, uh, you know making it more difficult to to look after the homeless or, or not enabling the the Hutt Street Centre to do what it does. It is though settling. Uh, concerns that others have that have a legitimate right, right to ask without it going, uh, uh, you know, on forever and then making it worse. And I think uh, uh, this way we can actually do something which will benefit the centre, but also then at least uh, stop the argument uh, because we've actually been able to find some way of resolving it through uh, knowing what, uh, you know, so that you take away all the reasons that someone can put up a conversation about it. Thank you. Okay. Members, are there any other speakers? Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, are you going to speak? I, I, I would like to hear what you have to say before I speak. Well, I'd you. like to hear what you have to say too, Councillor Martin. There's still other members that wish to speak, so. All right, look, um, I'm, I'm hearing a, a lot of seemingly sensible words um, reaching Trumpian flawed conclusions. Um, let us be very careful about this. Council administration presented a recommendation to the council assessment panel, an independent body with members who were handpicked for their skills in planning matters, including Councillor Abrahamsaday, who was not present because of his conflict, declared, I might add. Um, but what happened was, a proposal came forward to the assessment panel asking for a modernization of the premises. There's no change of use, no change to the facilities, no expansion of the footprint, just a modernization. And as uh, was um, uh, uh, according to the administration, the only sensible conclusion, the council assessment panel approved it. It sailed through. Contrary to what we've heard, um, it was according to the law. It was according to the planning rules. They had not changed. I fear what is afoot is an attempt to change the rules so that the centre can no longer honour its motto, which is to not turn anyone away. Limiting, as I suspect this investigation is all about, limiting the number of clients who can present at the centre will be catastrophic to this city. In this crisis, for example, in this pandemic, the Hutt Street Centre has been handing out food, offering showers, providing advice, directing people to available services, day in, day out, without fear for their safety. Now, that service is one of the great influences, one of the good forces in this city. And I fear that if we are to challenge their right to do so, then it will reflect poorly on this council. Of them are watching what this council does. And I say as apolitically as I can to elected members that this is the time for us to reinforce our thanks Thanks to all got the moment when we don't embrace what they do and celebrate. Now, members, please adopt this rescission motion. The original motion wasn't appropriate. It went through council in the early hours of the morning okay. when many of you weren't present. I haven't heard a bell, Lord Mayor. Uh, actually, it doesn't have anything to do with the cap decision. As councillors know, we are unable to review CAP decisions. It's nothing about that. It's actually more about the day-to-day -day functions of our planning department 
um, and ensuring that planning approvals that CAP have previously issued, or DAP as it was in the day, are complied with. It's actually got nothing to do with capital, and given it was the second time that error was made, um, I just wanted to, to highlight that. Clarification, thank you. I have Councillor Donovan. I'll just un... There. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, for me, this one is pretty simple. We've had independent advice. We've had the council's own advice. Uh, there is no, although there may be a, a group, and I certainly am um, uh, sympathetic to the views presented by the Hutt Street Traders Association and others, there's, the advice that we have had is that there is nothing controversial in the decision that has been made, whilst the outcomes might not be uh, to to the um, to the benefit of some of the groups um, or their perceived benefit. Uh, there's nothing controversial in the decision that has been made, and therefore uh, the review simply becomes a waste of taxpayers' money. So I do endorse the rescission motion because there is nothing that suggests that a different outcome will be reached. Therefore, the process is pointless. Therefore, it's a waste of money. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. I have Councillor Martin, I'm assuming is a question. Councillor Martin. Well, no, Lord Mayor, it's a point, it's a point of clarification. We just listened to the Deputy Lord Mayor say this had nothing to do with the Council Assessment Panel. May I remind members, look at your papers, page 250. The motion which you're being invited to rescind says Council notes the recent decision of the City Council's Assessment Panel to grant approval for a development application for the Hutt Street Centre. This is what it's all about, and all of the denials will not change that. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry, it's, it's my thing is not unmuting tonight. Sorry, how's that? Um, it's now the third and fourth time the error has been made, Lord Mayor. Yes, we noted the decision. What we merely noted was that CAP decided not to assess whether they were compliant. They decided not to answer that question. Ergo, it falls to us who have carriage of the day-to-day -day planning uh, regulations as the regulatory authority here to answer that question. We're not reviewing the decision of CAP. And if uh, the independent land use review comes back, um, and even if it says they're non-compliant, that does not render the renovations that they took to CAP invalid. It does not. So I just really want to be clear on Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do I have any other speakers? Just go to... And I, my apologies, members, tonight, my, um, for whatever reason, my ability to turn microphones on and off is very slow. I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, so, members, you wanted to hear what I think. I think that this is a challenge to a procedural matter. Um, it is the politics of division. I'm very sad that it actually comes into the chamber in that way. And um, there is not, this is not about homelessness services. I have 11 councillors in my chamber and 12, including myself, who are absolutely committed to ending street homelessness. And that is the work that we're doing with the Adelaide Zero Project. That is the funding that we have continued to supply to the Adelaide Zero Project, as well as direct to the Hutt Street Centre, as well as to many other organisations that are providing um, services in the city. Um, I accept that I may have the casting vote tonight. If I do, I will go with tradition in that the casting will actually stay with the status quo. Um, I am in support of the Hutt Street Centre in terms of their modernisation plans, as you call it, Councillor Martin, and was publicly saying that um, because I do, do believe they are trying to address the problems in the street. I have also met with the Hutt Street Centre, uh, both the chair and the CEO, and have discussions with them around uh, this particular motion and any concerns they may have. Um, and in terms of... Uh, looking at land intensity, they don't have any problems with that. So I'd like to put this to bed once and for all. And this is one way to do that. Um, uh, with that, I will go to the mover to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor. Sorry. Sorry, wasn't the, wasn't the mover. Oh, sorry. Oh, my apologies. Councillor Sims. Yes. 
I thought you might have given me a promotion. Uh, no. Lord you got oh, my hopes up for a minute there. Um, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I note your comments um, regarding the politics of division. Um, I agree with you, but it's not me who's been playing the politics of division, Lord Mayor. It's Councillor Hyde. He is the person who brought this matter to the council chamber. The matter had been settled and resolved. And it was Councillor Hyde who decided to kick the hornet's nest. It was Councillor Hyde who sought to begin an ugly and divisive discussion okay, ca about- Okay, Councillor, well, we no, are Lord, not um, going to- No, well, Councillor Sims, we're talking about the rescission motion with for respect, or against the rescission. Well, with respect, Lord Mayor, you stated in your comments that you were disappointed that I had brought this motion forward- I did not actually basis. say that, Councillor so Sims. So I was clarifying- um, Thank you. I was you. clarifying my comments. But we will actually keep our comments to the motions tonight instead of actually um, any mudslinging at fellow councillors. If we can continue on the rescission motion, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just want to make it clear um, that I don't accept that characterisation of how things have played out. Lord Mayor, the test of any uh, civilised society is how it treats its most vulnerable people during a crisis. And we are in the middle of a crisis. We face the worst economic circumstances we have faced in generations. We are plunging into a recession and the impact of that, even though thousands of jobs have already been lost in our state, has not yet um, been felt. And that is going to bite in the next few months. And in those difficult circumstances, the work of the Hutt Street Centre is vitally important. And so I urge all councillors to consider what message does this send to our community? And what does this say about us? If in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of this crisis, we go with a review into the Hutt Street Centre, if we back a review into an organisation that is providing such vital support at this time, surely our city is better than this, Lord Mayor. Surely we, as elected representatives are better than this. Lord Mayor, I will be calling a division tonight. I'll be taking very close note of how members vote and I'll be making sure that the community know who stood shoulder to shoulder with the most vulnerable people that live in our city because it's vitally important. We've got limited resources and what we don't wanna be doing is wasting those resources on senseless reviews such as this. Let's butt out and let the Hutt Street Centre get on with its important work. This motion tonight gives us an opportunity to end the division around this issue and to back off and let the Hutt Street focus on what is most important, that is providing support to the most vulnerable members of our community. And we should be doing everything we can to help not hinder them in that vital mission. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, members to the vote with your real hand. Thank you, those in favour of the rescission. Those against. Thank you, members. A division has been called. So if I can actually ask you to raise your hand until uh, your name is called. Uh, Jenny. No worries. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Would all those in favour of the motion please raise your hand and keep it raised until I call out your name. Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Sims. Thank you, members. That takes us on the agenda tonight to 10 point, oh no, to 9.1, my apologies, which is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority. Um, if I could have a mover, please. Thank you, Councillor Martin. And I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak at all? I'm trying to. There we go. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, a couple of questions in relation to the meeting, which is reported to us. Um, as uh, Chair of APLA, um, uh, there was no advice provided to us, um, written or verbal, 
about a significant matter that the Parklands Authority discussed, um, which has become something of a media controversy involving the removal of significant trees. Are you Brown able Hill, to provide an update? The Brown Hill Keswick Creek stormwater project Correct. has been Can deferred you for two weeks and then the advice, no, I will not because it's with APLA. They have deferred that uh, for two weeks until they can have some further information around the Brown Hill Keswick Creek project and uh, then they will send their advice through to council. Thank you. And a question for the administration. The APLA report on the uh, Lounders boat shed offers a, a fairly uh, disturbing insight into the safety of our tenants and particularly children. Will the report and draft concept plan that's mentioned come to council as part of the budget process? CEO. Sorry, I'll just unmute you. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, any, any variations to our budget will certainly come to Council. Um, uh, Clinton, could you um, respond any further than that, please? Um, Mm. Sorry, I just have to find Clinton theories. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, through the chair, uh, yeah, the Landers Boathouse plans would follow any typical process through APLA committee and then council. So yes, is the answer to the question. Um, no, uh, uh, that that wasn't the question, Lord Mayor. The question was, um, will that uh, report and concept plan come to council as part of the budget process, meaning this budget process? Is it in there? Director? Uh, I'll have to take that on notice, um, Lord Mayor, through you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Martin, um, I believe everything that goes through APLA will eventually come through Council, so I think it's on the next agenda. I, I understand that you're asking if it's in the budget, but I'm not sure. I'll we'll take it's it on notice that... and distribute an answer to you. Yeah, no, that's just, I asked it only because that's the administration comment, and I'm wondering yeah. if they're talking about this budget or some other, that's all. So, if you... Uh, as the mover of 9.1, uh, is that's it? Great, thank you. Councillor Connell, did you wish to speak at all? No, members, did you have anything else? No electronic hands. Back to the mover to sum up. <laughs> there we go. Summed up. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Thank you. We have, we go to our reports for Council. 10.1 is the Adelaide Aquatic Centre and uh, the um, uh, needs analysis, final needs analysis. Uh, members, um, with a number of items on the agenda tonight that are for noting, and I uh, would encourage members to note the reports. And uh, I have Councillor, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, and uh, Councillor Martin as a seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor, there we go. Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. I just wanted to thank the administration for um, their ongoing efforts dealing with this uh, dealing with this issue. Um, I just wanted to uh, just seek an undertaking, perhaps from the CEO, is the best way to do this. Um, that the workshop uh, will have uh, appropriate slides for consideration of alternative locations of the Aquatic Centre, should that, um, just given a number of councillors have mentioned it, I think it's worth uh, discussing in the workshop. Is that? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the workshop on the 16th will be quite detailed. We will be doing a site inspection of the current uh, facility. And yes, um, we will be able to provide any um, obvious options as far as site locations go, although no detailed investigations have been undertaken at this time yeah. regarding alternative sites. Naturally, Thank naturally. You. But even if we could just have a slide on there, sure. you know, and a couple of couple of ideas, that'd be great. That's all. Um, happy, to, uh, happy to take that. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, CEO. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, a, a question for the administration related to this. Um, uh, the media, members of the media, have been told that the Aquatic Centre may not open again after, after the COVID-19 restrictions are lifted. Um, is that correct? Is it such, uh, in such a state of uh, poor repair or can the administration refute that? CEO? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, at this time, we've made no commitment either way regarding opening or leaving the facility closed. Our intention is to provide a site inspection to council members, which is occurring on the 16th. Um, at that time, we will demonstrate to you some of the uh, concerns we have with the centre. So that is something that you need to be fully informed of. At this stage, though, we uh, are progressing towards reopening of the centre uh, should the uh, restrictions lift. It's a matter of the right timing for that to occur because we are running a facility uh, that needs to be run at a level that is economically viable before we reopen. Um, and so we are considering a, bit, a variety of matters um, and we will certainly endeavour to do with the best we can with reopening. Uh, we'll provide further information to Council on the 16th. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, um, just so I'm clear, the CEO is saying the question of reopening is related to restrictions and the economic viability of the centre, not the state of repair. Through you, uh, Lord Mayor, the intent is to uh, monitor the uh, limitations by way of participants being able to use the centre. That is the reason that we closed in the first place. Um, the lifting of those restrictions will enable Council to make an informed decision to reopen. The intention, though, is to report back to Council for that decision to be made. Thank you, okay. Councillor Martin. Well, I'm still not clear, but I, I think I'm getting the message. Okay. And look, uh, I just want to say uh, um, a thank you to the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm in complete agreement with him about the upgrading or replacement of the Aquatic Centre. It's a very rare thing for us to agree, Lord Mayor. It's a happy occasion. Um, and I too would ask that the administration take on board that we have been presented with a very few number of options from one consultant four options in fact, and there are, uh, to my reckoning, at least a dozen others, um, can I have an assurance that we will approach uh, a variety of options, not just those identified by one consultant in one report? CEO? Yep, you have to yes, we'll do that, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have Councillor Canole. But just really short. Um, I too support that we look at all options of contact with Council so that we can come up with a solution for the city. And it is, it is very important uh, that we think about the actual city itself and, and where we have any potential opportunities to put it and deliver a great uh, uh, you know, a centre uh, and also maybe satisfy a few of the other uh, attraction needs that the city has. So thank you. Thank you. Mm. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, I'm having trouble unmuting you. I have no more speakers, so if oh, you would sorry. like to sum up. Um, uh, yes, just to reiterate the great work that's been done. On mm. Discussion came out through rather unusual circumstances, um, uh, but I think we're... I think, I think we heard you. Yeah, Your connection's okay. breaking up. That's right, I'm done. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour? Show of hands, thank you. Those against, that is carried. Uh, this takes us to 10.2, which is the city-wide business model. Um, and I will look for a mover. And so I have Councillor Martin and a seconder. Oops. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. And <laughs> uh, I will go to Councillor Martin. Um, yeah, look, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm, I'm moving an alternative motion. Um, and the alternative motion is very similar uh, to the one that's there. 
um, except I'm proposing that at one, after 1999, we add the words um, following a comma. Um, in, uh, sorry, while words are, quote, while continuing current funding and support for precinct groups, full stop, while continuing current funding and support for precinct groups, full stop. And then at three, um, after the words for the subsidiary, mm -hmm. comma, including a diverse board whose membership will include representative slash s representative slash s of the precinct groups so i will look so uh, members i'm going to ask you to put your hands down so that i look for a seconder for that amendment So, Councillor Kerra, I'm just checking. Are you second? I got, sorry, I need um, electronic hands, so I can't. So, I'll do that. So, members, I'm looking for a seconder for that. Councillor Sims. Thank you. Councillor Martin, should you wish to speak to that? Um, yeah, look, Lord Mayor, um, I, I, I do support um, this uh, city wide um, business model. I, I, um, I know that it's a, a passion of uh, many of my colleagues. Um, and supported by you. Um, but I do believe that we need to take into account the particular role that's played by precinct groups. Um, our main streets are vital for economic activity in this city. And especially at this time when we know that the city economy is struggling, uh, to have them on the ground, uh, uh, providing direction to main streets, um, and uh, uh, vitality and economic um, stimulus is just so vital. It really is important. They are the people who will help to guide us uh, through the consequences of this pandemic. Now, that's not to say that there isn't room for a much broader overarching body, but let's not throw out the baby with the bathwater. Um, let's have that model. Let's have the funding it requires in whatever clothing it is, whether it's um, a, a remodeled um, uh, body along the lines that's proposed in the uh, recommendation, or whether it looks like uh, something completely different. But um, uh, the absolute minimum for me is, and I hope my colleagues agree, is a continuation of the funding for these various groups around the city. You know, in uh, financial terms, it is very little money that we offer them. But, uh, you know, from uh, Chinatown to Hutt Street to North Adelaide and all points in between, they provide us with a great model uh, that we can continue to harness for the city's benefit, while at the same time moving forward with this uh, broader model. Uh, and I would just add uh, uh, one uh, word of caution in respect of the citywide business model. Um, we have heard from a, a large number of people, uh, and in fact, we discussed it at the committee, including the Citywide Business Collective, who are saying, look, it needs a bit more consultation. Um, they're not against it, they support it. They're just asking, please, a bit more consultation. So, you know, I would ask that that happens in the formulation of the model. But the intention here is to provide support for a continuation of the good work of the precinct groups, while at the same time acknowledging that we are moving forward with a new business model for the city. Thank you. I have uh, Councillor Sims. I've reserved my right. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I have Councillor Canal. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, someone. Um, yeah, look, I, I don't have an overall problem. A question to the administration. 
uh, it, when we're using the words precinct groups, uh, do we also uh, uh, say that it, it encompasses uh, also uh, business groups, et cetera, as well, not just precinct? I mean, precinct groups, I agree, are fundamental, but uh, are business groups involved as well, because we do need to engage with all of the, uh, the various stakeholders to make sure that we're able to deliver and also accept information. So just a question. Hi. Thank you. Uh, so, Councillor Mackey, you're speaking to the alternate motion. Councillor Mackey, sorry, there we go. Oh, sorry, Councillor Mackey, one moment. It, there we go. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to support the principle, and I think there seems to be a, a, a strong level of support within council, including from yourself, Lord Mayor, for uh, the move toward a citywide business model. I'm, I'm very happy to support uh, Councillor Martin's um, amendment uh, to the motion, uh, particularly as regards uh, assuring the continuation of funding uh, for the established precinct associations. Um, I think I may have mentioned this at a, at a workshop uh, pre, uh, prior to my um, uh, prior to my swearing in uh, that uh, nearly a quarter of a century ago I was involved with the um, leading the merger of two pre-existing precinct associations, each of which almost 25 years ago uh, received twenty thousand dollars a year in core uh, core grant uh, from the council. Um, that uh, that. Uh, became 40,000 for a period of, of one or two years from memory. And uh, surprise, surprise, a quarter of a century later, the level of grant support to those precinct associations remains in the vicinity of $20,000 a year. Uh, I know this is not the point uh, in, in, and the purpose of the motion to be litigating or debating uh, uh, that, and it's certainly not the fault of the current council uh, that there has been a quarter of a century of um, inertia uh, I, I fundamentally believe in the importance of the precinct associations. They should be at the table. And I also very much would like to see, and I hope it doesn't require a further um, amending of the, the motion, uh, but an undertaking from the administration that uh, the consultation with uh, a diverse stakeholders to, uh, to achieve the, the best uh, option uh, at the end of the day can be independently um, mediated or, or, or facilitated is perhaps a better word um, uh, because um, there have been several attempts over the last quarter of a century to achieve a, 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 a business model evolution uh, and each time that those efforts have failed has cost another eight to ten years as the dispirited, demotivated, disillusioned uh, precinct business operators uh, retreat back uh, into uh, self-survival uh, and it, it undermines the potential of those precinct groups. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. I have Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Kira, then Councillor Kouros, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, and you were having a few troubles with your reception tonight, so. Yes, is that is that clearer, Lord Mayor? We can, yeah, I can see you, yep. Better, good. I've just these are thick walls over here. I've had to move outside. Um, I, I've got an amendment um, which I meant to move as an alternative, but I missed the boat on that. Uh, I'd like to put that amendment. I understand Jenny has it. I look for a seconder. Uh, I think Councillor Kira is your hand. Okay, Councillor Kira, I've got your. If you would like to speak to that, Deputy Lord Mayor. Yeah, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, this is uh, fairly straightforward. It addresses the primary concerns. Um, that the business community have with this. Um, those concerns are uh, that it would merely be an expanded RMMA, um, which I hope have been adequately quashed, but I just wanted to put clearer wording in there to create a new subsidiary of council. It still satisfies our timeline requirements so that we are basically starting with the RMMA charter, hitting delete on all the words that are in there and starting again, uh, but it makes it very clear and puts to bed any uh, doubt in the community that that's what we're doing. Um, at three, it also requests that consultation, such as a series of roundtables will occur, will, will occur with the broader City of Adelaide business community and the precinct groups in the development of the draft charter. Um, uh, now, we're not actually at the point, we haven't seen what the citywide business model 
um, uh, can be yet. We haven't seen what it will become. Um, so we shouldn't actually be at the point where we are uh, locking in the old model, uh, which is apparently going to be layered through the citywide business model. I don't think that's what we're here to do. We're actually here to completely rethink how the city's uh, business community uh, operates and the nature um, and the volume of the support that it receives from the council. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to entrench um, uh, what are clearly uh, failed models. Now, our precinct groups do a wonderful job with the resources that they've got at their disposal. What I would suggest is that an economic development agency, um, which is what the uh, RMMA uh, reimagined charter will become, an economic development agency actually should be providing a huge amount of administrative um, and professional support to the precinct group so that they should continue um, to benefit from that. And when I'm talking about support, I'm talking about uh, marketing and communications plans for their particular precincts and all manner of other resources. Um, uh, we shouldn't just be locking in the old uh, grant-based funding model here. We'll give you some money and off you go, off to your own devices. Um, because these are very busy, uh, small business people, and they do their best, but they are volunteers at the end of the day. They need the professional support that the Economic Development Agency would, in my mind, provide them with. Um, uh, that's my view um, of it. I don't think we should be locking in that old model at this point. It may well come to it and we decide that we do want to give grants, but we need to assess that alongside the citywide business model, uh, looking, at, uh, looking at the fuller picture. Um, that's what this is about, but it's in particular uh, about giving those businesses um, that are interested, including the business collective and the precinct groups and any other businesses that perhaps are yet unengaged in this process, giving them the opportunity to sit down with our administration. Um, uh, it doesn't canvas it, but potentially with yourself, Lord Mayor, would be valuable around that round table um, to elicit from them what they want to see in an economic development agency. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. That, that very faint thing is the bell. Um, I have Councillor Kira, then Councillor Martin, then Councillor Mackey. Councillor Kira, sorry, there you go. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm somewhat confused. We've got cascading amendments. I, I had an amendment too, but it's very similar. It's been covered uh, by Councillor, uh, by the Deputy Lord Mayor's amendment. Uh, I speak in favour of the Deputy Lord Mayor's amendment, which I assume, just for clarification, we are now. Uh, de deliberating on the Deputy Lord Mayor's amendment as an old, as a substitution for the for the amendment put forward by Councillor Martin, is that right? So one was an alternate motion, and this is an amendment. So okay. this is the one we're talking to now. Okay, we're talking to this. Uh, set, okay, in exclusion of the other. Um, I speak in favour of this. I think the uh, principal concern that I have encountered as a councillor uh, is the um, is the misunderstanding. Uh, about the nature of the new body. Let me just stress uh, for all the precinct groups, all of the stakeholders who are watching, this is about the creation of a new body. Um, it is simply uh, the RMMA, uh, it's just the instrument by which we get to that uh, in the most efficient way, but this is the creation of a new body. Uh, I wholeheartedly support uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor's comments in relation to this amendment. I, I wholeheartedly support this, uh, this amendment. This is the best way to go forward. Thank you. Councillor Kira, I have Councillor Martin. Um, Lord Mayor, I don't suppose that the uh, the mover of the amendment would accept a slight variation to acknowledge a, a continuation of funding for precinct groups. Deputy Lord Mayor, that's a Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, I'm not looking to lock us into that at this stage. So no. That would be a, a not at this stage, Councillor Martin. Okay. Well, look, I I, um, I will speak against this. Um, I, I think the problem for our precinct groups is that they fear this is uh, the means by which their funding will be dismantled uh, and they will be left to pursue um, the goals that they have uh, from their own resources which will necessarily mean uh, disengaging uh, coordinators um, uh, and adding to the burden of volunteers by requiring them not only as volunteers to attend meetings but to complete funding applications to the city wherever that's possible to provide minutes um, and to provide um, the city with advice about uh, individual issues. Um, 
And I think also uh, for many of them, uh, there is uh, the echo of the past and uh, Councillor Moran and Councillor Mackey uh, might well remember that we had such a body previously, um, which the name of which I cannot recall. Uh, I can remember its demise, however, and it lasted for a very short period of time because it was considered by those in areas outside of the, uh, the Rundle Mall precinct uh, to be unrepresented and unloved. Um, uh, I fear um, history will repeat itself. Certainly, I know lots of people in the, uh, the precinct movement are feeling that way as well. So I am disappointed about this. Um, the certainty that we could have offered to the precinct associations would have, I, I, I'd have hoped, seen this citywide business model not only adopted, but, but embraced. Um, and now I, I fear that uh, its progress uh, certainly won't be enhanced by uh, ignoring, uh, consolidating, um, uh, you know, the uh, precinct associations within the landscape of the city of Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. I'll just, there we go, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I would really encourage um, Councillor Hyde to uh, consider uh, incorporating the uh, point that uh, uh, Councillor Martin uh, is making with regard to the existing, established, long established uh, uh, precinct associations. There are, there are thousands, probably tens of thousands of hours of effort uh, gone into building those little community uh, organisations, uh, community of, of business uh, uh, organisations. Um, I, I, we're not talking about five years of, fu of funding security. They lurch from year to year as is. And, and I think it's more than reasonable, particularly given that we are only a matter of weeks away from the start of a new financial year, uh, that in this journey, uh, toward a successful citywide business model that we can provide those organisations at least, at the very least, uh, with the assurance uh, that they can continue to contract uh, their part-time coordinators um, and to provide some hope that, that they will, in fact, be able to exist in order to make representations around the roundtables that must occur if we are going to see a successful uh, citywide business model emerge from this. It cannot come from the top down. It has been percolating up uh, from those precinct associations and no doubt from other um, uh, groups and, and individuals. Uh, let, let, let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. These are, these are established networks uh, of connectedness uh, uh, within our precincts and uh, we, we ought to be recognising that. Uh, so, you know, Councillor Hyde, again, I, I urge you to consider incorporating the words uh, that Councillor Martin uh, included in, um, in his initial variation. Thank you. I have Councillor Kuros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just oh, want uh, clarification in regards to this motion. This is, uh, or this recommendation that um, is, uh, that Councillor um, or Deputy Lord Mayor has brought forward. This is for the citywide um, business model. This has got nothing to do, as I understand it, in regards to the funding for the precincts. That's all part of the budget, correct? I would like administration to confirm that we will be discussing the precinct groups as uh, funds that they get each year as part of the, the budget. Can I have Mayor? that? Yeah, through, you, through you, Lord Mayor. I consider this motion to be an enabling motion, one that enables the administration to progress to develop a charter for you to consider. Uh, it has no, in no way reflects the current or future arrangements, both operational or financial of the precinct groups. That's a matter for council to determine at a later date. Exactly. So I'm thinking that we're all getting a bit off topic here and we're, we're stepping sideways instead of stepping forward. The precinct groups really want to step forward. And this is an enabling motion, as the CEO has said, for us to proceed 
to go forward regarding the citywide business model. We, you still will be able to fund the precinct groups through the matter that we do through the budget. So let's not confuse the two together and confuse everybody out there who's listening here. We have gotten this far. We've people got confused over the RMMA. So, you know, we've we've all discussed that. We're very clear where we are now. This is about proceeding forward with the charter where the precinct groups will sit at that table to talk about that modeling. They still have this power. They still have this consideration. They still have a say. No one's taking anything away from them and no one is taking any funding away from them. So I urge all, all of you to think about that and just think about what this recommendation is about and just focus on that. And then when we talk about the budget, we will talk about what we will be giving the precinct groups as we do every year. We all value them. We all value what the work that they do. But let's not sidestep. Let's just go forward. Let's stop confusing everybody. Thank you. I have Deputy Lord Mayor and then Councillor yes. Moran Councillor and Councillor Councillor Kouros asked the question I was going to ask. Um, I have no desire to defund them um, immediately. And I... Oh, we've lost you. Sorry. Yes, sorry, sorry. Uh, Councillor Kouros answered, asked the question I was going to ask, so it's all good. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I have Councillor Moran, then Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran, just one moment, Councillor Moran, it just takes a moment to unmute. Thank you. Yep. All right. yep. uh, look, I, I hear what the Lord Mayor is saying and I hear the interpretation that Councillor Kouros has put to this, but the fact that the Deputy Lord Mayor won't ensure the survival of the precinct groups and refuses to make that small adjustment uh, tells me loud and clear as an experienced councillor that this is a move that will eventually get rid of the precinct groups. Um, don't, don't be in two minds about that. The precinct groups know that. Um, and they fear it and uh, nothing will save the precinct groups unless that's specifically put in the motion as Councillor Martin said. It's a kick, into, kick in the teeth to loyal people who've worked hard over the years and uh, have a great accumulated knowledge of their area and the businesses in that. Uh, the precinct groups are valuable and we should value them. But if you vote for this, Bank no bones about it. This is a move to get rid of the precinct groups. I've discussed this move in previous councils with Team Adelaide members, and this was the route that was suggested. So don't don't, don't pull the wool over our eyes. Um, I, I know the CEO speaks honestly, but this is a step to getting rid of the precinct groups. Otherwise, why would the Deputy Lord Mayor? not incorporate the suggestions of Councillor Matthew Sims and Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sims? Exactly, uh, Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran has hit the nail on the head. If Councillor Hyde has no plans to uh, defund the, the precinct groups and has no concern around that, why not simply allay the concerns that are mounting in the community and among the precinct groups by including um, Councillor Martin's wording in his motion. I think there is a lot of concern within the precinct groups. I've received a number of emails about this um, over the last few weeks. And um, I think we do need to allay those concerns. I also want to make the point that as we're confronting a really serious economic crisis, people who have the experience and have been working in the business, small business sector for a long period of time and residents as well through the precinct groups, and bring a lot of corporate knowledge to the table. And I think that's, that's really, really important. And uh, I don't want that to be lost. And I don't want them to um, face the prospect of being deprived of funding for a long period of time. So I'd really encourage Councillor Hyde to you know, heed the warning that is coming from experienced councillors like Councillor Mackey, Councillor Moran, Councillor Martin, I mean, these are people that have been around uh, council for a very long period of time. And um, I, I'd encourage you to listen to what they say, Councillor Hyde, and um, you know, maybe incorporate some of their suggestions. 
Thank you. Councillor Kuros, did you have a question? Sorry, I'm just trying to unmute you. I do have go. a question. I would just like administration to clearly uh, lay out what their understanding is of the recommendation that is before them. I want that to be clearly said in regards to what their understanding is. CEO? Three or I think I've really explained that already. Um, the, um, the recommendation before us um, ensures that we consult with, through a series of roundtables, ensures we consult with um, the broader Adelaide community, uh, business community, and specifically the precinct groups. So that'll be something that we would do, obviously, as part of this uh, requirement. Um, and as I said earlier, um, any future funding decisions are made on an annual basis by council uh, as part of the budget process, as, as they always have done. So there's no change to that this time. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Councillor Kira. Just a point of clarification, Lord Mayor. Uh, it is being asserted that the this is the death or the end of the precinct groups. How is that possible under this amendment? How is that possible under this amendment when the precinct groups are actually specified uh, as being subject to consultation uh, and when the final makeup of the body is completely subject to the, uh, to the council? Thank you. I will go to now. Councillor Moran, did you have your hand up again for a question? Sorry, sorry, yes. Councillor Moran. Is when does a point of clarification by the CEO become entering the debate? I don't believe he was entering the debate. I think he was answering the question. He'd already answered the question before, though. I'm a little sick and tired of some members using the administration to further the cause and put the administration in a very difficult position. And I'd ask them to I stop. I think that was just asking for clarity, Councillor mm. Moran. Um, members, I have uh, Councillor Mackey and then I think just Councillor Mackey. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Okay. Uh, just a question uh, to um, uh, uh, the administration. Given the delayed process for the budget, um, and we have in the state government, public sector environment, um, similar situations, and the enablement of funding to continue to enable the cash flowing. So, of, so Councillor um, Mackey, you've, sorry, Councillor Mackey, you've already spoken to the amendment, so I can only get a question um, from you. I am asking the question, Lord Mayor. Um, when will the, um, uh, the budget process uh, uh, be in a position for elected members to provide certainty of the continuation of funding uh, at the existing level, at least at the existing levels for the existing precinct associations? Uh, thank you. Director, oh, Deputy CEO, did you want to answer that? Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. So um, on the 28th of May, when we shared with you revised uh, timeline, as well as um, what was in the proposed draft budget from a project perspective, um, precinct funding was in there for the 2020-2021 budget. Um, so that is in there at the moment. Um, we also talked you through the expenditure framework. So noting that we won't have an endorsed budget until uh, slightly later in the year, we're proposing um, an expenditure framework endorsed and considered by council by the end of June to enable things like grant programs, uh, funding for precinct groups uh, and, and general operations. So for that expenditure to commence uh, from the 1st of July. So um, if we you know, continue on the uh, path we're on, um, we should have an expenditure framework in place um, by the end of the month. Thank you. Uh, let me see. Um, so Councillor Martin, is that a question? Yes, it is um, to the uh, deputy CEO. So at what meeting would the elected body be asked to approve precinct funding? What, what is the date of that meeting? Sorry, I've lost you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, not Deputy Lord Mayor, sorry, Deputy CEO. There you go. Thank you. Uh, Tuesday, the 23rd of June at this um, moment. 
Okay, I'm happy about that. Thank you. Thank you. Members, I will go to the mover to sum up, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Is that, um, is that sound clearer, Lord Mayor? Yes, that is better. Oh, good. Thank God. Um, uh, talk about the politics of division, Lord Mayor, the fear mongering that we are somehow cutting the precinct groups when it's been clarified by the CEO and the Deputy CEO that we will be considering their funding for the oncoming financial year the same way that we've considered their funding in many, many years gone past. Um, uh, it's it's just absurd, um, and they're trying. Well, they're, there is an attempt to conflate the issues. If we can, if we can have a sum up on the amend, on the uh, uh, amendment, that would be great. Well, I feel, Lord Mayor, that I have to make it clear that my motion is about a citywide business model, uh, which is laying the groundwork, as the CEO said, an enabling motion uh, for us to, as Councillor Kura said, take a step forward take a step forward. And that means uh, the council needs to start, the admin need to start the crucial work on this charter, on the Adelaide Economic Development Agency um, and all the various facets relating to that. The discussion about the precinct groups will come uh, at another time and there's no need to attempt to secure that um, uh, right now and, and uh, levying uh, accusations and assertions that somehow we wish to defund them is just completely inaccurate. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Completely inaccurate. I'll, I'll leave it there because everyone can, it's very transparent what's going on here. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? So that is carried. That Sorry. Um, sorry, I'm just, my button's not working again. Uh, so that now becomes a substantive and I go back to the mover, who was Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, I'm really sorry, these buttons are very slow tonight. Councillor Martin. Thank you. Um, look, I, I, um, I just want to say uh, that uh, contrary to any uh, assertion that's been made, uh, my intention is merely to provide confidence to the precinct groups to move forward and to embrace a new model. And we could have done that by guaranteeing them not only a chance to have a chat at a series of roundtables, but by guaranteeing them participation in the new model. Uh, and that would have, I believe, from my discussions with them, given them the comfort to proceed without the, the kind of fear that um, is being uh, described as somehow inappropriate. Um, people do fear the new, that's not unreasonable. Um, it's our mm -hmm. job to help them move forward and an assurance of the kind I proposed would have done so. Um, I regret very much that um, we're not in the business of assurance. Thank you. Members, if there's no other speakers, we will go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. All right, members, thank you. That takes us to 10.3 which is the undergrounding funding application uh, 252 South Terrace Development. And I will look for a mover, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. No, Councillor Martin, sorry. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, look, uh, I know the individual concerned. I do not believe I have a conflict of interest, but uh, I will for um, the sake of any risk to clear a perception of interest. I will not speak or vote, but I will remain in the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, so members, I'm now looking for a mover. Councillor Moran, you moving? Sorry, Councillor Moran, there we go. Could I ask um, the administration advice? I also know the, um, the proponent. I don't believe I have a conflict of interest. Um, could, could I have some advice from the administration? 
Absolutely. Um, financial dealings, partnership, it is a social um, friendship. Yep. Brady? Uh, through the Lord Mayor, um, in regards to perceived conflicts of interest, no, noting, of course, that it's ultimately council members' uh, judgment call, um, you need to look at whether the, uh, from the perspective of the reasonable, impartial and fair-minded person, a perceived conflict of interest or conflict of interest would be in place. So it is a judgment call. Um, I think just knowing the applicant, in my view, doesn't necessarily establish that because a lot of people know uh, a lot of people in Adelaide. If you were to have a very strong friendship relationship or a very strong business relationship, that would be a different matter altogether. So in, it's a judgment call, but uh, in my view, it doesn't necessarily meet the threshold. Uh, well, in that case, I will differ from Councillor Martin. I have a friendship, no business dealings, no financial association. So I'm happy to move the motion. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I'll look for a seconder. I have Councillor uh, Donovan. Yes, thank you. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to the motion? I'll just briefly, uh, th these applications are few and far between. I would like to see more of them. Um, our undergrounding is basically ground to a halt. Um, so these individual uh, rare applications are gold and I hope you vote for it. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I lost you, Councillor Donovan, because my screen changed. <laughs> Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak? Only to say uh, I'm supportive of the motion. This is exactly why the scheme exists and uh, this is exactly the sort of application that we should be supporting. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, just very, very quickly, uh, very happy to support this and very happy to be uh, considering any future option to accelerate uh, the undergrounding of power uh, in the city of Adelaide. It's one of the biggest obstructions to the further greening of our city streets, uh, the existence of power, power lines, um, and um, uh, other jurisdictions have managed to, uh, uh, to achieve an accelerated program uh, that uh, is cost shared and uh, it creates jobs and it creates a better environment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Kira. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. I, I'm in agreement. I just have a very quick question on the administration. Uh, just on undergrounding in general, I'm, I, I'm really in favour of it. I think it should be, um, you know, pushed forward. I'm, I'm surprised there's so many uh, sections of the city that, that don't have it. But what does the administration say, just quickly, uh, to the reservation about undergrounding that was raised, I think, by the state member for Adelaide, that uh, when you do have undergrounding, if there's a problem uh, with the power network in that location, you suddenly have a much bigger cost. You've got to dig up the ground where previously you could just go and fiddle with the wires above the ground. Um, if you don't have a, a, you know, happy to, to take it on notice and, and you know, get back to you after, after that, but it's just raised uh, now because it has come up, so. CEO, did you wish to answer that? Through Lord Mayor, it would be good to take that on notice and circulate it to council members following the meeting. Thank you. Uh, members, uh, I will go back to Councillor Moran to sum up. Sum up. Thank you. Thank you. Members, to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Thank you. We have 10.4, which is significant tree removal, Lefebvre Park, Nantuwama, in part six. And I will look for a mover. Sorry, members, I'm looking for a mover for 10.4. Thank you, Councillor Canole. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak? Yeah, just quickly. I mean, uh, we have gotten a, a really lengthy report now on, uh, on the purpose and the reason for uh, removing the tree. It is in the middle of the, of the, as, as, you know, the group of trees. And, uh, oh, well, I mean, uh, it, it's, if it's deemed by the, by the arborist to be important to be able to do this, then uh, it, whether it's a year or a couple of years down the track, it doesn't make much difference. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? No. Um, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Knoll to sum up. Summed up. 
Mem members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to uh, uh, 10.5, which is the 2021 grant recommendations, recreation and sport, arts and cultural community development. And I will look for a mover. I have Councillor Martin. I'm looking for a second electronic hands, members. Um, I have Councillor Mackey as a seconder. Um, Councillor Martin, there you go. Oh, sorry, Councillor Martin. Mm. Um, sorry, Councillor Martin, I'm, I apologise. It is not unmuting. There we go. How's You're that? Up. Yep, that's great. Okay. Uh, look, the second of May wish to uh, hold that um, because I'm proposing an alternative motion, uh, not a dramatic one, uh, change, but um, the motion as is, but 1.3.5, Brian Burdekin Clinic, $40,000 for one year, I'm proposing should read 40000 a year for three years. Okay, I will look for a second for... Um, sorry, Councillor Mackey, your hand is up. I'm just asking if that is... If you are still wishing to second that. Sorry, Councillor Mackey, you are muted. No, I just need a... I just need your hand. How's that? How's yep, that? I need to go back um, to Councillor Martin first. I just need to know if you're seconding it. Uh, can I ask a question, Lord Mayor, before seconding it? You may. Um, uh, Councillor Martin, uh, just for clarification um, on your 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 um, intention, has the Burdekin Clinic applied for um, a longer funding, or have they applied to a program uh, which, which is one uh, an annual program? Uh, my understanding, Lord Mayor, through you, is that. The Burdekin Clinic has applied in the expectation of a, a three-year grant, as is consistent with um, uh, most of the applicants. Um, and uh, the administration has uh, commented that the application was such that it doesn't want to approve more than one year's funding. Okay. Thank you. That's a... um, so, Councillor Mackey, I'm just asking if you're seconding that. Yeah. If not, I'll go to the floor, look for a seconder. Uh, I'll, I'll second yeah. that. Thank you. Councillor Martin, if you'd like to speak to it. Sorry, Councillor Martin. Just one moment. Can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Um, look, uh, this is, uh, I hope, not contentious. Um, let me make it clear that uh, this funding is not for a medical clinic. The Brian Burdekin Clinic does offer medical services, but this is for another part of their operation, which retains uh, health and well-being staff whose task it is uh, to provide a, a holistic wraparound service um, for hundreds of uh, the city's vulnerable. Uh, uh, the clinic coordinates appointments that is the health and well-being section, um, not just for uh, other consultants who may or may not be medical, but uh, just as uh, uh, one example for uh, transgrouping uh, isolated and vulnerable residents to things like gyms, um, because the vulnerable sometime, uh, sometimes have injuries and so they need transport to get to a gym, not having a vehicle or the means to get there in order to do exercise to strengthen uh, a muscle or a limb or whatever. Um, they also identify people who need help with shopping. Now, I, I know that um, uh, most of us um, uh, have no trouble going to the supermarket to shop. Some people do because of uh, uh, their inability to move from their home, because of uh, a variety of issues. And so uh, the service takes them to places like the central market. In fact, 
uh, uh, anyone in the central market would be familiar with um, uh, people being guided around by Burdekin Clinic staff and shown which kinds of foods to purchase. Now, in addition, uh, the clinic has helped in the past uh, uh, with, for example, arranging funerals. Uh, often the vulnerable don't have family nearby, um, uh, don't have friends to whom they can turn. And so the health and wellbeing staff assist with such basic tasks as contacting undertakers and arranging funerals. Now, I accept that the, uh, the forms that were completed by the clinic, um, which by the way, turns no one away, uh, turns no one away. The forms were not completed to the satisfaction of the administration, but that doesn't mean that the clinic um, is not doing the job. It just means they're not really good at form filling. And uh, I would welcome, uh, and I think they too would welcome the administration assisting them with the process of lodging an application so that they are eligible and can continue to help hundreds of the city's vulnerable. Now, um, it, I'm contending, and it is necessary for them to have certainty moving forward, that if we're satisfied they're doing such a good job that we can give them a year's funding, um, we can agree to three as they have had previously, and we can make sure that in the future, the application process is completed to the satisfaction of the administration. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, just trying to unmute Councillor Mackey. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I appreciated the uh, opportunity and committee uh, for uh, this set of recommendations to, uh, uh, to be tabled uh, and for there to be some discussion. Um, I, I uh, respect the continuing uh, uh, journey of evolution uh, of uh, our approach to grant funding. Um, I, I certainly am in favour of um, supporting this set of administration recommendations. Thank you. Um, thank you. I will go to now, who do I have next? I actually have uh, Councillor Moran first and then I've got Councillor Kira and Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I won't be supporting the extension from one to three years. This is always, this is a historical um, grant over the years that was given for a long time without any detailed plan. The last detailed plan we had that it was a, to employ a nurse at the Nanaka Park Lands to, to look, look at uh, homeless people there, which we thought was very unsafe. Um, most of the, it, this is at the end of the day a GP practice. Most of the things are covered by Medicare. Uh, health and well-being. I, I think they do a marvellous job, but the I think the phrase that worry, has worried us over the years is, no, they're not good at filling out forms. Well, I'm sorry, you have to fill out the forms. And the detailed plan isn't there. It's not clear where the money money is going from. And I think that's why we have been careful to make it one year at a time. As I said, for most of my time in council, Money's just been handed over to the Brian Burdekin Centre. And I think until Jane Lomack Smith said, or oh, I might be taking her name in vain, but somebody, some, a Lord Mayor at the time said, no, no, we have to make this organisation fill out the forms and detail where the money's going like everybody else does. And it sounds like they still are not doing that. Bad at filling out forms is not good enough. This is public money. I say we take it step by step, year by year, and keep a close eye on how this GP practice uh, spends its money. Thank you. Thank you. I have Councillor Kerr, followed by mm. I, the Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Corus and Councillor Abraham today. Well, Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'd like to echo and uh, echo the caution and the prudence uh, espoused by Councillor Moran, uh, coming from experience, which I think we must listen to here. Um, I have had a motion that was submitted earlier for an amendment. Um, I'm just a bit confused as to whether that should be submitted at this juncture or prior. You can put your amendment up now if you want. Yeah, if we, to. Could, if we could, if the administration could put that up, please. Can everybody see that? If you perhaps would like to just um, for the yeah. members read the bits that you've changed. Yeah. It, it, 
Well, it, it states to, to approve the existing uh, amounts for one year only, um, pending approval of the budget, uh, and on top of that, to ensure that future funding is subject to review of guidelines. Um, I'd seek a seconder for this, obviously. So, uh, I've got lots of hands up, so I, I'll just... Um, so I have Deputy Lord Mayor, are you seconding? Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, I will just state at the outset uh, to stave off any politicisation, uh, and I will just reiterate, uh, no one, no one in this council wants to see any reduction in the amount of money and resources uh, uh, applied to homeless services. There is no one, and this motion is not about reducing the amount provided to homeless. In fact, uh, it may well be after review of guidelines that there is an increase to the amount supplied to homeless services. So I do hope uh, that councillors uh, take heed and do not seek to politicise uh, uh, this motion, which is, which is about uh, prudence and caution, particularly given uh, the uh, situation we have encountered with, uh, with COVID. Um, now, can I be heard at the moment or...? You can be. Okay. Um, what this is about is doing exactly what Councillor Moran has said, uh, is, is ensuring that we go year by year. It is also about ensuring that councillors are actually uh, kept up to speed on the details of where the money goes to and who it goes to. It may be that there are homeless providers uh, who are missing out. Uh, it may be that there is a more efficient and better way for homeless funding to be spent. But in general, it's about a lot more than homeless. There are substantial amounts of money being given to substantial groups. Uh, Ratepayers have every right uh, to expect that councillors exercise uh, their decision when it comes to grants in a way that is informed. And this ensures that we are informed. It, it says that we have a review of the guidelines. It's well overdue. Uh, and I would, uh, I, I would commend to councillors that this is the sensible way to go forward. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. I'll go to the Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Is that clear enough? Yes, that's good. Thank you. Um, uh, absolutely want to echo uh, Councillor Kira's concerns um, and also what I think are an extension of Councillor Moran's concerns as well. Um, uh, in fact, I think uh, given, given that uh, nugget of history that Councillor Moran has bestowed upon us, the fact that uh, we're giving a GP clinic um, uh, funding year on year, despite the fact, I mean, not with, you know, not locking them in for three years is one thing, but continuing to give them funding every year, despite the fact they have not filled in their forms properly. Um, uh, and I'm assuming that probably extends to the acquittals as well, which is how we, of course, check as to whether or not the money's been spent on the right things. Um, if you're not good at forms, you're not good at acquittals. That's really, really concerning. Um, and uh, now in the, in the COVID-19, pandemic um, that, uh, that the entire world has been engulfed by, um, uh, it's incumbent upon us to be extra careful, extra careful um, uh, in the expenditure of public funds, extra careful. And that means we should not be locking ourselves in to three-year funding agreements. We don't even know what our budget's going to look like for the next financial year. We haven't the slightest idea as yet. Not, that hasn't come through to us, let alone what the budget the year after that or the year after that looks like. I mean, uh, we we'll actually worry that we are just setting ourselves up for failure if we're giving an undertaking to groups now that we'll fund them in three years' time um, uh, when we're taking, we're hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging tens of millions of dollars this financial year. God knows how much next financial year. I mean, let's not forget the, the R word. We are in a recession right now. Okay. We are in a recession right now. So we need we to be really, really careful um, when it comes to this. I have Councillor Sims, then Councillor Mackey. Councillor Thanks, Sims. Lord Mayor. Thank you. And, and Lord Mayor, let's not forget um, the H word, hypocrisy, because that's what we're seeing a lot of tonight. Um, just uh, a, a few uh, minutes ago, the Deputy Lord Mayor um, proposed that we spend Councillor tens Sims, of thousands... we're talking to the amendment before and you. The, the point that I'm making is related to that because it relates to the claims that have been made about Council's financial position. And we have spent thousands of dollars on a review and we don't know how much that's going to cost. Thank you, Councillor Sims. We, we are actually talk, now, talking to this... 
and the point that I make relates to the uh, the double standard that has been applied with respect Councillor to Councillor Sims, we are talking to the motion before us in terms and, of whether you support the, the, or don't support yes, the amendment and, that is and before And I'm you. responding to the economic arguments that have been made. The basis of this motion is that it is uh, saving council funds, and I'm explaining that there is a double standard being applied with respect to council funds. I think that is a relevant point, Lord Mayor, but I will move on. Thank you. Um, I, I think that uh, we should be looking at what we can do to provide certainty to these organisations that work with the most vulnerable members of our community at this time, not uh, nitpicking over um, their grants in this way. And I am very concerned about um, this funding being subject to a review, the terms of which we do not know um, the terms uh, of the review are, are not um, clear. Um, the outcome of that review is not clear. Um, and uh, given this council's track record uh, with reviews, um, looking at organisations that are providing support like this, I don't think this is the path we should be going down. There's a pretty disturbing theme coming through in tonight's meeting, Lord Mayor, and um, I'm not very... Respect to um, uh, the point that Councillor Kerr and Councillor Hyde uh, are making, I would just like to remind us all, we are not a poor organisation. We are a... Um, I, uh, um, I, by all means, review the program, but let's also appreciate that there are jobs that actually hang on the end of, of all of this funding. Um, that this is not money that's just dished out uh, to people willy nilly. Uh, and the administration have gone to a great deal of, of effort uh, and have uh, uh, monitored relationships with these organizations, most of them over a very, very long time. Uh, I, I, I think that we send an, an alarmist signal uh, to suddenly turn uh, long established triennial funding into annual funding. If this were happening at the state level or at the Commonwealth level, there would be an absolute out uproar. Thank you. Um, my apologies, CEO, I didn't see you. Um... Oh, thanks. thanks, Lord Mayor. I just want to, for absolute clarity, um, I might just ask if the governance team could adjust the, uh, the motion before you to remove the words over three years in the body of the motion because it's contradictory with um, the preamble. It just needs to be really clear, I think. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. I have Councillor, sorry, apologies. I'll just go back here. Uh, Councillor Martin, then Councillor uh, Kouros, then Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor, a question to you before I begin, and so I ask the administration not to start the clock. Look, there's an intellectual principle here, a, a principle of debate at stake. Uh, are you saying in your argument to Councillor Sims, you do not accept analogy as a tool of debate? Is that what you're saying? Is that your view? Oh, sorry. Okay, a question of that. No, what I was actually trying to do is let us debate the motion before us, which is what we are here for. Okay, but you do accept that analogy is a principle that is if, acceptable. If it is done with respect, Councillor Martin, and we're not actually, you know, trying to uh, uh, very pointedly make score points against each other, um, the behaviour in this chamber is such that we should be having articulate and wholesome debate and discussion about the motions before us. And would it be possible for me to draw analogies that resulted in a critical view of a particular person's argument? A critical view of an argument, certainly. A critical view of a person, no. Let's play the ball, not the man. All right. Well, let me just say that as a principle, uh, I think um, the hard right tendency of this council is on display tonight for all to see. It is there, it is bald. Look, the, the issue that Councillor Mackey identified is central to this argument. That is that organisations rely on continuity, assured funding in order to be able to not only continue with the appointment of staff, but to continue to plan events. Um, there is no point in saying to a festival, look, we'll give you one year's funding 
but um, nothing beyond that, because it means they can't make an investment in plant and equipment that will endure for succeeding years. Moreover, um, this is such a, um, a, a mistargeted um, uh, a proposal. I mean, the casualties include uh, Chinese Music and Arts Inc., a program for Chinese children. Uh, the Restless Dance Theatre. It's extraordinary, Lord Mayor. I know that uh, you're an arts Lord Mayor, but these things must be dear to your heart too. The, the Restless Dance Theatre and its gutted program. Well, they'll be gutted tonight. There's no doubt about that. Then you go on further. The Aboriginal Sobriety Group that relies on councils continuing funding over three years in order to assist with its mobile assistance patrol service. Funding gone for three years. Gig Buddies, uh, an access to arts program for the disabled involving um, internet activity uh, funded by council. The Adelaide Moss Community Development, um, which is a, another three year program out the window and they have every right to be upset. Indofest, the Australian Indonesian uh, uh, Association event, funding for three years. A uh, point of clarification, Lord Mayor. Uh, a point of clarification, uh, it is being asserted. Now, Lord, Lord, it, Mayor, Lord, Lord, Lord Mayor, Mayor, I, I am speaking. I've not even been allowed to I, speak. I am going to just, my apologies, sorry. A point of clarification. A point of clarification. Thank you, Lord, oh, Lord Mayor. Mayor this, is, this, is, this is unprecedented in, in a Zoom meeting to open somebody's microphone so they can interrupt. No. Could you explain why you did For that? For a point of clarification, we can. Oh, Lord Mayor, this is beyond the pale. Oh, Councillor Martin, in the chamber, if, yes, we're on Zoom, but a point of clarification is a point of clarification. Like what is the point, is Councillor Martin? Your bias is on display. No, it's not. Like Councillor Martin never interrupts others for a point of clarification. For a point of clarification, Lord Mayor, it is being asserted, it is being asserted that all of these funding amounts are being cut. That is palpably and, ba and blatantly not the truth. And I would urge the councillor speaking to stick to the facts. Okay, there is nothing uh, in this amendment to suggest that those funding that he's articulating, uh, uh, those funding amounts have been cut. It is a okay. misstatement of fact. Thank you. Well, Councilor Lord Martin. Mayor, I'm, I'm not asserting that, but what I am um, saying, can... Lord Mayor, may I continue? Is there another councillor you'd like to interrupt me? No, Councillor Martin, but you were asserting that they're all being cut and you were asserting they're all being thrown out. So the point no, of No, no, Lord Mayor. Was that they no, are not? No, Lord Mayor, that is not what I said. What I said was these, these were three-year programs. I prefaced my remarks by saying these were three-year programs that provided certainty. We are tonight considering cutting these things. The Glendy Greek Festival, three years funding, gone, one year. Uh, pathways to Wellbeing, Engagement and Connection, a program that's been lauded around the state, gone, one year's funding only. Um, it's just, it is beyond, beyond comprehension that this um, uh, should be uh, proposed. It, it is uh, just appalling. And this on the night that we consider uh, a rescission motion on the Hutt Street Centre, uh, this right-wing council is Thank you, prevailing Councillor Martin. We are talking to the motion before us, not about am, the politics am, of Lord the members Mayor. on the council. This council is Thank prevailing you, over Martin, the most if you've finished savage speaking to cuts. The, if you've been... Well, Lord Mayor, I'm just saying this council is providing over the most savage cuts to community, um, to multicultural groups, to religious organisations, I have ever seen in my time on council. We should be ashamed. Thank you. So, and again, for a point of clarification, the motion before you is that we are actually funding everything that is on the page in front of you for one year, and that we actually do a review of the guidelines. The guidelines is our policy. It's how we actually assess all of those for at, by the end of QF1, so that's by September. Um, I will go to uh, Councillor Kouros. I think you are next, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I 
just wanted to clarify as well that we're not talking about cutting this and where we are talking about continuing this for another year and then reviewing the guidelines in regards to it. Now, I can understand that there are some counsellors who are looking at this emotionally and I get that and I, and I honestly do. Um, you know, if, if I'm looking at this emotionally, I would love to give the uh, Glendy Greek Festival $100,000 over three years. But this is not about emotion. This is about actually being accountable. And we need to be accountable to our ratepayers. We need to we need to be clarified with our position in regards to the funding, the grants that we give to uh, what is before us at the moment. And I, and I get that. And I get that it's it's hard for people for change and I get it's hard for them to have these conversations. I understand that it seems like as if you're turning your back on them, but you're not. You're not turning your back on them. We're just, just giving clarification to our ratepayers. I don't think there's anyone's intention here of removing any of these grants. I don't think that that is what is being proposed here. What is being proposed here is to review the guidelines on how or the applications that are made. Now, Councillor Martin put forward an amendment to extend uh, one of the grants for another two years. Um, and now I don't know much about the clinic. I'm sorry, I know. So there must be a reason to why administration only put one year in there. I mean, they're not filling out the application properly. I mean, do they, obviously they need assistance in that. Why do they need assistance in that? What isn't being missing in that? So for me to actually agree Councillor Martin's uh, proposal in regards to, you know, extending that further, I would feel very uncomfortable to look at a rate parrot in their eyes and tell them the reason why I did that. Obviously, he spends a lot of time there at this clinic and he knows a lot about it and that, that's great, but we are all accountable to the ratepayers. I don't mind, and, uh, and just so you know, just to make it clear, I'm not affiliated with any political party, so hard right, left, whatever you want to call it, but what I am affiliated with is with the city and with the ratepayers of this city. And Mr. Councillor Kouros, you have a point of order, Councillor Martin? Oh, thank you for the invitation to speak, Lord Mayor. Well, a point yes. of clarification. Oh, a point of, a point of clarification. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Kouros is speaking about the Burdekin Clinic and their application form and so on. Th that is not the amendment before the Council. The amendment is to cut three-year funding to one year for each of the organisations proposed. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Correct. I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. I did veer off there. I didn't mean that. I was merely talking about his knowledge of knowing the clinic. I'm very sorry, Councillor Martin. Um, but in saying that, um, bringing it to, allowing this to continue for another year, to review the guidelines and to bring him forward our policy. It sounds very sensible to me and at least we can have something that we can clarify to our ratepayers. Thank you. Um, Councillor Martin, I'm actually, I'm just going to Rudy. Um, Rudy, you had a point of governance that you wanted to talk to us about. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Indeed, um, this amendment is now talking to the one year only. Um, just for clarity and further to the CEO's point, um, the uh, amounts that have been listed there over multiple years will have to be adjusted accordingly to reflect the one year only. Um, so because they, some of those go over multiple years, which is a total over those multiple years, and that needs to be adjusted accordingly. Thank you. I will go to Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm not going to take too much of the Council's time. We've already discussed and debated this in, in great detail. Uh, I just want to reiterate that we're not a state uh, government authority. We're not a federal government authority. We are a local government authority. And we are looking after our communities and uh, our uh, um, charitable organisations uh, within our jurisdiction. Under current legislation, we provide them with 75% of their uh, council rates. So that is, uh, in my eyes, that's a, a huge way of uh, helping out any organisation that is a registered charity and a, and a not-for-profit doing great work in the community. Thank you, Councillor Habim, today. Uh, I have Councillor Canole and Councillor 
Donovan, Councillor Knoll. Yes, just following on to, I mean, uh, when we think about uh, all the charitable work we are doing, uh, we always still need to keep in context that our organisation too has been uh, doing it very hard. And uh, it also needs to uh, uh, ensure that it is uh, delivering great value. And in the guy, you know, if we're looking at this, we just need to do the same. And I mean, all these are great, uh, uh, you know, uh, charities, etc., cetera, and, uh, so, uh, and cultural um, groups. I think it's just, we just need to be uh, uh, reassess them so that we are delivering well. Thank you. Thank you. I have Councillor Donovan, Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. These applicants have applied for these grants based on our grant guidelines, which are categorised and which in many cases, in, in, in specific to the major grants, have the three year time frame. They have spent potentially days putting these applications together for them to get to the point that they have been successful. And with some of these organisations, that's meant they have had to expend significant amounts of their resources in order to create the application and get it to the standard where it has been put forward and has been approved. So the uh, for us to then cut short and say we're going to give one year, a, a major grant application has considered what happens across those three years. It's not a one year program times three. It's a, here's what we're going to do in year one. Here's how we're going to grow it in year two. Here's what year three looks like. So it actually would be a completely different application and it can't just be cut into a third. The other side of it, and I, and I completely appreciate Councillor Kira's rationale behind thinking about it as a, as a potential annual process, but that is not how these applications can be considered when they've applied for a three-year funding program. The other side of it is this research abounding that shows that when you have to, as an organisation, apply for funding annually, as opposed to in these funding blocks, it, you actually are supporting less efficiency. So you lose the efficiency that can come from optimising your, proc your procurement processes, for example. You lose the efficiency that comes from doing it in year one, improving it in year two, and assessing and using those improvements in year three. So were we to cut short these particularly the major applications that have been have been created across a three year span not year one times three we're actually completely changing the potential application and some of those programs may not be able to be funded because they may not be able to deliver what they have proposed if they were only to receive the one year funding so i completely understand councillor Kerr's starting point the rationale to say you know, we're in the midst of COVID times and let's consider this. However, this has all been factored in. Administration have looked at our budget. They have already considered what's possible and have presented us with these opportunities. So I would not support this amendment and I would hope that council would really think about not supporting this amendment because you are going to jeopardise all of those major projects. They are not set up to be delivered with only the assurity of one year. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, Councillor Martin, you had a question? Um, oh. I said, yes, I did for the administration. Um, can the administration confirm that those organisations that received uh, three-year funding in the pre previous two budgets will continue to receive funding. It's only this group that we're penalising or um, uh, impacting. That's correct. Those uh, agreements were signed off last year and will continue as uh, and two years ago as well. So we're only looking at what's in front of you today. Oh, thank you. That's good. So I, I have a few questions. Um, the budget is decided upon on an annual basis. So it, it is also important that we review these guidelines. Um, can I ask whether these the, the assessment that was done on the ones in front of us uh, was actually done with uh, the COVID in mind, CEO? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, that would have been undertaken at the time. I might actually, what I might do is just ask Christy to be clear on that one. 
Yes, Thanks, because I'm not sure that the guidelines would have taken something like COVID yeah. into account. Thank you. Um, through the Lord Mayor, yes, we were fully aware when these were being assessed that there was um, that COVID had hit and all applicants were rung and um, the conversation, there was a conversation around how they would deliver and how things would be affected. And that has been has been taken into consideration. So um, we also said we would have some flexibility around their programs and have assured that what we, what's in front of you today can be delivered. Um, and if something has been um, funded for th three years, over a three year period, does that come back in for budget approval on the second and third year? No, it doesn't. Um, there are programs that will be ongoing, uh, that will be funded already, that, that financial information is in this report. However, um, it, with the review, if there was to be a review, you, you could look at that. If there was a review of the guidelines, will this um, organisation have to reapply or can they be assessed, assessed through the new guidelines? Christy, thanks. So you're muted, Christy, sorry. Sorry, uh, through the Lord Mayor, it would depend on the guidelines. I'll have to take that on notice to decide whether or not you would need to see them again, depending on what changes there are. To the guidelines. Okay, thank you. You're muted, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, sorry, sorry, members. I don't have any further hands up. I think it is important that the guidelines are reviewed. Um, they do come in every year, so it is. Uh, if we do this in the first quarter, there's no reason why the continued funding can't come in at the same time um, in the way that I'm looking at it anyway. Um, and yes, I agree with members who have said it is important that we give people uh, an understanding over several years. It's also important that we actually look at our guidelines and make sure that they are purpose um, fit for purpose over this period of time. Councillor uh, Sims, did you wish to speak? Oh, it's uh, okay. Um, Lord Mayor, I was just going to uh, clarify what your view uh, was on the motion, but I think you've um, outlined that. Yep. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, there, there are individuals in here, obviously, that will be very dependent on a few years. I'm, I'm trying to work out through my questions whether if we did actually look at the guidelines in the first quarter, uh, whether there would be any reason why these wouldn't come back in for an assessment within that time frame. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. I, I would assume that's feasible. Uh, Christy, again? Yes, through you, Lord Mayor. They may well come in again if the guidelines said there needs to be an annual review. If you, if you fund them once, they will have to reapply, I assume, and come back. Okay, thank you. Um, with that, I will go to... Councillor Kerr, my apologies, Councillor Kerr, to sum up. Thanks, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I will simply just appeal to the common sense uh, of members. Uh, we have had a period of COVID. We, we, we have a, had a period of absolutely unprecedented uh, uh, trauma to uh, to the city of Adelaide, uh, to business, to ratepayers, to residents. Um, it makes no sense for members to not have uh, any input uh, and to be properly appraised of the decision being made for substantial amounts of money uh, that are being granted. Um, this, this notion that's been put about, I'll put to members, this notion uh, that this somehow represents a cut and this specifying uh, that these are all cuts. Uh, well, that is, I will say, that is a deliberate statement of mistruth. That is a deliberate and absolutely blatant untruth because that is not a, a apparent in, in this motion. There is nothing specifying that there are going to be cuts uh, in future years. What this does specify uh, is that we make a decision that it has uh, that we on which we're properly appraised. But you know, coming from the councillor who describes residents and uh, uh, traders yeah, as Sarah, make sure you speak to the motion, please. Coming from that councillor, I think the rest of the council should treat that with the utter and absolute disdain. Councillor Kerra, we are speaking to the motion, please. Contempt that that assertion about this motion, the utter disdain and contempt 
that that assertion is clear. Is Lord Mayor. So, um, given that the numbers, I'm just wanted to clarify the numbers are actually. I, I was actually uh, booted out of my by my laptop being um, running out of battery earlier, but the numbers have been changed to one year. Um, listen. Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, I purely common sense. It's ridiculous. We've got money going to a GP clinic, um, our ratepayers. And let me just say also to Councillor uh, Mackey's point that it's about jobs. Councillor Mackey, it is about jobs uh, because the ratepayers, 80% of whom uh, from which the rates for these monies come from are small business, are, are businesses, uh, substantially small businesses. It is about jobs uh, because, uh, with, uh, because of the costs that these businesses face, uh, they cannot employ people. They are now facing uh, a jobs crisis of an unprecedented nature. So this is absolutely about jobs. This money does not come from nowhere. Uh, it does come from somewhere. So once again, I appeal to common sense, ignore the politicising, ignore the uh, sound bites, treat it with the contempt it deserves. Uh, let's, proceed in, let's proceed in a common sense uh, and rational way. Members, I have... The motion before you. Uh, if I don't have any points of order or clarification through the chat room, I will go to the vote. Councillor Moran. Sorry. I'll just point out, uh, Lord Mayor, I had my um, electronic hand up for quite some time then. It's too late I've... now, but um, uh, could you please keep an eye on that? Did you wish to speak to the motion, Councillor? Well, I can't. Sorry, I can't. No, no I, I apologise. Your your hand was raised after I went to summation. So, no, no it my, was, but it's too late now. So, but yeah, it, my apologies, Councillor. And Councillor Martin, your hand is also raised. Oh, I was just going to ask if we could have a break so I can go to the loo, but I'll go okay. to the loo anyway if that's not. Can possible. we vote on this? Um, can we? actually vote on this motion first. Thank you. Members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried, I think. I'll just check with Jenny. I can't see all your hands. I'm sorry. Um, Members, if I can ask you again, uh, hand, physical hands down, if I could have your hand up if you are in favour. Councillor Martin, you're in favour. Six, thank you. That is carried. Uh, yes, Councillor Sims. Division, please, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. With all those in favour of the amendment, please raise your hand and keep it raised until all names have been called. Councillor Kira, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Canole, Councillor Ho, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Kuros. You're right, Jenny. Yeah. Could you hear me then? Yep. Okay, cool. Yes, so that was six. Thank you. Um, members, um, I will actually be calling a, uh, a, a dinner break shortly at around uh, 8.30. Uh, if any of you do actually need to use the convenience, I would uh, suggest that you may do that at your leisure. Um, I'm the only one that can't. So uh, we will continue on and then um, hopefully... We have 15 minutes. We'll see how many we can get through before the 15 minutes. Um, we have okay. got uh, sorry. 10... Lord Mayor, sorry to interrupt. That was the vote on the amendment. It becomes a substantive now. Oh, my apologies. Sorry. Thank you. Members, that becomes the substantive. And uh, uh, members, would anybody else like to speak on the substantive? Deputy Lord Mayor, have you got your hand up to speak on the substantive? No. Um, Councillor Donovan? Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just to say I'll also... see you, Councillor Moran. With, with this, you know, <laughs> this has already been through hours of multiple people assessing it. 
So if we proceed with this annual uh, system, we've actually, again, we're losing this efficiency. We're losing all of that work that has already been done and, 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 and passing that on to all of these organisations that have structured these grants and applications around a three-year process. So this is the very opposite of cost saving. This is, I mean, you look at the total amounts of money, we are not talking huge sums of dollars here. And when you consider some of the other motions that we are considering across this evening, the sums of money that we are talking about for the total budget for the City of Adelaide are minimal, but for these organisations to give them the stability and the efficiency over time and to fund the application that they have submitted, not a random one year application, this would be a very disappointing outcome. Thank you. Um, Councillor Moran and Councillor Martin have already spoken to the, um, to the original motion. So I'm being advised that you cannot speak again. Only those who haven't spoken to the Original motion can speak. Councillor Martin, you're shaking your head terribly. Can I unmute you? Perhaps you yes, you can, concern. Lord Mayor. Look, this the the, uh, the substantive, the original motion is my motion. It's my alternative motion, and I have a right to sum up. I will come to you to sum up. I've got other speakers. Okay, thank you. Yes. So, Councillor. Correct, let's have a look. So I have uh, so Councillor Sims and then Councillor Kouros. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, like Councillor Donovan, I am very concerned about what appears to be a politicisation of the grants process, um, where we've got councillors now second guessing um, the decisions that have been made by administration second guessing issues around planning earlier in the night, now second guessing issues around um, grant applications. And these organisations have put in their applications in good faith. Um, as Councillor Donovan has said, they've applied for two years or they've applied for three years with good reason. And I think they have a right to expect that that is going to be honoured. And if council wants to have a review, will you do that after this funding cycle? in a future term of council or whatever, but you don't um, throw um, the, uh, these organisations into chaos by uh, dangling Democles' sword over them um, because they now don't know whether or not they're going to have um, funding being provided in the long term. And what this is in effect is a cut in real terms because organisations that were expecting to get uh, two-year funding or three-year funding are now only going to get a year's funding um, with a review that has no clear terms of reference, no clear um, criteria that, that's going to be applied. I think this is a really, really disturbing uh, turn of events. And um, the really worrying thing is, is that these are organisations that provide vital support to vulnerable people in our community and I worry that these organisations themselves may need to make cuts um, in order to accommodate um, the cut to the support that they're receiving from council. So I don't know why um, this has been proposed. And um, I'm really disappointed that we are asking the most vulnerable people in our community to carry the can during this recession. Councillor Kouros. Um, I think, again, we're missing the whole point here. And we're talking about um, councillors are saying this is this is being pulled as a political issue. And just to reiterate, I don't belong with any political party. Don't belong with the Greens. Don't belong with the Liberals. Don't belong with Labor. Not registered anywhere. So I'm not looking at making this political. I. I think I, I take what Councillor Donovan said. I understand what, what she's saying, but I don't think anyone's going to miss out on anything. I think it's just a reviewing of the guidelines is a good business practice. It gives a clear understanding for our all councillors. Administration have taken on the task to review them on the current guidelines that we have. Things have changed. 
we might introduce, we might get another charity that might need support. We might get another uh, club that may need support. I don't know. But in putting it out there to review the guidelines and to review our policy is good business practice. It's not taking away that we're going to take away any grants for anybody else. And I think that making it political as though we are gonna do that and putting that fear back out to the public who watch this is not good politics if that's how you're playing it. This is just about ratepayers and our justification to the grants to our ratepayers. That is it. Let's just keep it simple. Let's not complicate it. I have Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, um, you've already spoken to the motion. Thank you. But if you have a question. When, when, could you just explain that? When did I speak to the motion? I thought you didn't see my hand and I didn't get a chance to speak. Uh, for when Councillor Martin put forward the uh, amendment for, um, sorry, the alternate motion for Bryden Burdekin. Oh, okay. All right. Can I ask a question then, please? Yeah, absolutely. Is it the administration's understanding when they get when a three-year grant's given, is it their understanding that by dividing it by three, the organisation spends exactly the same amount of money per year? My point is they might spend two-thirds of it in the first year setting up a program and then mm -hmm. spend a lesser amount for the second and third year. Would the administration confirm that that sometimes happens? Because that would make a big difference. I, thank you, Councillor Moran. CEO, I cannot unmute you. You um, might have to try and unmute yourself. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I'll get Christy to respond. Thanks, Christy. Thank you. Through the chair, the attachment A um, on page 124 of your documents does show their annual grant and then we have provided it to them for three years so we assume that they will be able to manage on exactly a third of the grant um, one amount for each of the three years and there aren't any who have asked for more money up front in this round thank you um, now i have the Deputy Lord Mayor, but Deputy Lord Mayor, you move the amendment so you can't speak. You've got a question. And Councillor Mackey, you've already spoken to the original motion. So if there's a question, I'll come to you next. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. A uh, question of the administration. When was the last time a review was undertaken of these grant guidelines? CEO? Um, I'd need to take it on notice unless you know Christy again. Yes, it was in um, 2012. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah almost yeah. a decade ago. So, yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, thank you. I'm going to actually go to Councillor Donovan. She, she has a point of clarification. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just the, a point of clarification. Councillor Kura said that this did not include any cuts it does include cuts because it's cutting for years two and three there's no guarantee it's pending a review so it does directly include cuts um and you know i think based on the conversation uh the guideline review is not out of the is not being questioned it is the process that's being proposed here to cut and review rather than to endorse what's been proposed. So point of clarification that we are. Thank you. Um, Councillor uh, Mackey. Oh, sorry, Councillor Mackey. I unmuted you at the same time you unmuted you. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. A uh, question to the administration. Um, as we are this this in this motion, considering uh, a group of triennially funded organisations, as well as annual uh, grants, uh, et cetera, and there seems to be no dispute regarding the annual uh, uh, grant amounts. Um, can, I, can I just ask, is this one group of a group of, of a, a larger group who enjoy rolling triennial funding? In other words, are there organisations that currently are in year two or year one or year three of um, 
uh, of a triennium, uh, and okay. therefore, what is the what is the fate of those organisations when when this council is is drawing a line temporarily? I acknowledge, and and I'm not averse to, uh, and I'm not going to debate, but I'm not averse uh, to reviewing of, of programs. That that's not the point. I'll, I will just ask the question. Thank you, Councillor Mackey, CEO. Uh, thanks, Christy. Could you respond? Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, yes, there is a, a group of, of uh, organisations that have been funded in the previous year for three years and the previous year before that. Um, they obviously will all come up in the in the budget that you're looking at um, in future weeks as ongoing funding. These ones would be newly funded for a three-year term uh, or, or one year as you're considering. You're considering. Okay, thank you. Uh, what have I got? Um, sorry, members. With that, I will go back to the mover to sum up, which is Councillor Martin. There you go. Yeah, look, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just a, a, a point of clarification. Um, the word political making things political is bandied about as though it's some condemnation. The correct use of the word political is simply that it pertains to government or public affairs. I think the insinuation is that it's party political. And uh, I can assure you that my opposition to these proposed cuts, and they are cuts in the second and third years, as uh, Councillor Donovan observed, um, it's not party political. It is because I understand that the community, and it's not just the community, by the way, and, and I acknowledge that this is not discriminatory. It's going to target community, sports, cultural, arts, and religious groups. So it, it's non-discriminatory. It, in fact, it doesn't discriminate at all. Um, uh, and may I also just observe that um, this fallacy that um, somehow by cutting funding and reassessing people's entitlement to what they thought was going to be a three-year program provides certainty is the ultimate contradiction because this provides no certainty at all. In fact, it leads to uncertainty. Um, I, I, I do not understand why would we seek to cause such disruption and discord in the community. It is, of course, a consequence of a dysfunctional council. Only a dysfunctional council would do that. Um, and might I add, Lord Mayor, um, uh, I am awake to the use of COVID-19 as an explanation for all manner of evils. Um, it has been used to explain the cutting of capital works, the cutting of grants to community and other organizations, reducing staff, reducing budgets, it almost seems, and I know this is very cynical, that the pandemic is being used as a kind of convenient vehicle to advocate for wholesale change. Um, it is unfortunately not change that's been approved by ratepayers. Um, and, and I look forward to what will be their judgment ultimately. Thank you for summing up on the grant recommendations, Councillor Martin. Members will go to the vote. Those in favour, this as the substantive. Those against, that is carried. Members, it is half past eight. Um, so before we move on to 10.6, which is the City Connector, um, I think we should have uh, at least a half hour break. Um, can I just have a show of hands? Members are happy to go on break for half an hour. Thank you, members. I'll we'll see you back here at nine o'clock. Members, you can hear me, yes? Yes, good, thank you. 
Uh, we will go then to item 10.6, which is the City Connector Review. And I will look for a mover, Councillor Martin and a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin. Oh, you're in a different spot on my screen. Okay. Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I am moving uh, an amendment uh, and I have a question. Which would you like me to move first? Um, well, they're both they're very different things, Councillor Martin. If you have a question, ask the question. If you'd like to move an amendment, please do that. Okay, well, I'll ask the question. Motion. And then I'll move the alternate motion. Um, uh, may I ask the administration about uh, reports uh, from media and ratepayers um, inferring that the City Connector Services will not be reinstated? Um, can the administration give any guidance uh, about when, given that private bus train and public bus train and tram services are running normally, can they give an indication of when the City Connector will be running and why it isn't running at this time? CEO? Um, I'll ask Director Clinton and Devonish to, to respond to that. Thanks, Clinton. Thank you, three Lord Mayor. Um, at this point in time, Councillor, the um, services remain suspended. Um, we are still awaiting advice from um, SA Health and the State Government in relation to the reinstatement of um, such services. Um, it, it, is the administration uh, um, concerned about the contradiction? That is, the City Connector service is not running, but everything else is? I mean, has that been interrogated? Yeah, I'll go to you first. Uh, I'm not sure where Clinton's got to. Um, can you respond again, thanks, Clinton? Yeah, thanks, um, through the chair. Um, yes, uh, we haven't um, interrogated uh, the public transport um, network that's currently in operation for the Department of Planning, Transport and Infrastructure. Um, other than to note that some of their services have also been impacted. Um, we're dealing on a daily and weekly basis with the public transport agency, um, working through what the, um, what the new services can look like. Okay, thank you, Lord Mayor. The, the alternative motion I have is one, um, it's slightly different, but um, not similar, I'm just trying to read my writing, sorry. One uh, notes that the State Minister for Transport, Stefan Canole, has requested the termination two years, um, two years before its expiry of the deed of agreement regarding the City Connector service. Two asks the Lord Mayor to write to the Minister for Transport, informing him that council um, Sorry, Council requests the State Government continues to honour the deed of agreement <coughs> and the current routes and schedule while offering to enter into negotiations about future routes, comma, schedules and funding. And three, oh, that sentence beginning asks is two. And three, such 
negotiations will be informed by a City of Adelaide public consultation with ratepayers. about the routes and schedule for the city connector. Okay. Um, I have, is that, that's complete Councillor Martin? Uh, I'll just read it, Lord Mayor. Yep. Uh, one so second. Notes that the State Minister for Transport, Stephen Connell, has requested the termination two years before its expiry of the deed of agreement regarding the City Connector Service. Ask yep. the Lord Mayor to write to the Minister of Transport informing him that Council requests that the State Government continues to honour the deed of agreement and the current routes and schedule while offering to enter into negotiations about future routes, schedules and funding. And three, such negotiations will be informed by a City of Adelaide consultation with ratepayers about the routes and schedule of the City Connector. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. And uh, I have Count, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, are you seconding? Sorry, I'll just unmute you. Are you uh, seconding? Sorry, uh, uh, not, no, I don't think so. I just have a question of the mover. Um, but uh, whenever is a point. Can I, yeah. is it, uh, okay, I might let the mover speak first and then I'll go to your question of the mover. Sure. So I have a secondary in Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. Um, I'm open to hearing a question. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, would you like to ask your question? Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, just a just a quick one. Um, I have in my possession correspondence from uh, a state Labor opposition member of the Legislative Council, who's the shadow minister assisting the leader of the opposition, um, which actually quotes Councillor Martin in it. Um, and uh, it's uh, asking residents in North Adelaide to complete a survey on the city connector. I was just wondering what connection Councillor Martin has to, has to this, because it seems to be achieving very similar ends as to his alternative motion. Um, well, uh, the first thing to say is I don't even know who you're talking about. I, I am aware that your Liberal colleague, Rachel Sanderson, is conducting a poll, but certainly not anyone in the Labor Party. And secondly, anything that the state opposition or indeed uh, the Liberal member for Adelaide sets out uh, uh, to um, a poll um, has nothing to do with the proceedings of the City of Adelaide. Thank you. Councillor Martin, if you'd like to speak to your amendment. Yes, just another quick question, Lord Mayor, if I may, of the administration, and I'm sorry uh, to delay you. Um, uh, I now understand from information supplied by the administration that they were advised by uh, Stefan uh, Canol um, in January mm -hmm. that he wished to terminate the service. Um, uh, can the administration advise wh why uh, elected members were not informed or were some elected members informed? You are unmuted, um, Director Devonish. Yes, uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the letter from the minister, um, you are correct, Councillor was received in, in January. Um, since the receipt of that letter, um, we have been working um, through the contract conditions with uh, DIPTI staff as we're required to um, under the terms of the deed to uh, determine what the next steps are. And that's why we have subsequently brought a report through to council um, for your consideration. It has taken some time uh, and several meetings with DIPTI staff to work through um, exactly what um, the impacts of the changes to the public service, um, public service, public transport services are and would be on the connector. And, and that has now been 
um, resolved to a point where we're able to bring the options to council. So that's that's where we are at currently. Uh, and the second Does that part of the question. question? Yeah. No, 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 it doesn't. Uh, the second part of the question was, um, uh, did you advise any elected member of this letter and termination? Um, the letter that you refer to, sorry, just let me pull up a... That's all right, it's Jan January and uh, uh, the CEO responded in February, month months before any of us were told, unless of course you have told someone, but I I'd appreciate your advice. Uh, not that I'm aware of, Councillor, no. Not even the Lord Mayor? Uh, I, I couldn't answer that question. I don't have that detail in front of me, but... Um... Well, that's all right. I'll, I'll ask the CEO since he responded. Did the CEO advise the Lord Mayor that he received that letter in January? Um, through you, Lord Mayor. It's something I'd need to take on notice. I haven't got that information in front of me. Um, I'll check my notes and, and provide a response to Council. Oh, no, no, look, I'm happy to go with your memory. You know, sort of round <clears> about that time will do. For you, Lord Mayor, <clears throat> when I receive information from state government, I normally do have conversations with the Lord Mayor in between meetings. Fine. Thank you. Then, Lord Mayor, why did you not advise the elected body that the state government was going to terminate the service after being advised of that letter sent to council in January and not advised the council for some months? Councillor Martin, I don't actually recall seeing a copy of the letter. Um, well, that's all right. Advised, I'm, I'm happy. All being advised that the service was going to stop. So are you saying that the administration did not advise you that it had received a letter from the Minister for Transport terminating the City Connector service until you told us in May? I'm saying, Councillor Martin, that I do not being, recall being advised of the City Connector service being stopped in January, no. Uh, Lord, Lord Mayor. Through you, Lord Mayor. <coughs> Further to that, uh, Lord Mayor, I'd need to confirm with my notes that I did in fact have that conversation. So. I haven't confirmed it yet. I would yet, have Councillor. to go back to my notes from January as well, Mark, because I, I don't recall it. There, uh, Lord Mayor... Thank, I think the question's been answered, Councillor Martin. Well, no, it hasn't. Uh, all I've got is collective amnesia. Um, I, I would appreciate an answer on that formally, if I may, from you and the CEO about the date on which you had that conversation. It, it would help all of us here to understand the operations, the internal operations of the council much better. Is that a no? That's not a no. That's, I thought that was a rhetoric statement, Councillor Martin. If I no, no, if that's a formal request. would like to be advised, I'd be very happy to send out some information once Mark and I have sat down and had a look at something uh, at our notes, because we do meet very regularly. I, I, I don't even... I, I'm not even sure when the letter was received, given I was on annual leave in January, as you know. Well, I, I understand, Lord Mayor, you came back for the January meeting, but... Um, uh... Thank you, Phil. Councillor Martin. Um, you've asked the question. I said I'll undertake to let you know. I don't think we can actually keep asking the same question. Well, all right. Well, I won't ask the same question. I'll ask you then... Why did it take so long to advise the elected body that the service had been terminated? I will ask the CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor, I think uh, the directors really responded to that question, advising us, just taking some time to work through the process. Thank you, thank you. May, may I also ask Lord Mayor, having read uh, the administration's email and the extract from the deed which they cite as the reason for the termination, whether we have had legal advice, external legal advice, not internal, about clauses 21.1, 21.2 and 21.3? CEO, have we had external legal advice? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, no, we've not had external legal advice. We've hmm. taken the advice of our own staff um, and um, that has been provided to you by email. Um, uh, could I ask the administration whether they think 21.1, uh, and I, I, I will, uh, in order to help you, uh, quote, it says, either party may at any time terminate this agreement or reduce its scope by providing written notice 
uh, to that effect, not less than 12 months prior to the end date and so on. Um, does that raise in your mind some doubt uh, about uh, the validity of the termination? Yeah, I think if we're up, if, uh, perhaps if we're looking for um, uh, legal, then we can take that on notice and distribute it to members, unless you'd like to answer that question now. No, it's real, Lord Mayor, only that we've already provided the clause to Council um, and happy to provide further clarification through our legal team. Uh, Mark, if I, if I may just add to that through the Lord Mayor, um, I do have some advice um, that Dipti have received through the Crown Solicitor, but I would have to take advice as to whether I can share that and I'm happy to obviously share that with elected members um, if that's the case. Thank you. Well, uh, I would like that, and I would like the advice on the advice. Um, I don't uh, wish to be rude, but, you know, often parties uh, putting a particular point of view will cite a legal opinion or their position. Um, so if we've had an opinion on the opinion, that would be useful too. Thank you. Yep. Look, um, uh, Lord Mayor, I will speak now, if that's okay. Um, uh, look, I... I am distressed. I mean, this has uh, uh, been quite a terrible night, uh, not only for the precinct groups, community groups, sporting Councilor groups, Martin, religious can we groups, talk and to so the on. Motion before us, please. Talk to the. But this, this is really disappointing for the ratepayers, and uh, I speak on behalf of the ratepayers of North Adelaide. This is a matter of which the administration has had knowledge since January, but it has chosen. Uh, either it or you have chosen not to refer that to the elected body. Um, additionally, we have uh, an opinion from the Crown Solicitor, but seemingly uh, it doesn't appear from any other legal voice representing council, um, suggesting that this service should be terminated. And our response, as I understand it, was to say, oh, good oh. Now, that's not the response I would have thought was appropriate. What we have here is a minister, a Welsher, and I apologise to Franz, I'm not making this personal, I'm not attacking his son. I'm saying we have a minister who has Welsh on a deal and has two years early terminated uh, an agreement to which they were bound. And in the cockeyed world of the city of Adelaide, our response is good o. Now, Lord Mayor, this is not a position that will go down well with ratepayers. If you thought they were cross about, um, you know, the support for the bid proposal from uh, the Crows for Park 2, this is going to go over even worse. Now, you might not remember uh, elected members, and uh, I don't think it matters because I'm sure that you're going to support cutting the service, but the intention of the service was to provide a cross-city service without the need to catch additional buses. And that's what the service does. That's not what the service that's proposed to replace it with will do. And the intention of the city of Adelaide, and having already tonight cut services for the uh, disabled, I'm sure this won't strike any court at all. It was to provide a full disability access service, including support for passengers with sight and uh, uh, with audible impairments. And the council rebuilt many, many bus stops at a cost of hundreds of thousands of dollars to support this service. And we say to the minister who wants to stop it, good o, good o. Now, this, this connector service uh, is kind of regarded as a community service on wheels. It actually moves our citizens around. It, it moves students. It moves the elderly. It, it, it just connects the city. And the intention of the minister is to take that away and for us to say, apart from good O, we would like it to stop here and there occasionally. Now, I hear the talk about, oh, yes, we have to agree to these changes. But uh, from my perspective, uh, the whole of eastern North Adelaide Melbourne Street, 
and key service areas like helping hand, as we saw from the petition, are going to be ignored. Now, I said at the beginning, I say it again, if you thought there was going to be a, a rumpus over Park 2, you have That's no the one idea we're talking what this to the city connector bus. Oh, I am, I'm telling you. There's going yes, to be I know, a... and I'm asking you to talk to the motion before us. Well, Lord Mayor, I, I, I am suggesting to you and to the other elected members, uh, unless uh, you, you support something like this motion that uh, I've put forward, then there's going to be one hell of a rumpus. Okay, um, and let's hear from the other coming... members to see if they'll actually support the motion before us, before you assume that they won't. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure I'm going to be right, but Lord Mayor, I hope they prove me wrong. Yes, that would be lovely. Um, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I uh, support this motion. I, I share many of the concerns that Councillor Martin has articulated. Um, I think it is very important that we resume this uh, service as soon as possible. Um, and I've been contacted um, by many people in the community asking when this is going to be up and running again. It does provide vital support um, for, all, for a range of um, groups within our community. One of the groups it is um, really vital for um, is people who are homeless and who are seeking to access the Hutt Street Centre and other support services, because having a free um, bus service uh, that comes at a, a regular time, at a scheduled time, um, is really important for those people. And I know we've talked a lot about having dial-up services and apps and the like, but of course, um, that uh, um, group of people are not necessarily going to be able to access that. Um, it's not practical for them. And so having a regular service, I think is really important. So I'm backing Councillor Martin's motion. Um, on a night when we have thrown vulnerable people in the city under the thank bus, you, I hope Sims. that we, if we actually... can actually talk to the connector. Thank well, you, Councillor Sims. It I was is. about to congratulate you for talking to the motion <laughs> and then you digressed. I was going to say thank no. you for, so much but, for actually well, talking to the motion. Thank so you, if you can Lord finish Mayor, talking to the motion, that'd be really with, great. Otherwise, I will actually go to the next speaker. With, with respect, Lord Mayor, the matters are connected because there is a nexus between the support that is provided to vulnerable people and this service. Um, and that's why I think it is very important that it is provided uh, in um, an ongoing way and why I'm supportive of Councillor Martin's motion. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I have uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And I'm just trying to um, read through this motion. Highly irregular that it wasn't circulated ahead of time. And I think it's quite discourteous, but and I know that upsets Councillor Sims. Um, as well. Nevertheless, um, uh, I certainly agree with some of the sentiment um, and I'm glad that Councillor Sims has taken up my very valid points that I made in committee around accessibility um, uh, and uh, supporting the vulnerable and ensuring they have access to this service. Um, uh, with that in mind though, I do think this motion is rather weak um, asking the Lord Mayor to write to me. It's very weak language. Um, and so I have an amendment um, which I have circulated ahead of time, um, and I'd like to move that amendment and seek a seconder. Oh, that's better. Rejects, strongly urges. That's much better. Thank you. I have a seconder in Councillor Abhims today. If you'd like to speak to that. Sorry, let's give everybody a moment to read. Yes. Please digest it. That which is an amendment. Okay. If you'd like to speak to that motion. Yes, thank you. Thank Good you, Lord on. Mayor. Um, well, obviously, at one, it makes it very clear that we reject moves by the state government to cut or rationalise the city connector service. And I think it's very important that we use that language um, uh, and that we make our position on this matter uh, very, very clear. Um, in the previous motion, and of course, even worse so in the recommendation that was put to us, um, uh, that was not clear. 
Um, uh, so I think it's important that we draw a line in the sand um, and highlight how important the service is to our community. Um, uh, but coming out of that though, uh, we need to appreciate um, that this isn't necessarily a very efficient service and we need to consider the public transport uh, uh, network in the city as a whole. We need to consider it as a whole as uh, Councillor Canole did um, at a previous council meeting where uh, council endorsed his motion calling on free public transport in the city of Adelaide, um, uh, as other jurisdictions have. And I think if the minister is um, seeking to get rid of the city connector, um, uh, the only way that it could possibly be entertained, noting that it is, of course, a very, very inefficient bus service, and it is a very expensive bus service. Um, but if we urge the minister to move towards free public transport citywide, and concurrently, concurrently to ensure that um, uh, buses are rerouted so that we can have coverage over parts of the city where the connector currently goes that other public transport uh, modes do not, um, then we can actually achieve everyone's aim here, which is that we remove a very inefficient uh, uh, bus system, noting, of course, the city connector rolls around the city, pumping out greenhouse gases with only a handful of people on it most of the time, and we don't want that. Um, uh, we don't want inefficiency, nor do we want a very expensive bus service, noting that it is, of course, the most expensive in the country. Um, uh, so perhaps we can get the best of both worlds, uh, urge the minister uh, to consider or to uptake our suggestion of free public transport citywide um, and work with him and his department uh, to see coverage in the city of areas that currently aren't serviced by the city connector. Um, so I think that's what this motion aims to achieve. Um, uh, certainly, as I said, uh, the word rejects is, is very strong language and it's absolutely necessary in this circumstance. And it was uh, a sentiment that wasn't really captured by anything that was put up previously. I think it was rather weak. So we need to, we need to firmly put our position here, but also in a collegiate way, in a collegiate way, um, uh, lay out uh, a path forward, a path out of the weeds um, uh, and over, over, over to the other side. Across the bridge, um, Councillor Abraham Zadeh. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, this is a fairly uh, straightforward amendment. Um, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor did a good job of articulating it. I don't need to talk through it anymore, but I'm sure uh, every other elected member will probably take up uh, their three uh, minutes. So uh, I'll let that um, uh, take its course. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kouros. Uh, can we have a just have a look at uh, Councillor Martin's um, amendment? Um, he um, he's got in there asked the Lord Mayor to write the minister to informing him that the council to continue honouring the deed. So I assume um, Councillor Martin's asking in that sentence in that paragraph there for it to start that to start the service immediately because while we're waiting to work out the, the route is is that correct? I'm just wondering if that's the intent because we need the service up and running until we work out what, what the state government is going to be doing or what we're going to be doing. Can we add that in to, if with the Deputy Lord Mayor happy to add that into his uh, amendment? Deputy Lord Mayor, are you happy to add that into your amendment? Uh, yes. Sorry, sorry, can you hear me? So. Yeah. Um, Can we yeah, scroll I'm, back? I'm happy to add a four. Um, uh, uh, requests that the City Connector service. Resumes immediately. and that the city of Adelaide is refunded the cost that we have paid for the service in the time 
that it was not running. Could I just get clarification, please, through the CEO? Do we pay for the service ahead of time or is it a retrospective, just, just to see if that makes sense? Um, through Lord Mayor, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I could take that on notice, uh, unless, Clinton, you're aware. Uh, not to handball the issue, but I'm sure Shanti is actually aware of the answer to that question. So if I could pass that to Shanti, that would be helpful. Okay, I don't know where Shanti is. There she is. Hi, Shanti. Uh, Hello, Lord Mayor. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, um, uh, we get invoiced um, for um, for our portion of the cost to deliver the service, and it varies as to when those invoices are supplied um, by Dipti. It does vary. So, do you know? Do you know, have we been invoiced for the time that it hasn't been running and will we be? Uh, through the Lord Mayor, we have been invoiced for the time it hasn't been running. Essentially, uh, DIPTI have to pay for the labour uh, of their drivers. Those drivers are still employed. Uh, and so we've been advised that that labour cost is an ongoing cost that needs to be, um, um, needs to be supported. Thank you. Um, I just need leave of uh, first the seconder um, to see if he'll accept that uh, uh, that amendment or variation to the amendment. Thank you. And then leave of the meeting. Is the meeting happy to accept that amendment or variation to the amendment? Can I have a quick show of hands? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Um, thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, I will go. So Councillor Martin, you have your hand up. Finished. Oh, I'm sorry. My apologies. My apologies. Sorry, Councillor Kouros. Sorry. Right. It's it's really difficult on Zoom. So thank you. Um, I um I just want to reiterate to all the councillors that um, it is uh, as we all agree. I think by the sounds of it, um, um, I'm not making assumptions. Um, I wouldn't do that to any councillor until they have spoken. Um, that this is really important service to the community. Um, I actually visited Sally from The Helping Hand uh, who um, submitted the, um, uh, the petition and uh, she went around and spoke to everyone within her neighbourhood who um, actually rely on this service. And, uh, and it is not only for that, the elderly community. It's also uh, for the students that are within the area. We also have tourists that come into um, North Adelaide. Um, it, we don't, I know that uh, the minister is looking at it in the sense of the tram, um, but the tram does not operate in North Adelaide. Um, so in, with this motion with that Deputy Lord Mayor has presented, uh, it allows for the connector bus to still have that sound, same route, route that we're having within the, um, the, the city itself. And a more broader aspect that you can actually catch a bus wherever you are for free in the city. And that is what we want. We want, as um, Councillor Canoles always said, it's the destination. And we wanna make everything efficient. And we wanna make everything easy for everyone to, to move throughout the city. Um, we don't wanna complicate it. And I think that um, we really have to stress to the minister that we are a capital city. This is not a community town. This is a capital city. And we are reliant on our tourists. We're reliant on our community to move freely. We're, re we're reliant on people to come into the city efficiently and to move around from the north to the south, east to the west without any complications. So if, we can, if he can look at that and make that easier for everybody, um, and then I think that it's a win-win for all of us, um, all of our, all of our community, and all of us, all of the people that visit the city as well. Thank you. Uh, that little ding was the bell, so right on time. I have Councillor Canole. Councillor Canole. Yes, thank you very much, and uh, thank you to all, to all the members for their comments, etc. But yeah, I agree. Look, sure, a few dot points. I mean, certainly running as it is now, so that people have certainty. Um, and that is important, and uh, I don't see any reason why all the other bus, uh, uh, you know, services majority are running, where these are servicing odd areas where they do need connection. Um, yes, we do need to look at the options. 
it must run to places that people want to go to. So the destinations is critically important because otherwise why bother? You don't need to skirt around the outside of the city to get to the other side of the city um, because there has to be, it, has, it does have to go to places. And I still say Rundle Mall and Rundle Street are, are critically important in that because that's, that's half of the reason why you would go to the city. And obviously it's uh, just some other services otherwise. And again, like all of the other, the services must be seamless. It must be making must make life easy for people and so that it is encouragement and encouragement to stop taking cars, et cetera. And yes, if, if in this conversation, we're able to talk about a, a viable uh, method by which uh, we can utilize other, uh, the, the other buses, et cetera, going back to where they, uh, where they came from, in many cases empty, as we all know. And I think it, it, there is just need to be a, a very big conversation around that because uh, you know, it, it, a mountain can be made out of anything. And I think if we are talking about these things, then it is important that we consider that you know, people are coming to the city uh, um, you know, on a paid bus. So they're only talking about going out uh, where they would have possibly a concern. But it's also then, if we can do that, then we can obviously uh, mitigate the use of the, the service if that's what we can, if that's one can replace the other. That's a conversation. It's not that, uh, you know, that's something you, you decide after you've gone through all the uh, advice and all of the, you know, the options. But anyway, so I, I trust, I'm, I'm sure we'll all vote uh, uh, positively for this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. I have no more speakers. I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor. Sorry, Councillor Sims. Thanks. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry, Thanks. your oh, that was the uh, a last minute raise the hand. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. That's um, right. Look, uh, I um, I must admit I'm a little bit unsure about uh, this um, amendment because I do support um, a big uh, bulk of it. The only element that does concern me is the reference that's been made a few times now around the. Um, if uh, the free public transport is provided throughout the whole city, then the, the uh, and there's another bus route provided, then this service would be discontinued. And I worry a little bit about that because it does service a particular, as I mentioned before, a particular group in the community that um, require uh, support and it runs a particular route. Um, so I'm a bit concerned about kind of offering that up as part of the negotiation process with the government. But look, I'm, I'm inclined to support this motion anyway, but I just wanted to flag that um, concern. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't want us to be in a situation where we lose um, a service that is quite vital to um, some people in our community. Of course, it would be great for us to have free tr public transport um, offered throughout the city. I think we all share that objective. That would be fantastic. But let's not also um, lose a, a service that provides uh, support to a particular group in the community. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. A and look, you did correct me and say that the members may well support my proposal, but I suggest to you that you were wrong, sadly. Um, this is the uh, amendment that's been proposed and Councillor Hyde suggests that it's an improvement on mine because it has the word rejects in there. It is in fact a step back. It, it actually suggests that the government, um, uh, that we should work with the government to provide free public transport on buses throughout the city. That has nothing to do with the city connector. It also suggests that uh, the above initiative free transport combined with the rerouting of uh, or rerouting. I'm never sure whether it's routing or routing, but anyway, the, the routing of bus uh, routes to adequately cover parts of the city currently serviced by the City Connector. That's a huge qualification. That is actually saying we are open to substitutes of free public transport and alternative routes that adequately cover parts currently serviced by the City Connector. It is a step back. It is, in fact, going towards uh, Franz's initiative. I still can't believe that the Minister for Transport's son is, uh, father rather, is sitting there proposing alternatives to, uh, to the you, Minister. Thank you, Councillor Martin, if we'd talked to the motion before us. Thank you. Oh, I understand that. I, I just, I'm constantly amazed. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But uh, anyway, Lord Mayor, um, this is not the motion it appears to be. 
Uh, it is, in fact, a retrograde step. It is exactly what I expected of the team, that is to support the axing of the City Connector Service, consistent with all of the cuts we've heard tonight. This is about saying to the state, you provide free uh, public transport, free buses, free trams, free whatever, um, to adequately cover parts currently serviced by the City Connector, and we'll be happy. We are not. We are not. Team Adelaide is proposing axing the City Connector. That is the only message the ratepayers of, of Adelaide and North Adelaide need to hear. And they will hear it loud and clear. I will help them see through this hideous little motion which suggests rejecting while at the same time seeking an accommodation. Uh, Lord Mayor, uh, the, you, can, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. Um, this, is, this is ludicrous. Um, Councillor Kouros, you have spoken, so I'm assuming that's a question. Um, my question is, is that um, in rejecting this uh, proposal by the state government to look at a, a rerouting, routing the connector bus, um, would they take, a, will it a compromise, it, will it compromise the position in the sense of, um, you know, removing the connector bus? Could they then choose to say, no, we, re we reject your proposal for a free um, transport within the city um, and we're going to do our own uh, rerouting without your um, input? Is, are they still going to come back to us for some sort of input? Uh, CEO? Oh, it's really Lord Mayor. The letter from the Minister specifically states that officers of the newly established South Australian Public Transport Authority will continue to liaise with officers of the City of Adelaide to develop potential options for this service. So it appears to me that they're open to a, a conversation to, to work out the way forward. So um, I think there is opportunity for that. Okay. Uh, sorry, Councillor Kouros. Sorry, I just want to be very clear because I do not want to lose any services um, for North Adelaide. And I believe that this proposal is a compromise for the whole of the city and for North Adelaide. And we're still keeping the uh, connector bus route, uh, route that we have. They will come back to us. I wanna be very clear in my decision here that they will come back to us and advise us. So there's just a question. To, so we're just doing questions. I want, to, I want to be clear that they will come back to us and we will still have further discussions. And would that is that that it will be the case? CEO? For you, Lord Mayor, the um, the, resol the the motion that's before council states that we would reject the move by the state government. Now to do that, that's going to require a letter to the minister. And in that letter to the minister, we can clarify our expectations. And that's what we would do if this motion is successful. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will now go to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, firstly, it is rerouting. Uh, routing is the uh, American pronunciation, but we, of course, uh, speak the Queen's English here in the Commonwealth of Australia. Um, uh, and secondly, it is, it is, it is Stefan Canole, not Stefan Canole, Stefan Canole. So uh, if we could get those things right, that'd be a very, very good start. Yeah, thank, you for the, thank you for the uh, lesson in pronunciation, Deputy Lord Mayor. Would you like to sum up on your amendment? Oh, I mean, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's clearly a, a great idea, Lord Mayor. Um, free public transport in the city. Uh, it's uh, it's what we want. It's a groundbreaking idea put forward by Councillor Canole. Um, uh, and I think uh, we should absolutely, at every opportunity we get, be pushing towards this. Um, this is quite uh, an innovative and lateral way that we can push towards this, um, seeing an opportunity where the government wants to rationalise what is an inefficient service, uh, but we don't want to see less services uh, for our residents, for our ratepayers, and and for people in the city. And this is exactly a way that we can achieve that. This is this is a way forward. Um, it's a constructive way forward, uh, but it very very clearly states the 
level of service that we expect, and that's the level of service that our ratepayers expect. Um, and just again to come back to uh, to Councillor Sim's point, I don't think, um, uh, for example, from a South Ward perspective, when you talk about uh, the route which is Sturt and Halifax Street um, that the vulnerable use to traverse South Ward from the many social service providers there, when you're talking about that, my expectation as a South Ward councillor would be that a bus service, if we had free public transport, is rerouted and so that we have a bus that travels along that corridor. And so I think if you're if you're um, someone who's homeless and you're in Whitmore Square and you want to go to the Hutt Street Centre um, for breakfast, you don't really care whether that's a 99C or a H9 whatever. Um, if it's free, it's free and it's going in, it's going in that direction. So that fulfills your, your purpose for that end. Um, uh, but look, uh, this, is, this is the way that we should be going. It's not a step backwards, Lord Mayor. It's actually a step forwards, uh, pushing for free public transport in the city, telling the minister the level of service that our ratepayers expect, rightly so, because uh, it's been provided to them before. Um, and can I just say, you know, this is why um, this is why people should be uh, weary to locking themselves into agreements um, that go beyond their their sort of uh, their crystal ball as far as their forward estimates goes, because they might um, uh, need to adjust or amend them one day. So, um, if the state government hadn't done that before, we wouldn't be having this argument now. So, I'll just make that point. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, um, we will go to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. So that is carried. That then, uh, was that a division call, Councillor Martin? It is a division call, please. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Council uh, members. Oh, Jenny, thank you. Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. Would all those in favour of the amendment please raise your hand and keep it raised until all names have been called? Councillor Kuros, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canole, Councillor Kira, Councillor Ho. Thank you. That now becomes a substantive. I'll just go back to see if anybody else would like to speak to it. If not, I'll go to the mover, which is Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, to sum oh, sorry. Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, can, can I, as a point of clarification, make it clear? That the motion that elected members have just approved does not bear resemblance to the motion that was proposed. What I was proposing was that the city connector service as it is, is preserved and that we tell the state government that that is our intention and our bottom line. This motion that was previously approved came from the baseline of the City Connector Service is, to quote uh, Councillor Hyde, the Deputy Lord Mayor, very costly, very inefficient. That is the basis of what was put to you. The alternative is apparently free public transport through the city. And all of this, all of this does not speak to the intention of the motion that I proposed, which is that this is a vital cross city service. There is no route that goes from uh, East Terrace to West Terrace. There is no route that goes from uh, the West of North Adelaide to the East of North Adelaide. These are the creations of the City Connector Service. And it is whistling Dixie to believe that somehow, magically, Franz's son is going to come up yeah, with Minister a- Minister Canole, we're talking about the Minister for Transport, Minister Canole. That's right. It's uh, Stefan. Stefan. Minister Canole. We will we will pay respect in this chamber, Minister Canole. Well, I only use the word uh, Stefan in deference to uh, a councillor Hyde, the deputy lord mayor. Yes, it would be Minister Stefan Canole. Thank okay. you, Councillor Martin. Uh, well, Lord Mayor, look, I I can't tell you how much I value your constant interruptions. It, it's an abiding comfort to me to know that every time I speak. You will interrupt me, and now tonight I know you will open somebody else's microphone to interrupt me. It is so good to know that you're always thinking of me in this fashion. However, the motion that was adopted is a retrograde step, and I will make sure that the voters of North Adelaide understand precisely what this council has just approved. Yet another cut. Lord Mayor, 
you are in danger of being known as Lord Mayor Cut, because that is what has happened tonight. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I, I'm, I'm sorry that you feel so special. I do interrupt lots of members when they are speaking and, and unfortunately, Councillor Sims, I interrupted you before as well. So, but if councillors will all speak to the motions before them, I won't interrupt anyone. Um, I will now go to the vote, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. You have your hand up, Councillor Kouros. Did yeah, I have, have a question, question, Lord Mayor. Is it usual practice for a councillor to threaten the Lord Mayor and threaten other councillors? Thank you, <laughs> Councillor. I'm not going. I'm going to take that as a rhetoric question, and uh, we will move on to the next thing, Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor. Can I call a division on that, please, Lord Mayor? <laughs> you can. Jenny? Certainly. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please raise your hand and keep it raised till names have been called. Councillor Kouros, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Apprehim today, Councillor Canole, Councillor Kira, Councillor Ho. Thank you. Uh, members, that takes us to 10.7 uh, on the agenda, which is the City of Adelaide submission, uh, Federal Parliamentary Inquiry into Homelessness. And I will look for a mover and a seconder. It is a report for noting and approving the submission. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, members. Thank you, Councillor Canole. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Did you wish only to speak? To, yeah, only to thank the team um, uh, for their good work um, on this, Lord Mayor. And uh, of course, I know that you yourself in your capacity are uh, working um, at pace on the issue of homelessness as well, including doing uh, a number of bits of advocacy, uh, including uh, in your role as um, chair of the Capital City Committee of Lord Mayors as well. So I commend you for that and I commend our administration for the work that they're doing um, with Thank this you. submission. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Canole, did you wish to speak? No. No. Members? If not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Sorry, I just have to unmute you so that we have it. Summed up. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried, thank you. Uh, members, we go to uh, 10.8, which is the appointment of a Deputy Chair for Committee. Um, Members, there are two periods here. So, uh, so it's a deputy chair for the period July to December and also January to June. Um, so we can actually, it can be the same person or it can be different because it's two blocks of time, but I'll look for nominations. Uh, deputy Lord Mayor. Yes, I nominate Councillor Kouros for the first period. And I guess if she wants the second period. So the first period. I look for any other nomination. Oh, firstly, Councillor Kouros, are you happy to accept the nomination? Sorry, I'm just waiting for the... Un Thanks, thank you. Do I have yeah. to nominate which period or do I just accept? Uh, you can accept the nomination. You can say which period you're happy to accept it for. Well, I think... Um, thank you for the nomination, but I think that it should be split. Um, I'm happy to do the first period um, and I'm happy for another nomination for the second period. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor, I nominate Councillor Sims. Uh, for any particular period, Councillor Martin. Oh, look, both, uh, you know, if he wants one, that's fine. If he'd like to continue, that's fine too, whichever he'd prefer. Okay. Councillor Sims, would you like to accept a nomination for one Yes, or thank both? you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, if Councillor Kouros is happy to do it in the first half, I'm happy to do it in the second. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Deputy Lord Mayor, you had your hand up. Oh, no, it's all good. No worries. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Moran, you had your hand up. 
Sorry, Councillor Moran, I'm just trying to unmute you. Hmm. There we go. No. Apologies. I'm sorry. Uh, Jenny, can you unmute Councillor Moran? Sorry, I was just going to nominate Councillor Sims, so that's oh, been done. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, so, members, we have two nominations uh, for the first period, Councillor Cross, the second period, Councillor Sims. If there's no further nominations. We don't require a ballot. Uh, I will look like I'll look for a mover for uh, Councillor Kouros for the period 1 July to 31st December and Councillor Sims from 1 January to 30th of June 2021. Um, I have Councillor uh, Abraham today, seconded by Councillor Canole. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak at all? No, Councillor Canole? No, thank you. Members will go to the vote. Those in favour uh, by uh, proper hand. Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Uh, thank you, Councillor Corus and Councillor Sims. Uh, we it takes us to uh, 10.9, which is the North Street uh, traffic, um, uh, traffic investigation. I'll look for a mover. I have... De oh, sorry, Councillor Abraham today, I, I did lower your hand. I didn't realise you were moving the motion. And uh, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? Uh, just very quickly, Lord Mayor, to uh, thank administration uh, for, for their work. Uh, and also uh, thank um, the uh, Western Village Association for, for the work that they do uh, in the northwestern uh, part of the CBD. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? No, thank you. Thank you. Members, if not, uh, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. I'm done. Thank you, members, to the vote. Uh, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, Councillor Moran, I, uh, you've disappeared from my screen for the moment. I'm just letting you know that I can't see if you're voting. 10.10 um, .10 is the Adelaide Botanic High School. Uh, Councillor Abraham today. I'm looking for a, a, a nominate. Oh, first of all, I'll do the um, procedural. Uh, so the first one I need to actually is just to do the procedural and then I'll go to nominations. So I have got... Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded by Councillor Sims. Um, did you wish to speak to the procedural at all, members? No. No. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, procedural's done. Then I'll look for nominations. Thank you, members. I have got Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate Councillor Hyde. Deputy Lord Mayor, um, I'll just ask the Deputy Lord Mayor, would you want to accept the nomination, Deputy Lord Mayor? No, I had no need for me to go back to school, but thank you, Councillor Sims. Oh, I was hoping you'd enjoy it as much as I have, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm disappointed. Thank you. We will go to uh, Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to nominate you. Position. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Um, I will we'll accept that nomination and the, it not being a remunerated position, there's no need for me to absent myself at this point. Um, Councillor Martin. Oh, uh, look, Lord Mayor, I was going to nominate Councillor Kouros, but I'm just delighted to see that you've nominated. I think you'll be a, a, an outstanding representative on the Botanic High School um, Committee, so that's great. Well done. Thank you, Councillor Martin. <laughs> ah, note, such, such surprise. Um, members, are there any other nominations? If not, uh, I'll put that... I'll, uh, Need a motion to move that uh, that I be nominated. 
So thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded. Uh, Councillor Canal. Uh, members, did you, did you wish to speak at all? Uh, only to say that my comments about returning to school, Mayor, were not a reflection um, uh, on you. You are, of course, eminently qualified, holding multiple bachelor's degrees masters and a PhD so uh, I'm sure you'll okay. contribute to the committee very much so. <laughs> go back as principal no um, right so members if we have nothing else we'll go to the vote those in favor those against thank you very much members members that takes us to uh, 10.11, which is the results of the 2020 supplementary election for the central ward. Um, and we are moving that we note the report. I have Councillor Martin seconded by Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Oh, my apologies. I think we both tried to unmute you at the same time. Just a moment. There we go. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I just want to say uh, a few words about the report um, and congratulate, by the way, uh, Councillor uh, Mackey. I know he will bring uh, to us uh, his previous experience as a councillor and not only that, his substantial experience as an administrator in government, community organisations and in uh, such things as event management too. And can I just also acknowledge the part played in his success by uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor as the campaign manager for the Team Adelaide candidate. Well done, Alex. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I also wanted to congratulate um, Councillor Mackey on his election. Um, he brings a huge amount of experience having been on council before many years ago and I'm a big fan of comebacks Lord Mayor um, so it's great to see someone coming back onto the council um, but also uh, um, Councillor Mackey has been a, a leading voice in the city over many many years and indeed I remember his Lord Mayoral um, run and watching that with great interest when I was a university student um, back in, I think it was 2002, 2004. Um, and I think uh, Greg has been a real trailblazer in the city. So it's really exciting to see him join the council and um, very much look forward to working with him. Thank you. Uh, I have got Councillor Mackey. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you to uh, my council colleagues uh, who've spoken beforehand for their good wishes. Uh, I, I am indeed privileged and honoured to um, uh, uh, be here in this August company. I, I really just have three questions which I, I think I'd like to put to the administration uh, that are germane to the whole uh, notion of elections in local government and supplementary elections. First question is, what actions did the City of Adelaide undertake to update the voter role and promote enrolment prior to the close of the role? My second question, and I'm happy to repeat them or forward them uh, for, for the record, what has the impact, what was the impact of those efforts in terms of additional enrolments? And my third question, how many ballot envelopes uh, were returned as no longer at this address? Um, Lord Mayor, just very, very briefly, I know these are procedural uh, um, matters, uh, matters of process, uh, uh, but I, I think it, it, it is, relevant uh, to the importance of participation in our local democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Um, given there are three questions, what we might do is take those on notice and dis of course. distribute the of course. information to all members. Um, Thank you. Hopefully in the next day or two. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Uh, I will go to uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, then Councillor Canal. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Obviously, I uh, just wish to echo the congratulations uh, for Greg, obviously an election for under very peculiar circumstances, um, given one can't actually really campaign. Um, uh, and just to correct the record, as Councillor Martin imputed. Uh, can we just oh, not? Lord Mayor, I must, because as I said to every candidate, I did not get involved in the election. 
I've never lost thank it. You. Thank or you. Thank, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. We are actually talking to a report for noting uh, members. Uh, Councillor Canole. Just a short uh, congratulations and also look forward to working together. I mean, this is about the city and uh, how we get there is important. Thank you. And uh, before I go back to Councillor Martin, um, uh, I'm no stranger to Councillor Mackey over many incarnations and probably 25 years, if not a little bit longer. Um, so it's lovely to have you on board and hopefully we'll bring back some much uh, wanted articulate debate on the motions before us would be very enjoyable. I will go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Councillor Martin. Um, Lord Mayor, look, I just wanted to say, um, uh, without interruption, uh, summed up. Oh, that was it. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that's carried. Thank you, members. Uh, 12 point, uh, sorry, 10.12 is the quarterly forward procurement report. It's noting that there are no procurements. I will look for a mover. Members, a mover, please. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today and, uh, and a seconder in Councillor Canole. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak at all? Councillor Canole? No, members? If not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Can't, sorry, I'll just unmute you so that we can... Sum up. up. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, and that takes us to item 10.13, which is the COVID-19 Small Business Assistance uh, Report. And I will look for a mover and a seconder. I have Councillor Martin and Councillor Canog. Councillor Martin. Thank you. Thank you. Um, look, I, I um, thank the administration for the response. It is a response um, to the motion that I brought forward and which Council supported. Um, sadly, uh, the, um, the report is simply um, a series of reasons as to why we can do no more uh, to help small business, which is reeling from the pandemic. Um, uh, I did anticipate this would be the case, and so I lodged uh, uh, separately a motion with notice, which will come up later tonight, um, uh, for the design of a scheme to directly assist business and so I will say nothing further until we have the chance to discuss that in motions with notice. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Summed up. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you, members. Um, we will now, I can find my papers. Um, members, we're actually now going to do a, uh, a motion to exclude. There are four reports uh, this evening. Um, uh, when uh, this obviously goes live onto YouTube, when the recording goes in, it's cut so that it goes straight from when we go to recess to when we're back into, uh, into reports. So I will look for a motion uh, on each of those. If I could have a mover and a seconder, please, for 12.1.1, which is a strategic property matter. matter. Um, is that a question, Councillor Sims? Yes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It's a procedural question. I wonder if we could deal with the motions on notice first. Um, I'm just conscious there may be people that are tuning in to listen to the discussion and feels like we've got a bit of a head of steam um, going. So maybe we could deal with those before we move into confidential discussions. My preference would be to actually do the confidential uh, before we get to the councillor's agenda items, but I will leave it to, if I can actually ask 
members to put their hands, uh, their, um, their virtual hands down for a moment. Uh, so I will ask if there's leave of the council to go to item, straight to item 13. Could, could I just articulate my rationale for that, Lord Mayor? Uh, I, I just need a leave of the council. It's not a motion, it's simply oh. a, a, a question of the council. Uh, so members, those of you that would like to move to item 13 on the agenda. Uh, those against, so we keep going. Thank you, that uh, is, uh, we'll continue with uh, the motions to exclude Councillor Sims. Um, I will go to Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, and seconded by Councillor Canole for 12.1.1, which is a strategic property matter. Uh, members, any comments? If not, I'll go to the, oh, sorry, it just moved again. Uh, Summed up. I've got to move to sum up. Thank you, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. Members, I look for a mover for 12.1.2. Uh, I have Councillor Abraham today, seconded by Councillor Canole. Uh, Councillor uh, members, are there is any comments, discussion? If not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Summed up. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, Councillors, can I have a mover and a second for a motion to order the exclusion of the public for item 12.1.3, which is the Capital City Committee agenda? And I have... Councillor Abraham today and seconded by Councillor Canole. Members, if not, I'll go to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Thumbs up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. And if I could have a move and a second of a motion to exclusion for the public for item 12.1.4, which is the Adelaide Central Market Authority's chair recruitment. And I have Councillor Canole seconded by Councillor Abraham today. Councillor uh, members, if not, Councillor Canole, sum up. Thumbs up. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, members of the public and staff, thank you very much for attending thus far. Um, any members of the public and staff not associated with items 12.1.1, 12.1.2, 12.1.3 and 12.1.4. The streaming will now see. Okay. Thank you, members. The next item on the agenda is item 13, which is the Lord Mayor's report uh, from the 9th of June. So first of all, I do welcome uh, Greg Mackey, OAM, to his first council meeting. And I look forward to all that you'll bring to our chamber. Um, in recent weeks, I've met with the Deputy Prime Minister, Michael McCormack, as part of the Council of Capital City Lord Mayor's continued advocacy for an economic stimulus package through investment in capital cities to support recovery post-COVID-19. Uh, I've met with Peter Malinowskis, leader of the state opposition. Um, I had an impact and recovery from, uh, uh, from COVID-19 meetings with the Adelaide Festivals, um, the Adelaide Convention Bureau representatives, as well as Mark Duffy, Duffy from Department of Primary and Cabinet. I met with, state, uh, with um, Nat Cook, MP, Shadow State Minister for Human Services, Kate Hart and Neil McFarlane, the Department of Environment and Water on Climate Change Strategy, uh, Tim Boundy, the CEO of Renew Adelaide, Margie Stephens, OAM Community Outreach Dental Program, Chris Burns, CEO, and Tim O'Callaghan, the chair of the Hutt Street Centre, Creative Industries Ministerial Advisory Committee, of which I'm a member to discuss focus areas of emerging from industry consultations. Professor Robert Hill, the director of the Environment Institute, University of Adelaide, about the impact of extreme heat on trees within the greater Adelaide area and how um, our teams can work together. 
I spoke at the Speech Pathology Australia's online awards, where the City of Adelaide was presented with the Community Contribution Award for our Communication Access Accreditation Project, which is where all staff at the Customer Service Centre, the libraries and community centres have been trained in ways to better support people who don't use speech or have speech that is difficult to understand. So congratulations to the team. Uh, that was a fabulous award for us to receive. The City of Adelaide was also announced as one of three finalists in the LGA Leadership Excellence Awards in the category of Excellence in Environmental Leadership and Sustainability for the City of Adelaide's long-term renewable electricity power purchase agreement, one of which I know that we are all very proud. Since the last council meeting, the state government COVID-19 restrictions have continued to be relaxed and in the light of this, several council services have returned to limited operations and many of the city businesses are now reopened for trade. All three of the council's libraries have reopened, as have our community centres. Uh, the Adelaide Town Hall also reopened last week, and which was celebrated with a performance of the Adelaide High School Band on the balcony at lunchtime on Friday last week. So I hope some of you managed to enjoy that. The Recovery and Reimagine portal has had more than 100 ideas submitted by the community, and we're also encouraging visitors back to the city with the My Adelaide campaign, uh, which is the hashtag My Adelaide Council members. Um, council is already implementing ideas, um, including the very first project, which was the Green Heart Mode into Victoria Square, Tazanyanga. Um, as well as the delivery of 20 outdoor heaters to local cafes and restaurants to support local traders to provide comfortable outdoor, outdoor dining experiences, which uh, we believe will attract more patrons to their business. Um, we will continue to work towards a speedy recovery uh, collaboratively with all sectors across the city. Um, if I could have someone move that, that report be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Canole, seconded by Councillor Abraham today. Members to the vote, those in favour? Thank you, that is carried. Um, item 14 is, item 14.1 is reports from council members and I'll look for a mover. Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Um, yes, uh, Lord Mayor, just briefly, um, uh, and for the record, always, um, uh, I attended a meeting of the Adelaide Airport's consultative group, uh, and there were, in the three-month period to the end of March, 926 aircraft movements over the city of North Adelaide during the curfew period from 11pm to 6am. Yeah. Um, unaffected in, uh, uh, for the most part, by the uh, COVID pandemic. Um, may, may I just, for the information of elected members, uh, um, pass on the information that uh, the impact on the airport has been uh, profound. Um, uh, we were told at the meeting that the number of uh, domestic aircraft uh, arriving and leaving from Adelaide is around 30 to 50 a week, as opposed to 500 in the weeks preceding the pandemic. International flights were from somewhere in excess of 50 to about half a dozen. All of the businesses at the airport are reported to be closed or only open periodically. There is virtually no income for Adelaide airports. And uh, a spokesperson for the airports uh, says it will take at least two years for Adelaide Airport to return to the pre-COVID domestic schedule. Um, and just on a note for administration, the airport master plan has been approved by the federal government and is with amendments out again to consultation. And of course, um, uh, responses from the city of Adelaide are sought if the administration didn't already know. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak at all? No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, given no opportunity to uh, make, I guess, what might be called in some contexts a maiden speech, I'm wondering if I might beg your indulgence uh, to uh, uh, 
I, I share uh, with you and elected members and the administration something that I have prepared a little earlier. Members? Good. Far away, Councillor Mackey. Thank you, Lord Mayor, fellow elected members and administration. It's a privilege to return to service as a councillor for Central, Central Ward, but I do so mindful that voter participation in city elections and in local government through much of South Australia is disturbingly and unacceptably low. Each local government area shares with the Electoral Commission of South Australia the responsibility for engaging voters and we must do better. So what are my personal policy priorities for the remaining two and a half years of this term of council? Well, notwithstanding the challenges of campaigning during the COVID-19 pandemic, many of my thoughts about future roles and opportunities for our City Council were outlined uh, during my election campaign, plus blogs and audio interviews available on my website. A major challenge facing the Council and ratepayers is the sustainability and value proposition of our existing operations. While we face a sharp contraction in revenue on the back of the depopulation of our office towers uh, through the pandemic inspired self isolation uh, uh, protocols, we're also a capital city council with capital city responsibilities. We have a balance sheet and asset based to leverage and clearly we've been doing so with some verb in recent years. In this context, I'm convinced of the value and future power of our cultural economy as a driver of economic prosperity and brand uh, of equity and assertion for our capital city. My accumulated experiences over 40 years as a merchant and as a shopkeeper, as an arts and cultural entrepreneur, as a city precinct and public sector leader, all point in this direction. If we can come to better understand and leverage the demand drivers for culture, not only the arts, applied arts and entertainment, but also sport and recreation, education and learning, and even as consumers and members of social interest groups and faith communities, we can turbocharge our city economy across all three cultural economy time zones, daytime, evenings, and night times. To paraphrase from the classic Aussie movie, The Castle, it's about the vibe. During the election campaign, I advocated for a uh, Adelaide City State Summit to bring together thought leaders and experts across a range of spheres of city life to consider how best to focus our economic recovery interventions and concessions. Such a summit would ensure that elected members can hear from a range of subject experts so as to more fully flesh out the feedback from online engagement and outreach that council has commendably been undertaking and to which you referred uh, uh, previously, Lord Mayor. This summit would best be mounted under the auspice of a capital city committee, a symbol of the vital relationship between the two tiers of government. Summits can also have a strategic communication dividend. An upside from such a summit is that it could help us inspire new confidence and hope among our constituents and stakeholders in our future. On the planning front, I'm very clear that we need to embark upon the development of a new city plan. It is a quarter of a century since the last city plan was promulgated. At a time when wholesale reforms to state planning are well advanced and attracting a high level of community concern, we must be ready as a capital city to be in the driver's seat to develop our own plan, both for the community and the state government underpinned by effective consultation effort. And I believe we must redouble our efforts to master planning, especially for the Greater Central West Precinct from Tartanyunga Victoria Square in the east through to West Terrace and bounded by Weymouth Street to the north and Wright Street to the south. I also aim to practice a standard of in-chamber civility toward fellow elected members that befits capital city governance and that lifts community confidence and respect in this, their elected body. In turn, this will engender interest rather than cynicism in what the council is doing. And who knows, maybe this will encourage more constituents to exercise their vote. We don't need to love each other, nor to entrench factions that can bitterly divide us to provide our fair city of Adelaide with sound advocacy and inspired leadership. Each elected member has a role to play in modeling leadership. And to that end, I foreshadow that as an elected member, I will not be accepting the free tickets to our city arts and entertainments that are offered to council as part of old mode negotiated sponsorship arrangements. We're a tier of government, not a private corporation, and I believe we should pay our own way as individuals. It's time to end the gravy train perception that undermines our legitimacy in the eyes of electors and artists and to model values that can better 
be better respected by citizens and ratepayers. As a cultural advocate, I believe this is the proper course. And so if on occasion, diplomatic courtesy requires that I accept complimentary tickets, I commit to making an equivalent value donation to that presenting organisation or hosting organisation. I've deliberately chosen not to place motions or questions on notice in this, my first council meeting agenda. And I look forward to making a constructive contribution to our deliberations. And I also look forward to a return to the council chamber from July. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, there was a bell ringing in the background too. Sorry, that was me Apologies, typing. Lord, I'm on, I'm on, <laughs> I'm on earphones and 2% battery power. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you, Councillor Mackey. I have got Deputy Lord Mayor. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I just had a question of Councillor Martin about the, the master plan for um, the airport. Is that appropriate to ask if he's may have may have an answer? Uh, I'm sure that Councillor Martin will answer it if he is able. Uh, yeah, happy. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Martin. It was just how long is the consultation open for? If you had that handy, um, I'll have to take that on notice. Um, uh, uh, at the date of the meeting. <laughs> The consultation was about to open, and my recollection is it was a period for six or eight weeks or something of that order. Okay, okay. So, still, I'm sure we can still see like that later if, if you want to. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, if there's no further comment, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Councillor Martin? Um, yes, and uh, thank you to Councillor Mackey. Um, uh, summed up. Thank you. Uh, members, those in favour? Thank you. Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, I think we shall take a, uh, a short break. Um, I'll just look for a yes. Is everybody happy to take a short break? Uh, ten, 10 minutes, hands, just comfort stop. Okay. Councillor Sims, I know you're shaking your head, but I'm not allowed to leave the desk and I need a comfort stop. So if you don't mind indulging me for just a few moments, that would be really appreciated. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back in uh, 10 minutes or less.
Uh, I don't have quorum yet. Thank you, Councillor Sims. That was very kind. <laughs> I also got a cup of tea. I'm happy now. Thanks, members. We have quorum, so we'll get going. Um, the next item on our agenda is questions on notice. Um, uh, members, as previously, we will take the questions as read. Um, uh, all the answers to the questions have gone up on our website and will be of course published in the minutes of the meeting. Um, that takes us to questions without notice. I will go to uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Yes, th uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, my question without notice concerns the question on notice to the administration which sought the advice about what contractual or common law rights of termination or postponement are available to the City of Adelaide with respect to the Central Market Arcade redevelopment. The administration replied simply that the City was legally bound to an agreement with ICD property but did not countenance the question of common law rights. Could the administration please advise what are the council's common law rights with respect to termination or postponement? Um, CEO. Yeah, thanks. Um, Tom McCready, could you respond, please? Um, Through you, Lord Mayor, uh, in regards to common law rights, for, first and foremost, we've had a legal review of your question, Councillor Martin. Um, effectively, what it said, and it, it relates to a comment you made earlier in regards to a contract associated with the, uh, the connector bus. We are, we are contractually bound, whether it's common law or whatever, with a party where council has entered into an agreement We've used the common seal, which we've been, uh, effectively sealed the document, and the proponent effectively has spent to this present period millions of dollars to get to where they are now. Now, as highlighted in the reply, um, what would happen is effectively, if council wished to entertain, to even exercise a right to come out of that contract, we, we potentially would be liable in regards to, first of all, where the proponent could seek to recover those costs, and also not only the cost of what they've expensed to date, but also future costs in relation to lost uh, potential revenue associated with that. Also, the proponent is also working as we presently speak in regards to their pre-commitments and have also done their pre-lodgement through SCAP. So there is substantial risk to council should council consider to do this. Um, and what I would be recommending is we wouldn't progress on this matter because it would certainly, the liability, the financial liability would certainly outweigh the outcome in regards to seeking to remove ourselves from a contract. Thank you. Um, Lord, Mayor, Lord Mayor, putting to one side uh, the opinion offered by the administration that we should not extricate ourselves from the contract, is it my correct understanding that the administration is saying the common law right exists, however, the costs would be significant. Thank CEO. Sorry. There we go. Yeah, three Lord Mayor. Look, what I'd like to do, Councillor Martin, is provide you with some clarity. So we will endeavour to do that offline um, in the next day or so. I'll get Tom to confirm legally where we stand. Thanks, uh, Lord Mayor. Take that on notice and circulate to members. Yes, thanks. Second question, Lord Mayor. Um, in respect of the City Connector bus service, the administration has advised tonight that the, uh, the Minister for Transport, Stefan Canol, um, advised them in January that uh, the City Connector service would be terminated 
uh, at least the deed of agreement, would be terminated by the state government on June 30th. Four months later, and one week before the elected body was advised of the termination of the City Connector Service, um, a question on note, uh, sorry, a motion on notice was presented to Council asking the Minister to provide free city transport. Did any conversation uh, with the Lord Mayor influence that motion, Lord Mayor? Uh, no. Thank you. Thank you. Members, uh, I did have some questions without notice, but they were from Councillor Moran, who left us earlier this evening. So I will put them on notice. Uh, and that takes us to motions on notice. And without further ado, I will go to Councillor Martin for 17.1. Um, Councillor Martin, you would like to move your motion and I will seek a seconder. Is there a seconder for 17.1? Uh, Simon, I just need you to use your electronic hand. I did see that go up, but... Is it not working? Okay, um, so Councillor Martin Simon is is seconding that I think. No, he's not. Okay, my apologies. Let me. So I've just unmuted yes. you, Simon. Yeah, sorry, Lord Mayor. I have uh, actual conflict of interest. Uh, my apologies. Uh, so thank you. Do I, do I do I need to zoom out? Um, yes, I'll, actually, I'll ask um, Jenny if she can just put you in the waiting room for a moment while the item is discussed. Sure. Certainly, Lord Mayor, I'll do that now. Thank you. Oh, um, sorry, and Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I just need some guidance on whether this relates to the University of Adelaide. Uh, if it's a sublease. Sublease or license holding, Calder. Um, I, I need some advice from administration on that. Okay, um, Rudy, are you there? Yes, I am, Lord Mayor. Um, now, so, I, Tom would be the only one that might be able to tell us that one. Tom, correct. could you just let us know in terms of uh, whether Councillor Sims has a conflict of interest with the University of Adelaide? Firstly, it depends uh, where you're going with the question. Institutions like the university are currently not exempt for paying their, their uh, lease payments and their license payments, unlike the other community services, which was the council direction in regards to the support package. So if you're relating to subtenants, um, effectively the university is still paying their lease payments. Uh -huh. Okay, well, in that and case, there is no conflict. No, and the motion only reads as a question. So there is no actual decision. It's just a question that's going to be asked. So it cannot create a detriment. No. Um, also, once Councillor Ho is back, um, we'll have to ask him what actually the nature of this uh, conflict of interest was, whether it's material, actual, or perceived. So we'll have to clarify that as well for the purpose of the minutes. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks to the um, advice administration. I don't perceive there is a conflict uh, for me, perceived or actual, and I, I will remain in the discussion and thank vote accordingly. Uh, so, members, I am actually still looking for a second. I'm happy to second the motion on that okay. basis, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, um, thank you, Lord Mayor. You will recall this motion came to council as a motion without notice at the last meeting, um, and mm -hmm. you deemed it to not meet uh, the standing orders. Um, I'm not sure why, but you asked that it be placed on notice. Um, it is simple. Um, it's designed to ascertain if the holders of parklands head leases, that is buildings which are generally located on the parklands, and head licenses, uh, playing fields most often, whether they have passed on the generous rent waiver that the council agreed um, back in uh, March. 
why is this important? It is because, uh, and I am acting on information that was uh, presented to me, um, head license holders often have um, multiple sub-licenses, multiple tenants. So uh, in turn, um, let me put it this way, uh, a license holder may pay the council 15,000 a year to rent a chunk of parklands. Um, they in turn might uh, take um, that same piece of property to four other organizations, get $10,000 each from them. And for their 15,000 plus maintenance, uh, they would get the difference. So it's a, it's a profit making deal for many of them. Now, what we need to ask head lease and license holders is have you passed on council's rent-free saving? Um, which is important also because some of those sub-license holders are mum and dad organisations or children's sporting groups, uh, little nippers and the like. And we need to ask that because we just can't be sure whether it has been passed on. And in fact, I'm aware of one circumstance in which instead of passing on a license rent-free uh, or a sub-license rent-free period, um, a organization was handed a management fee, uh, which is effectively the same thing. Now, I'm not suggesting there's been any widespread wrongdoing. Um, all I'm asking is that people have observed the spirit of council's generosity and uh, waived their fees for sub-license or leaseholders, particularly for community sporting groups, kids, mum and dad and the like. Uh, and I just ask um, uh, councillors to support that. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll, I'll reserve my right. Councillor Kerra. Oh, Lord Mayor. My apologies. Um, sorry. Sorry? Yep, you're there. Um, thanks. Um, look, this is problematic. Um, this is problematic. Uh, we, have, uh, we have legal arrangements with, uh, with tenants. But we don't have legal arrangements uh, with subtenants. Uh, what this is asking us to do uh, is effectively to change the original motion to extend that. We have leases uh, with tenants. We have agreed uh, to waive or to, to provide a, a period of relief in relation to those leases. Those, uh, those tenants uh, have subleases, which are commercial arrangements that those tenants have with other entities. So I, I, I would say to councillors, uh, this is very problematic. This is uh, we're on very shaky legal ground with this, and I think to be prudent, uh, this should not be supported. Thank you. I have um, just oh, Councillor Sims. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'm not sure how this is problematic. I thought the. Um, rationale behind what uh, council agreed to some months ago um, was for the benefit to be passed on to um, the tenant. I thought that was the intention um, behind um, this. Um, and if that's not what is happening, um, then I think it'd be good for us to get to the bottom of it. So all this is is a request for, for information. I'm not sure how that is uh, problematic in any way. Um, really, I think this is about ensuring that um, people are complying with the, the spirit of the, um, the benefit that councils conferred on them. So I'm supportive of this and um, I'd encourage others to back it as well. It seems pretty sensible to me. Um, if, if I may, Councillor Sims, I think the problem is that uh, the request by Councillor Martin is that we contact the sublease and licence holders and our only legal relationship is with the licence and lease holders. Therefore, we, we can't sort of intervene with sub lessee matters and therefore we can't speak directly to the sub license and lease holders. We can only go to the license and lease holders. But presumably we'd have that information, Lord Mayor, so we could contact them if we wanted to and, and find out whether the benefit is being passed on. I've got the same information in front of you as you have. It seemed quite straightforward that it was uh, legally we don't have a relationship with them and therefore we can't sort of enter into that correspondence only with the lease or licence holder to ask them if they've actually sure. passed it on. So um, that would require an amendment or a variation to the... Oh, if that, I haven't got the admin comments in front of me, Lord Mayor. Um, 
because it's difficult trying to work remotely off them um, on the yeah. computer so um so i will go to councillor martin i can see your hand is there um uh, Lord Mayor, look, we, we do know who those people are. It is a requirement now of all licences and leases that the city requires the names and details of the sublease and licence holders. That is, that is what we require them to do. Um, yeah, I, I, I understand that. It's just that legally we... we don't intervene other than, you know, yes, we know who they are, but it's not a consent. It's it's a, um, like we don't have a legal uh, relationship with the subleases. We've only got a legal relationship with the, le the lease and licence holders. So therefore well, the only ones we can go to are the ones that we've got a relationship with, which are the lease and licence holders, not the sublease and licence holders. Yeah. All right. Well, look, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm happy uh, to accept uh, the uh, uh, Team Adelaide's view, or Councillor Kira, uh, um, same thing anyway. Um, I'm happy to accept that view, um, but uh, it is a lesson for us in this regard. Um, if Council is going to hand around sums of money in the expectation yes. that those benefits will be passed on, then it ought to present to the Council in the original instance uh, a measure which is watertight and one which is Sorry. not subject to manipulation. Sorry, not wishing to interrupt, Councillor Mount, but you have already spoken. Um, and unless oh. you're summing up, then I, yeah, I'm, um, I'm then sorry, I'll Lord Mayor. go back to you. So, no, look, I'm sorry. Uh, I have Councillor Kouros. I just want a point of clarification that it's actually not Councillor Kerr's view, it's actually fact. So I just want that cleared. Point of clarification, thank you. Okay, I don't have any further questions. If not, I will go to Councillor Martin to sum up. Councillor Martin. Um, Lord Mayor, um, as much as I have great respect for what Councillor Kira says, on occasion, um, it is not necessarily fact. It is a view that is being put. I, I am happy uh, for him to put that view, but not for his view to automatically be regarded as fact, much less with the enthusiasm that Councillor Kouros seems to. So, Lord Mayor, in summation, let me say, this is a good lesson for us, that when matters come to us, which are painted as uh, largesse on the part of council to assist the community, we need to be aware that it may be a very limited benefit that we're passing on and that for the most part users of the parklands go on paying while a lucky few have had a bonus from the City of Adelaide. Thank you Councillor Martin. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? Uh, that is lost. Thank you. Councillor, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Di Sorry. Division. Jenny. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please raise your hand and keep it raised until all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Mackey and Councillor Sims. One, two, three, four. So that's lost. Yeah. I've just lost a couple of uh, council members too. Um, right, we are going to 17.3, Councillor Sims. Excuse me, Lord Mayor, I'll just let Councillor Ho back in the meeting. Thank you.
Rudy, did you have something you wish to share with us? Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Ho, are you there? He is there. Yep, um, if you could just um, further to the previous uh, agenda item, clarify what your conflict of interest was so uh, we can incorporate that in the minutes. Sure, it is an actual conflict of interest. I am the chairman of a sports club, which is the subtenant of Comets Club who leads Part 25. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, thank, thank you. Rudy, can you also ensure that on item 17.2, which was done early on the agenda, that Councillor Abraham today's conflict of interest as being a member of CAP was recorded for the minutes as well? He did leave the meeting, yep. um, but I'm Abraham. not sure it was captured for the minutes. Sure. Councillor Abraham today, can you please confirm that? Consistent with your earlier conflict of interest on that, for the purpose of the minutes? Yes, 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 I can confirm that. Um, sorry, I couldn't um, uh, get the Lord Mayor's attention early enough to, to call that conflict there and then. All right, that's noted. Thank you. Yeah, I have it in the, uh, in the chat room. So I'm sorry, I just needed to call it out, make sure it's in the minutes. That's okay. Uh, thank you. I have uh, Councillor Sims, motion on notice 17.3, supporting our arts community. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed. Uh, look for a seconder. Members, I'm looking for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. The reason I'm putting this motion forward is um, members will be aware of um, the significant impact that um, COVID-19 has had on um, the cultural and arts sector in the uh, city of Adelaide, but not just here in Adelaide, right across the country. Um, and one of the big problems has been the failure of the federal government to put forward a support package aimed specifically at the arts. And I know that there is something in the works, but it, it hasn't yet been um, announced. Um, and certainly when I put this forward, uh, I had heard that the government was going to be doing something and they still haven't um, come to the table. But also of particular concern is the fact that JobKeeper doesn't extend to casual workers. And of course, lots of the people that work in the arts sector are on casual contracts. And um, I am concerned that uh, many of our arts workers here in Adelaide are not going to be getting support during this time. And so that's why I'm proposing that um, the council forms this position and uh, charges you, Lord Mayor, to um, write a letter to uh, communicate council support for that. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, reserve my right. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, um, look, I must speak against this motion. Um, I do appreciate the sentiment here, um, but I think there are two uh, key problems here. Firstly, uh, this is a, uh, a motion that will, uh, will make, will ask council to write to the federal government uh, to expand its JobKeeper program uh, to include casual workers uh, in the arts sector. Now, casual workers have been excluded from the JobKeeper program uh, for quite fundamental uh, economic and legal reasons. Um, Moreover, uh, we will then be singling out casual workers in one uh, segment for our uh, advocacy. What about casual workers uh, in the hospitality sector? Uh, what about casual workers in the retail sector? What about casual workers uh, in the building sector? I could go on. So it, it is highly problematic. It is basically a backdoor means by which Councillor um, uh, uh, Councillor Sims is seeking to uh, introduce something he has been pushing for quite some time, and that is uh, casual workers to receive protections that uh, for, for a fundamental reason they don't, they don't receive. Um, that's one problem. The other problem is I think overall, uh, we need help. We need, um, we need overall help with our overall economy. Uh, in many ways, the arts sector is best served uh, when you have an economy that's uh, functioning well and you have people getting paid uh, in all their other jobs with which they then spend the money to patronize the arts. They then go, uh, if you're working as a builder or you're, you've got a job as an accountant, you can then go and spend money 
on the arts, on the opera, or, or what have you. Um, the problem here is that singling out the arts sector for sort of a, a help package in, in a vacuum, I don't think makes sense. And I don't know whether it's the best way for us to advocate when what our city desperately needs from the federal government is very big, large scale capital and infrastructure projects from which you will get the best multiplier uh, effects of all. So I, I would say that it's, it's on balance, it's actually a, a, a negative uh, a motion, unfortunately. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, <clears throat> uh, th thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it would be disingenuous of me to have um, um, made the statements that I've made uh, under elected members' reports and, and not be willing to uh, consider supporting uh, this motion. Um, I understand the point that Councillor Kira uh, is making, but I would also make the point, right now, construction workers are still constructing arts workers have no work. Um, uh, they have been effectively thrown on the scrap heap uh, and uh, the intention, I believe, of count, I would imagine of Councillor Sim's motion, um, while, while maybe rhetorical in its nature, is for this city of arts and culture uh, uh, to invite, ask the Lord Mayor to write to the Prime Minister to bring to his attention the, the view of the community in South Australia, of the capital city community, that um, uh, the arts have been in particular uh, uh, severely adversely impacted uh, by uh, the, the COVID-19 uh, restrictions. Uh, and for that reason, I will support the motion. Thank you. I have Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you. Um, look, I, I also speak in support of Councillor Sims's proposal, and I am not aware of his having uh, pushed separately for casual workers um, to receive protection uh, to which they are not entitled um, at any time, although that may well be one of his goals in life. It is certainly not one with which I am familiar. Um, uh, it is not highly problematic uh, to suggest that we do need to assist uh, the arts community. And the point that uh, Councillor Mackey makes, that is, this city of arts and culture has been adversely, especially adversely affected uh, by the impacts of the pandemic, is well made. Um, we have some of the world's best festivals, and they are not occurring and may not occur for some considerable time. And all of those people associated with those events are feeling the pain. Indeed, the advertiser has reported frequently about uh, workers associated with the, uh, the festival center with uh, which you also, Lord Mayor, are associated, uh, having had uh, no work, uh, having been on the street, ineligible for the JobKeeper allowance. Now, sure, it is important that we look after the overall economy. And I'm pleased to say that uh, councillors will have the opportunity, including Councillor Kira, to support a motion to help the overall economy uh, by providing a rate exemption to small business. That's coming up shortly. Um, but let's look after uh, at least the interests of arts uh, workers, the arts community, uh, by asking the government, the federal government, um, to consider and that is all we are doing here, consider the possibility of assistance. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, uh, members, I also, I, I, actually, I won't say anything because I have got the Deputy Lord Mayor's hand raised. I'll go to Deputy Lord Mayor's and I'll speak before I go back to Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Sorry to cut you off there. Um, uh, just a few things to set the record straight when it comes to the Adelaide Festival Centre and, and other associated entities such as the Adelaide Venue Management Corporation. Um, of course, we must consider that they're actually government uh, owned and government operated entities. That's why they're not covered under JobKeeper, just as the City of Adelaide and other local government employees have not been covered under JobKeeper. It is the responsibility of each level of government to work uh, to look after their casualised workforce. 
um, uh, and that that's been made very clear. And if governments choose not to do that, then they choose not to do that. Um, uh, with regards to support for the arts and cultural sector generally, of course, um, very much supportive. And uh, I think we will see more things come out as time goes on. Of course, it's worth noting that $750 million uh, in this financial year was committed by the federal government uh, through various bodies uh, to the arts across Australia. That's a record number, and it's more than any other uh, previous year um, since Federation. So uh, there is record support for the arts sector there. But uh, to correct the record as well, um, uh, there actually was a support package um, uh, that's been released. $27 million was released um, on, uh, it was announced and released after that on the 9th of April um, of this year. And that actually went to a number of different uh, artistic and creative organizations from regional arts centers to indigenous arts um, uh, and many others along the way. So to say that there hasn't been any support is actually uh, completely incorrect. Um, of course, we have to remember also um, uh, that at this time of crisis, uh, the job seeker payment has received quite a significant supplement um, and that payment um, with the supplement, along with the supplement, uh, actually uh, makes up, if you take the median uh, income Australia-wide of, uh, of uh, artists and creatives and people in that sector, it's actually 70%. It's actually 70%. That's on job seek. That's on job seeker. Now, for the ones that are eligible for the job keeper, um, uh, it pretty much comes up to 100%. And obviously, um, that's not the vast majority. It's a casualized workforce in the gig economy and what have you. But um, uh, that's that's really that's really the main mechanism for support here uh, is job seeker, and that's what everyone's entitled to, so long as you're a permanent resident. Um, uh, so to say that there's no support is actually completely disingenuous um, and it's actually completely wrong. So, um, look, I, I'm broadly supportive of the motion. I'll just finish off quickly. The only thing I disagree with um, is three. I'm not going to propose an amendment because we're now past 1am um, and I'll, I'll vote against it on the, on the basis that three is in there. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, there be no other speakers. Look, uh, I actually am going to speak in support of this motion. Um, it's not just the artists, it's the production crews, it's the designers, it's the sound technicians, it's the lighting technicians. Um, they are a casual workforce by the nature of what they do, going from gig to gig and uh, performance to performance. And it's been a very, very difficult and devastating time for our arts and cultural um, industry. And these sectors have been hit very hard. And yes, there has been money released. They generally go into administration or to keep the centres running as opposed to providing support for the artists. Um, if the motion is carried, I would be uh, very happy to write that letter on behalf of Council to the Prime Minister. Um, Councillor Sim. Thanks very much, um, Lord Mayor, for your support um, on that. Um, and look, I agree with um, the comments that have been made by many of the, the councillors. And just to reinforce the, the comments uh, that you have made and, and also um, Councillor Mackey and Councillor Martin, one of the big problems, of course, that the art uh, and cultural sectors face at the moment is that because of um, COVID-19, it's not possible to hold concerts and so on. Um, and so literally, uh, workers have been in a situation where they're not getting support. The nature of um, that workforce is that it is um, primarily casual. Um, and so there are lots of people working in the sector that are, are missing out. And um, I think it's really important that the federal government steps up and, and provides support for them because uh, Adelaide, as has been stated, is an arts and culture city. And um, we're uniquely impacted uh, by that. Um, and uh, we really need to ensure that our sector uh, is sustained during this time. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. And that takes us to uh, 17.4, Councillor Sims Outdoor Exercise Equipment. And I will look for a seconder. Councillor Martin has his hand raised, Councillor Sims. 
Thanks, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed. Did you want to speak to it? Oh, yes, thank you. Lord Mayor, um, there are about 17 gyms in the City of Adelaide, as administration have noted in their comments. And whilst uh, they were given the green light to reopen last week, um, they are operating under new restrictions at the moment in terms of social distancing and um, there are restrictions placed on the uh, number of people that can access the gym at any given time. And as a result, it is making it more difficult for people to get in and access uh, indoor gym and uh, exercise facilities at times that they would like. And this may well be uh, the case for some time. And so what I'm proposing is that uh, administration look at some options to install low cost, and indeed that's stipulated um, or cost effective is stipulated in the motion, options to increase the availability of exercise equipment in public spaces. Um, and that would encourage people to use the parkland. So I've given the example of chin up bars and administration have done some um, costings in their comments this wouldn't be hugely expensive. I think um, they mentioned it would be anywhere between vicinity of five to ten thousand dollars. So something we can um, afford. Um, but I think it would be a worthwhile investment um, at this time. Get people to use our public space, but also provide people with a few more options. And I'd also point out that there are lots of personal trainers as well um, that uh, use the the public space and would train clients in the city of Adelaide and it would probably be beneficial for them to be able to use it too. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Yep. You've unmu unmuted me? You are unmuted. Oh, excellent, thank you. Um, look, I, I, um, I was quite surprised uh, when I saw uh, this motion and um, pleasantly surprised, I might add, uh, at the detail that's been provided by the administration. And that map, um, which you may have seen on the, uh, uh, the information that was provided, um, is really interesting because it shows that there is nothing of uh, outdoor exercise equipment in the North Parklands, nothing in the West Parklands, uh, apart from the uh, Adelaide High School, and nothing in the South Parklands. Um, the East Parklands, on the other hand, seems to be uh, really well catered for. Um, and it clearly shows uh, that we could do more consistent with our health and well-being goal in our strategic plan. Um, these facilities are well used. And look, I, I, I hasten to draw the distinction uh, uh, between paid gyms and outdoor exercise facilities. In fact, it's it's a bit misleading to conflate the two because outdoor exercise equipment users are generally different people. They are people who are either jogging, cycling or walking. And in fact, I walk past a set of our exercise equipment on a regular basis outside the Adelaide University club rooms. And I have to say, I haven't ever seen the equipment not being used. There is always someone or a group of people gathered around using the equipment, even in COVID times. On uh, Saturday, I noticed there were about eight people crowded around, um, much too close for my comfort, I must say. But look, uh, I, I suspect that we do need the administration to investigate and come back, which is exactly what this is asking us to do. And who knows, out of that may come a plan or a proposal to install more of this equipment and to engage more fully with our parklands users. Um, th th this equipment is incredibly well used. We should support it. Thank you. Councillor Knoll. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I must say that it's been interesting. I mean, I have used the outdoor equipment and then uh, while I did my rounds when I lived closer to their parklands, and certainly it's useful. That it was overused is a bit hard to say. But I'm thinking here a little bit differently. And the fact is that, um, number one, the reason why we everything was shut down was because of the potential contamination from the bacteria, uh, or say from the virus, um, from one person to the next. Now, we're spending all this energy from the various gyms and everybody else to clean and sanitize between each, each patron. 
and uh, you know, as you know, some people don't share things. Here we have got an unregulated uh, environment where people are going to use, and if there is an issue, then obviously there needs to be some form of, of cleaning and things like that in between to make sure people don't transfer the virus from one to the next. So I think, uh, you know, I mean, from the uh, from where they are positioned, it is in a space that is con that is uh, well used by a lot of people, certainly, and uh, uh, and certainly there have people who've been using it. But I, I, I ask the question that if this isn't about the exercise of, uh, you know, use of the equipment, it's the use of that if we prevent the contamination from one person to the next. And if this is the reasoning, if the, the COVID-19 is the reasoning for this, then you're going to have to say, how are we as a council going to look after this equipment uh, so that uh, people can be ensured that we are not contributing to their potential uh, 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 illness? And I think that's that's really the question because there are a lot of gyms, there are lots of gyms, and as they open up, people will be able to use them and and uh, get on with their lives. There are trainers that bring on their own equipment; they have all of that as well. But I think in this instance, uh, it is it, it, it you'll, it's for a short term uh, uh, idea, uh, but it won't can, it won't really uh, uh, do anything for the long term, and it actually doesn't address the issue that people uh, would have to worry about, and that is the potential for contamination. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Abrahim today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I've got a couple of issues with this motion. Um, one is that uh, this might potentially take away business from uh, the local oh. gyms. Now, these local gyms are um, businesses, they're ratepayers. Uh, that, that's one issue. The second issue is that um, it's not just a matter of um, putting this equipment in, in the parklands, but we need to make sure that we design and build the infrastructure. That's the, the footpaths, lighting, uh, and, and who knows, with the way COVID-19 is going, we might even have to uh, provide um, sanitizing stations um, uh, around uh, this equipment. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I'm not gonna support this uh, because uh, this will essentially become a maintenance liability for us. That's, that's the way I look at it. Thank you. Councillor Kuros. Am I on? Oh, yes. I, um, I have to say, uh, I think about two, three weeks ago, I went to the East Parklands, I'm looking like on the map here, and I saw the circuit um, that was there, fitness circuit. And I have to say, I was a little bit jealous. Um, I can't see why we can't put a few more of these fitness circuits, um, maybe even one, dare I say it, in the north, because as we can see, they're heavily all one-sided on the, on the map. And um, I would like to see a little bit more outdoor fitness equipment. I would like to see that investigated. Um, I can't see why we can't have something in, in the squares, like Whitmore Square maybe. I don't know, that's an option. Or we're near the aquatic centre. I mean, people are there swimming already. Maybe, you know, they could, uh, you know, use some fitness equipment, out, you know, outside the centre. Um, we, you know, it, it is um, forms of, of, of people's daily life. Um, keeping fit, if they see the equipment there, it, uh, they will use it. Um, I do love that circuit in the East Parklands and I do think that we should have that somewhere else in the city. Um, I would love an investigation on that and, uh, and have that explored. Thank you, Councillor Martin. I'm assuming it's a question, Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, it is a question, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, do, do we uh, have any um, uh, cleaning of uh, outdoor gym equipment? you know, sanitizing? Does someone go around and sort of uh, sanitize it or are we satisfied that sunlight does the trick? <laughs> See you. Yeah, it's really lovely. We would have a cleaning program for all of our gyms, our barbecues, our outdoor equipment. Um, I couldn't tell you the frequency, but I can assure you that we do have a cleaning program. Uh, and does that apply for the buttons on pedestrian crossings as well? Um, I believe so. 
so, but um, I can take okay. that on notice. But I'm pretty sure we, we have a cleansing program. We'll, we'll for talk to that when we get to that item on the agenda. Thank you. Oh, no, it Thank just... Thank you. Thank okay. you. That's the question. I do have the Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I do have concerns around this, but I mean, it comes to a fundamental question. Why would we be paying for people's exercise equipment anyway? Why would why would we be doing that? I mean, I you know I know the I know the exercise gear that's that's in the in the eastern parklands. Um, I see it most days. I see it as I run past in my shoes that I've bought on the ground, which has been there for tens of thousands of years. And I can tell you what that keeps me relatively fit. I have put on some COVID kilos, but you know what it is? It's free. It's free. I mean, for goodness sake. Why is the government meant to be taking responsibility for your own fitness like this? It shouldn't be. It's patently absurd that we would be providing, providing this. Um, people can take care of their own well-being. That's what, the, that's what they're meant to do. We should not be on a whim installing uh, lots and lots of new exercise equipment in the parklands. And, and I, I don't deny, look, they probably will get usage, you know, for the next two weeks, three weeks until people's gyms reopen properly, until people go back to doing what they were doing pre-COVID, when they start pushing the pedestrian crossing buttons again and what have you. But um, I think, uh, I think. look, perhaps if this was two months ago, yeah, I would have entertained it, but not now, it's a bit too late. Um, uh, look, people are getting back into a rhythm, they're going back to their gyms uh, and again, you know, we don't need to be providing this service for people. They can take care of themselves. Oh, sorry, I actually <laughs> muted you. Just a minute. Sorry, I thought you'd finished. Oh, God. No, go. look, it's, it's okay, Lord Mayor. I've, I've made my points fundamentally. Uh, uh, look, people can take care of themselves. Get some runners. Go down to Rundle Mall. Buy some new shoes. We, yeah, the economy. We got it. Okay. Go out for Thank a walk you. Or a jog. Lovely. Right, so. Thank you. I will go to Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I wasn't going to say anything, but following that, you forced me to. BLM. Um, <laughs> social determinants of health. Just Google that. That's all I need to say. Social determinants of health. Educate yourself. Um, save us all having to listen to a lecture from me for the next 10 minutes. Um, and of course, I will support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, <clears throat> Lord Mayor. I just very, very briefly, I, I support the motion and remind um, members that the motion simply notes the restrictions placed and requests that the administration investigate cost effective options. We're not being asked to make a decision. We're not being asked to spend a cent other than our good officer's time uh, at, at this point. Um, we already have an ample precedent of the provision of um, such uh, uh, amenity uh, within our parklands. That is consistent uh, with our role uh, as the local place makers and the local place managers of the public realm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mithers, um, I also uh, uh, do support the investigation of this. Sorry, I'm st um, still laughing, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, you know, wellbeing is actually really central to our strategic plan. So you just have to go back to the strategic plan that we all endorsed earlier this year. And if we're going to have thriving communities, then we actually need to focus on wellbeing. We want to encourage the continued use of the parklands. What we saw during COVID is an extraordinary amount of people that have discovered our parklands and taken to our parklands as the, the place that they go for community, for family, for exercise and for fresh air. And we want that to continue. Um, I would like to make sure that the investigation takes into account that there would be a review through APLA and also that it's in keeping with the uh, Adelaide Parklands Management Strategy. Uh, which addresses all of the parklands, of course, but that we actually can make sure that they are strategically located uh, in accordance with that as well. I'll hand back to you, Councillor Sims, to sum up. Thanks very much, um, Lord Mayor, for your comments and, and other councillors. 
Um, and just to be very clear, this isn't about trying to take uh, business away from um, existing gyms and fitness centres. It is just recognising that more people are out and about exercising in public space at the moment. Um, long may that trend continue. Um, but also, a lot of gyms at the moment are not able to um, have uh, customers using the facilities simply because of the new restrictions. So anything that keeps people active, I think we should look at. It is only an investigation, as is being noted. And uh, let's see what that comes up with. And of course, um, I'd expect there to be a, a cleansing regime, um, as there is with other equipment, incl including exercise equipment, play equipment, and other things that we have in the public space at the moment. Um, but I think this could be a really exciting use of um, our public space and the parklands. And I agree with Councillor Kuros, it'd be fantastic to see something in North Adelaide because that has been um, neglected a little bit with some of this infrastructure. So that would be really exciting to see some activation of, um, of public space in that area. Thank you, Councillor Sims. We'll go to the vote. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, 17.5 is Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran actually left us earlier this evening. Uh, so on that basis, I will withdraw that motion and uh, put it on the forward agenda. 17.6, um, we go to to Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, rebuilding Adelaide's nightlife. Okay. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. I just want to move with a slight variation, and that is inserting the word independent in front of advocate. So that's at point three, DLM? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So investigates the appointment of an independent advocate for the city's nightlife yep. and economy. Okay. Um, I will look for a... Sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord Mayor. I just needed to let me know that Kylie's just dropped out with sharing of the document. So I'm just going to try and find that and bring it up in a moment. So okay. I just want to let you know that I... Thank you. We'll, Sorry. We'll, we'll keep going. Uh, so I have a seconder in Councillor Abraham today. And after that, I have Councillor Kouros to speak. So DLM, if you'd like to speak to that. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, and uh, thank you for allowing me to vary that, to offer that clarification um, that we would want an independent advocate. And that's because we want um, frank and fearless uh, advice uh, to be given to us from such a position. Um, uh, I suppose uh, starting out somewhat at the beginning, um, uh, this is not a position uh, even despite its nomenclature and as it seems uh, its nomenclature overseas, that would it all take away um, uh, from your role. In fact, it adds to it um, uh, because it gives you uh, another useful, very useful tool in the kit um, uh, to bolster the policy work and the advocacy work that the City of Adelaide uh, undertakes for what is a key part of our economy, um, uh, but a part of our economy that needs to grow further. So the City of Adelaide, $19 billion um, uh, in, uh, in GDP here. Um, but uh, only one billion of that uh, relates to the night economy. That's despite us being the, as it's been said, artistic and cultural hub uh, for a state of uh, you know almost two million people. So um, I think we can do better in that regard. Um, now, when it comes to the night economy, there's obviously many varying factors um, at play. It's it's very complex and ad hoc regulatory environment um, that governs it, uh, everything from, I think it's the motion outlines, everything sorry. from the, sorry, Lord Mayor, no, um, everything from everything from queue management to liquor licensing to outdoor dining to uh, noise regulations uh, and everything in between. Um, uh, the uh, nightlife advocate, um, name yet to be determined, um, would be someone who advocates to us and brings in advice to us um, uh, on matters relating to the nightlife and how we can easily tweak policy settings around it to ensure that it has the best chance of thriving. Um, that's what I see the position as doing. I also see the position as, 
as playing um, also another role in insofar as being available to the administration and potentially to, to councillors and residents and businesses as well in, in advising them and uh, assisting them and potentially mediating where there are issues, where there are issues where the nighttime economy interacts with the daytime economy and problems that arise there, everything from um, cleansing on Hindley Street, which obviously if you go down there in the wee hours of the morning um, outside of COVID, um, uh, it can be a bit of a nightmare at times. Those those sorts of issues, which which have been addressed um, through the uh, Hindley Street Round Table and the uh, the West End Reference Group and that sort of thing, but. I think having having someone there dedicated in a full time role, dealing with it in a professional manner, um, uh, would be the best way to go about it, uh, basically. And um, of course, as well, it'd be remiss of me, Lord Mayor, to not mention that this was um, uh, a key part of work that you undertook in your time at the at the City of Adelaide, um, uh, working within the administration. Um, uh, so I'm sure that you know the topic even better than I. Um, uh, and know that the good work uh, a nightlife advocate, name yet to be determined, could achieve. Um, uh, we would obviously join uh, a very exclusive uh, club. I think it's about 40 cities around the world um, have nightlife advocates. We would be the first city in Australia, um, uh, and it's really putting us ahead of the curve and meaning that we can best capitalise as we come out of uh, COVID restrictions and, and go into the recovery phase. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, being mindful of the time, I echo what the Deputy Lord Mayor uh, has said. I pretty much agree with everything that uh, he's mentioned. And I'm very much looking forward to what the NARC Burgermeister has, uh, has got to offer. Thank you. I have Councillor uh, Sims next. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I, um, I totally understand what uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor is wanting to achieve um, with this motion in terms of having an enhanced focus on the city's nightlife. Um, but I think, you know, Lord Mayor, we already have a, um, a very effective advocate for the city's light, nightlife in, in your um, position. You're the Lord Mayor, you're the Day Mayor, and you're the Night Mayor. Um, and, you know, Lord, Lord Mayor, um, the clock has uh, struck 12, you're still in the chair. Um, you know, we don't have a situation where suddenly uh, it hits um, midnight and the Lord Mayor turns into a pumpkin and, you know, disappears and we suddenly have the nightmare uh, take charge and, and uh, preside over the council. Um, the reality is that we have um, a, a Lord Mayor that has responsibility for what happens during the day and the night in the city and, of course, the night economy. But also we have uh, three central ward um, councillors who um, are able to advocate in particular for the interests of um, the night economy in their ward. So I think this is um, pretty well covered. And I'm conscious that we are in a difficult financial situation at the moment. Maybe creating um, a new uh, position at this time is, is not necessary. So I'd say let's, let's keep this money in the bank and, and spend it to, towards something else in terms of uh, advocating for our, our night economy. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, look, a question for the administration. Part four of uh, this motion uh, on notice asks for the investigation of a soundproofing subsidy scheme so that residents and hotels may be supported in soundproofing their premises. Um, don't we have such a scheme already, administration? CEO? Uh, through Lord Mayor, I'll ask um, uh, Ian Hill if you could respond, thanks. No, I can't see you, Ian. Um, yes, thank you, Councillor. We do have a noise mitigation mm -hmm. incentive scheme. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yep, okay, sorry. Um, I, I've got an alert up saying that I'm still muted. Um, we do have a noise mitigation incentive scheme, which is mainly, which has been in place for some um, many years now, and it's mainly to help um, mitigate um, noise that residents might experience. 
experience. Um, and that's been in place for quite some time now. Thank you. Um, uh, look, Lord Mayor, um, uh, given that this motion is asking us to do something we're already doing, um, uh, I probably can't support this, but look, I wouldn't support it anyway. Um, uh, I know this is touted as a uh, innovative um, change, something that will improve the city of Adelaide and how it operates. But the truth of the matter is that uh, the city of Adelaide has considered this proposal. It came to the last term of council um, Councillor Hyde was beaten to the punch by uh, Hassam Abiyad, uh, the leader of Team Adelaide. Uh, well, as he was then. Um, well, I hear he still is, but you know, I hear lots of rumours. Um, Councillor so, Martin, we are talking to the motion. Oh, I, look, Lord Mayor, I'm sorry. I, when it's this late, I, I just get the rambles. I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Anyway, look. Actually, no, that, that started at the beginning of the meeting, but please continue. No, 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 it's the much motion. worse as the evening, much worse as the evening progresses. But anyway, look, Martin Hazy um, uh, took it out to the public. He thought it was a great idea when Hassan proposed it. Um, and the community was just appalled. I remember people saying, hang on a minute, we've, we've got a Lord Mayor. Uh, and that's you. And he said, oh, well, you know, we need someone who understands the nighttime economy, someone who can get their head around it. And people said, well, if we need a Lord Mayor who can get their head around the nighttime economy as well as the daytime economy, why don't we just get a new Lord Mayor? So pretty quickly, the Lord Mayor of the time, Martin Hazy, said, well, this is a very bad idea. Um, <laughs> and not, not least... Not least, Lord Mayor, when it was suggested, as Councillor Moran did at that time and has again recently, that the salary of the Lord Mayor be divided 50-50, one for the, uh, the, the, the first Lord Mayor and 50% for the second Lord Mayor. So, look, I, I can't, uh, you know, look, I, I'm all for recycling, but I cannot support a recycled motion of uh, this nature. Um, and, look, I, I will always speak out against Team Adelaide's nightmare. I have next, Councillor Kouros. Uh, so much I wanna say after Councillor Martin's little ramble, but I won't. Um, I just wanna just um, point out that there isn't anything in here that says Lord Mayor. So I, I don't know if everyone's a little bit confused. We're saying appoint an independent advocate. He's given it some names, the nightlife mayor as they do in New York or the night czar as they do in London and you know, so forth. He's given examples. I think that what we can take from this is that we've already done some work in regards to having in the past previous council, as um, the Deputy Lord Mayor mentioned, that maybe we can take those findings and not make it about a Lord Mayor, but the, the, the actual, what the piece that, that is in here investigates, let's put it back to what Councillor Mackey said, it's only an investigation, it's not an implementation. So let's all get that clear. So. We all want to see our nighttime economy lift up. We all want to see an increase of, uh, of that in, in the city. We all want to see our economy start booming. And it's all in light of what we're talking about and the recovery. Maybe what this will be will be will form part of the citywide business model, someone in there. Maybe it will be someone that um, is already within council, uh, that in, in administration. I don't know. But why not just explore the possibility of what it could be and not make it about the Lord Mayor and not make it about her position, but make it about what we can offer out there to the city and improve what we do out there. We're looking at, you know, live music, entertainment, hospitality, liquor licensing, other related matters that and I can guarantee you there's no councillor out there at, at night at 1 or 2 or 3 a.m., every weekend or maybe some i'm not saying couldn't say that but you know um yeah but you might not be at all the nightclubs and all the bars or maybe you are councillor martin could be a bit seedy there um but look 
we don't know the the um, possibility of what this role could bring to the council. I would like it investigated. They do it in, in major cities around the world. I, I'd like to see what that would look like. It's just an investigation, quite simple. It's not complicated. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. I have Councillor Kerra. Councillor Kerra. Thanks, uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I too have had got some reservations along the lines of some of those that have been espoused, but I echo what Councillor Kouros has said. Uh, it's an investigation. Uh, we do know that the night time uh, the night hospitality economy has been particularly hard hit uh, by COVID and by the crisis. I think that if we can eke out some positive messaging uh, from, uh, from uh, some kind of appointment, some kind of position, some kind of role, we don't know exactly what that is. Um, but I think that at this stage, investigation on balance um, can tease something out that may well be positive. I don't want the daytime economy to be forgotten, um, but I think that this can encourage us to, to put up motions that address uh, that aspect as well. Um, my, my, my biggest, um, what I really bemoan is the fact that given there's a, uh, there's a Christmas motion coming up, why wasn't this titled The Nightmare Before Christmas? <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Um, Councillor Mackey. <laughs> uh, uh, look, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, as much <laughs> as I'm delighted uh, uh, to see uh, and hear uh, Councillor Hyde uh, take uh, uh, an interest um, in what is a 24-hour economy uh, in our city. I'm yet to, and having been a stakeholder, trader, uh, mm -hmm. a culture broker and maker uh, in this city for the last 25, 35 years, I'm yet to see or hear any of the operators of that uh, uh, talking about creating another job for a bureaucrat. Um, this is, uh, uh, I absolutely respect and hear, uh, Councillor Kouros and, and um, uh, Councillor Kira, that this is just an investigation. There are many, many things that we could just investigate. Uh, and uh, as much as I love the idea that we might uh, be in the company of New York and Amsterdam and Berlin and London, we're not New York, Amsterdam, Berlin and London. Re relatively speaking, uh, even a growing nighttime economy, and there's an evening time economy and a nighttime economy uh, after dark. Um, I, I, quite honestly, uh, I, I don't see that a, a, a council paid officer uh, that doesn't have statutory responsibilities, such as a commissioner would have uh, in the state uh, uh, um, um, jurisdiction context, I, I do not see that. Uh, this position can do that which uh, any better that which we are already elected to do and that is to represent our city there are 12 advocates uh, and it's not just up to the lord mayor um, uh, to uh, take an interest in our constituents uh, they don't want to be separated off and treated as okay well we've got one person uh, over over there to deal with all of our nighttime problems and the rest of us can just pay attention to the daytime um, I, I think uh, that it, it's an oversimplification. Uh, there's a reason why no other Australian capital city jurisdiction has, has implemented this despite being having much larger nighttime economies. Um, so uh, with that, you know, again, respectfully, I won't be supporting the motion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Donovan. God, Mayor, I do support this motion. I think there's some good evidence from around the world that uh, that this position can be shaped up in a way that is effective, and I think it is worthy of an investigation. I take some of the counterpoints that have been made, and especially the idea of another bureaucrat. Agreed. I don't think anyone wants another bureaucrat, and perhaps that's uh, to be considered within the potential structure, how it can sit um, outside of some of the bureaucratic processes. Uh, but I think from some of the examples that I've seen from around the world, case studies, both small and large, there's some good potential to investigate. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, Councillor Martin, I had your hand, but you've spoken, so I'm assuming that's a question. No? Nope. No. Nope. Uh, Councillor Canole. Okay. Just in short, I mean... Uh... I can see a value, particularly now when we're coming out of COVID, that, that uh, you know there is uh, uh, you know someone that can help 
uh, the NATOM economy uh, boost along. But if I'm thinking that it, we, we're, we're talking about a citywide business model and uh, its job is to get the entire city going and to coordinate you know, how we're, we're going to uh, uh, promote and, and support the city in the various ways uh, through the you know, various interest groups. I, it's, I would see that a role for something like that uh, uh, to, to support and to coordinate uh, you know, an effort uh, would be more valuable than necessarily just having a, an individual uh, because it is a it is part of the whole economy and it does need to be integrated into that. And if, if that position was somewhat uh, as part of uh, a larger, um, you know, particularly like if this model uh, does work out as I expect it should, um, it will then be integrated into that, enabling it to uh, function across all of the different economies and link it together and, and make it work better rather than an individual uh, that that uh, will have a have a, a role, but not necessarily, um, you know, get out, enable outcomes that are, are you know that can benefit the whole city and be part of a, a bigger picture. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Uh, members, I'll just make a few comments. There's no other speakers. Um, oh, uh, as uh, Deputy Lord Mayor mentioned, uh, we did do a lot of work, uh, even going back to yeah. So the first time the uh, at nighttime advocate was raised under different guises was uh, when uh, Stephen Yarwood was uh, the Lord Mayor and then again under Lord Mayor Hazy. Um, I obviously did a lot of work uh, around the evening economy with a strategy that was called Good Evening Adelaide that I don't, I doubt, I think the only person that might remember that would be Councillor Moran. Um, that was actually to try and bridge the gap between day and nighttime economy. And then we did a whole lot of work on the nighttime economy. What, what this would give us, uh, and I do support an investigation, is a single point of contact for those issues around policy, particularly around um, entertainment and liquor licensing and hospitality. Um, it, gives a, it would give us a renewed focus. It doesn't detract at all from my job. Um, I love the fact that you all think that I'm working 24 hours and hanging out in uh, nightclubs uh, in the wee small hours of the morning. Um, uh, I, I do uh, do regularly 12 hour days, but um, that's probably stretching things a little bit. Um, so I do think an advocate that can feed into our policy agenda and also look at delivering um, those thriving economies that we have got in our strategic plan would be very helpful as also as uh, well as feeding into uh, the citywide business model that uh, Councillor Kouros mentioned. Um, there is some great data, as Councillor Donovan said, there is some really good case studies where we can see how they've actually shaped that. It's not a bureaucrat, it is an advocate. Um, and uh, I'd be very keen to see what kind of investigation or what kind of information would come back for us to assess. And with that, I will hand over to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. And thank you for your insightful and supportive um, uh, comments. Of course, yes, I'm yet to encounter anyone, resident or business, who wants just another bureaucrat um, uh, in the city of Adelaide or in, in Town Hall. And that's absolutely not what's being proposed, and I guess. Uh, upon reflection, I, I think that's part of the reason why overseas they haven't given um, uh, this sort of role uh, a typical bureaucratic name like the associate director of the night economy or something like that. It's because the job is um, uh, a little bit more interesting than that. Um, it is, dare I say it, uh, a little bit sexier than that. Um, it's something that uh, can intrigue people. Uh, it's something that can actually, unlike what bureaucrats do, which is work within the status quo, the, the role of this is to actually challenge the status quo, to challenge um, uh, uh, why does the Duke of Brunswick Beer Garden need to close at this certain hour? Why does PJ O'Brien's on East Terrace have to have uh, a string quartet between these hours pursuant to their liquor license? Um, you know, all these crazy things um, that the system has thrown up um, uh, over time, the complex policy, but the ad hoc policy um, uh, and the reason why it needs to be at arm's length from the council and an independent advocate is because um, 
yes, we do have central ward councillors, but I mean, we all know of, of the issue. Every time there's a, a, an Ebenezer night market, um, uh, we get the same complaints from the same people. Um, uh, we are, and at the end of the day, the people running the stalls there, uh, they don't vote for us, they're not ratepayers, but the person making the noise complaint does. Uh, it's the same down in, in the West End, in Hindley Street. Um, so there are competing interests there, but we need to know what are the policy settings um, that actually achieve uh, the most amount of good for the most amount of people. Um, and I'm, I'm very hopeful that a position and an advocate um, and a policy expert such as this will be able to provide us with that advice and provide us with that information and not just challenge um, uh, some of our views or our policies or how we operate, um, uh, but also that of the state government as well to ensure that they're uh, doing their part um, to make sure they're not implementing a uh, policy that has unintended consequences um, for the night economy. So um, look, I'll leave it there. I, I thank councillors for their, for their supportive comments and um, assuming it gets up, really, really interested and very much open-minded to see um, what any investigation comes back with. Thank you. Members, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Yes, Councillor Martin. That's a division, please. Division. Jenny, would you like to do a call a division? Certainly. Thank you, council members. The division has been called. All those in favour, please raise your hand and keep it raised until I call out all names. Councillor Kuros, Councillor Abrahimzadeh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Councillor Kira, Councillor Donovan. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'd like to propose an adjournment of the remaining items due to the fact that it is now almost 12.30 and we have been at this meeting for some time and there is, is still likely to be well and truly more than another hour and a half or so, which would take us into 2 a.m. Um, I, so I propose it because our decision making is declining and uh, it is an unreasonable hour to continue. And I propose that uh, we adjourn until such time as the CEO determines to be suitable, knowing that likely that may be this coming up Tuesday, um, one week from now. Uh, members, so uh, I will need a, a, a majority of members to vote for an adjournment. So those who would like to adjourn, if you, I could see you by your hand. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And those against, we have one, two, three, four, five. Interesting. Um, I actually, uh, as much as I would like to stop right now, I think if we can actually move through the rest of the motions that we then have completed the work on tonight's agenda, um, uh, so I will cast against the adjournment for this evening's agenda. Um, and hopefully we can keep going and crack through this fairly quickly. Um, with that, I am going to go to 17.7, .7, which Deputy Lord Mayor is the um, uh, traffic configuration. Deputy Lord I'm just waiting for it to pop up. Okay. And, and I will ask for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. In the interest of time, I'll keep this quite brief. Um, uh, while there have obviously been benefits to the um, uh, automatic nature of traffic signals within the City of Adelaide, um, uh, now I've as was before, but now I'm receiving increased complaints um, about the prevalence of uh, needing to stop in the city. And the real bugbear for people is that they're needing to stop at traffic lights when there is no traffic um, coming in any other direction. So um, the automatic nature of the lights means that people, uh, particularly you know, during the night and in the wee hours of the morning are being um, uh, impeded and stopped unnecessarily sometimes at you know multiple traffic lights in a row 
adding anywhere from five to 10 minutes to their journey, um, uh, which is a bad outcome. Um, uh, furthermore, at three, I think it would be really important for us to, to seek to optimize our light cycles. Um, as uh, I understand through my inquiries with the administration that currently the light cycles in the city are um, at the request of DIPTI um, and at the coordination of DIPTI optimized against um, and work against the flow, particularly of north-south traffic. Um, now, I do understand that's because we wish to avoid the city being used uh, merely as a thoroughfare, but um, uh, given the number of uh, quite significant infrastructure projects that are happening, this is a moving feast, and this current state government um, uh, is bringing a lot of the infrastructure around the city up to scratch. So I think it's time that we review that to ensure that it's still working um, as it should be. Uh, obviously, during uh, the coronavirus, lots of people are catching a car, well, taking their car in um, and utilising uh, our U parks, which, um, and I take my hat off to the team because those utilisation rates are, and occupancy rates are very, very high. Um, but it means that we do need to be optimising our lights to make sure that they can cater for more cars on the road because um, that's how people are coming in. Lastly, um, and I'd encourage members to cast their memories back to our strategic planning days um, and the word bubbles that we were presented with um, around sentiment for the city of Adelaide. The number one issue for people uh, that visit our city is accessibility um, uh, and primarily it's accessibility by car. So we need to make sure we're accessible by car. That does not mean that such a review won't take into account or shouldn't take into account um, uh, the views and the necessary uh, accommodations that we must make for pedestrians. In fact, I expect that to be presented alongside it and factor into it um, very much so, but uh, uh, we do need to be making sure we're moving the most amount of people in the least amount of time. Um, and that's what this one's about. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Canal. Yeah, thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I've been intrigued how the, this argument has been progressed in the sense that this was against uh, uh, people walking the streets and, and using the city uh, you know, on the footpaths, et cetera, when really this is about efficiency of the streets. And uh, the bottom line here is that um, the objective is to make it efficient for pedestrians and for vehicles. In the middle of the night, I have driven through the, the city and had to stop at every light um, with no other tra cross traffic. So we are wasting time. And not only that, it, and, uh, uh, it, it doesn't enhance anything. So if you think about it, uh, what we're trying to achieve again is bringing the lights back into, into sync, enabling them to be efficiently used by pedestrians and uh, for vehicles and transport overall. And we're using it in accordance with the demand. And I think if we can, like that, and that's the conversation, not about uh, uh, making things more awkward for pedestrians, et cetera, um, it's much more that uh, we bring it back so that we can reassess it, and that would be a really good effort too, so that we are delivering it uh, and it is going to be uh, you know, used uh, more effectively. And again, we keep talking about COVID, and the whole purpose of all this was about avoiding people touching things. And here today, uh, uh, we've talked about gym equipment and all sorts of things where we're now throwing away those concerns. And so that can't be used anymore as, as one of those concerns that you say, we want the limited touching because this is about making it respond to the individual's need and uh, changing lights all night long is not going to do that without the, without the demand. And I think it's just bringing back so people can get the most efficient use out of it by, by road and also by foot or by whatever it means they want to use. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I think, um, some of uh, my council colleagues might be missing the, the point here. I, I thought when this was proposed, it was on the basis of uh, public health advice to avoid people um, touching things that had a frequent level of, of touch. And, you know, Councillor Canole was thrown in the reference to gym equipment. That's a red herring. Um, no gym equipment in the city is going to have the same number of touching as a, a press button um, on a crossing. Um, so that was the rationale for um, bringing this in. Um, and I thought that it was going to be something that was going to be reviewed anyway. So I'm not sure um, why this motion has been um, put forward. I'd rather let it take its course, wait until the health advice is changed and um, then uh, consider what we do with it. Um, 
I know some councillors have talked about negative uh, feedback in relation to this. I've had completely the opposite um, experience. I did a, a survey on my Facebook. Um, I had about 500 people respond. 85% of those were in favour of retaining um, the automatic push buttons. Um, and I think the reason why people have uh, made the reference to uh, this motion being anti-pedestrian is because it contains the false statement that there is a bias against cars in the city of Adelaide. And I think any objective observer who has followed transport, city, uh, transport policy in the city of Adelaide over the last 10 years would totally disagree with that notion um, because uh, there has been very little progress on bikeways. Um, and in fact, the focus has been on cars. We spend a lot of time talking about parking and cars. So there is no inherent bias um, against cars in the city of Adelaide. That's completely false. Um, I think this measure was welcomed by many in the community. And I saw Lord Mayor, when you announced it on your Facebook, it got a huge amount of um, public support. Um, and indeed, I shared it on my own Facebook and within my social media channels and had lots of positive feedback too. So I think it'd be a real shame for us to dump this, um, particularly when there's no health advice uh, telling us that uh, we should be moving away from this. Let's review it. Um, but to, to throw it out now, it seems like a, a great shame, um, particularly when it's something that's been so well received by the community. Thank you. Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I have an alternate motion, which I have provided to Jenny. Jenny, are you able to bring that up? So, uh, do you want me to read that out? Um, can members read that okay? Hmm. Um, thank you, Councillor Donovan. I'll look for a seconder. Um, has to be someone who uh, hasn't spoken. Councillor Philip Martin. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, please speak to your motion, Councillor Donovan. Look, I think some uh, some good points have been made, and I think uh, both the Deputy Lord Mayor's points and uh, and Councillor Pinnell's points around moving people through the city are exactly the point. So let's get away from talking about modes, specific modes of transport, noting that we are not transport planners, we do not have that expertise. Let's get back to the foundation principles of we are trying to optimise the movement of people through the city. So uh, the, the motion as, as identified, note the benefits and the challenges. I know Lord Mayor, as Councillor Sims just noted, you have received literally tens of thousands of likes on your Facebook uh, page and um, associated comments. There have been so many people who have provided positive feedback about uh, what has been undertaken. And I certainly appreciate that there would have been other feedback received as well. Um, the points that Councillor Canole made about coming to a traffic light and pausing when there's no pedestrian crossing, we have all been in the reverse situation as a pedestrian when you approach and there's no cars going, you've got to wait for your green light. So that happens for sure. Um, the Deputy Lord Mayor's final point about optimising the traffic signals, absolutely. Let's work with DIPD and optimise the traffic signals for movements of people in whatever mode of transport, transport planners look at and see moves the optimal, the, the, the most efficient movement of people rather than looking at any one specific mode. This is how we know transport planning is best undertaken. If you start to pull out specific modes, that's when you wreck the system. So I know I've put in this motion particularly that the, the Heart Foundation has actually just come out on the 31st of May and specifically advocated for, based in the evidence, automated pedestrian crossing. So let's note their advice. 
let's note that there has been some change due to COVID and let's actually look at it without any bias of a specific transport mode and have a review to look at the optimization of movement of people through the city. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. I'll go to uh, Councillor Martin. Um, Councillor Kerr, I do have your hand up, but as the seconder of the motion, I have to go to Councillor Martin first. Councillor Martin, if you and I keep pressing the button at the same time, I'll never be able to unmute you. You'll have to. Um, yeah, no, Lord Mayor, it's a fault in the system because um, it comes up as unmute um, after you clicked. I can hear you click, it's there, I yeah. press it, nothing happens. Um, uh, look, uh, I reserve my right. We'll keep trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I reserve my right. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Kerr. Um, just to clarify, are we speaking, is this an, an amendment? Has this been seconded? This is an amendment uh, passed by Councillor Donovan, seconded by Councillor Martin. Okay, I'll speak to it. Um, I, I don't support this amendment. I think it amounts to hijacking uh, Councillor, um, uh, well, the Deputy Lord Mayor's original motion. I think it amounts to effectively changing the motion completely and turning it into uh, anti-car activism. And I will just briefly read, um, I'll just briefly read uh, the two top rated readers' comments um, uh, the two top readers, readers' comments um, to the article. Uh, we, we had an article that was published in the Times in which all of us spoke uh, about the ideas that we have uh, for to uh, rejuvenate the city. I think we'll all recall that. Here are the two top rated readers' comments. First one is not interested in the CBD anymore. The second top readers' comment is this. ACCC have gone out of their way to decimate business in the CBD with bike and bus lanes, expensive parking and exorbitant parking fines. Latest ridiculous idea they have is for pop-up bike lanes, seemingly determined to keep motor vehicles out of the city. Good luck, as many shoppers have now boycotted the CBD. Now, these are the top rated comments. So we, clearly we have a perception problem. This is always, um, now I'm, I'm speaking against this motion and uh, in doing so, I, I would like to commend the original motion. I think it's a balancing act. We do have to recognize that on balance, COVID has left South Australia. It is not an issue anymore. Um, but what we are in now is the recovery phase. And clearly the perception problem is there. The recovery phase involves returning traffic to an efficient, in fact, improving traffic. So it's even more efficient than it was before. So I do not support this amendment. I do support the original motion. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Uh, I am looking to see if there's any more speakers to this uh, amendment. If not, I will go to the move to sum up. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak? Yeah, we're doing it again. Okay, I will get you to press your button. Okay, I've pressed this one. Beautiful, all right. Okay. I press it, you press it. Thank you. Yes, I've got it. I've worked it out. Now, look, I, I thank uh, uh, Councillor Donovan for this motion. And, and look, I really am disappointed that whenever a subject of this nature comes up, uh, we have instantly uh, these anti-car activism comments and commentary running. Um, and the assertion that somehow the fate of the city has been determined by the way in which it manages motor vehicle traffic. Now, the truth of the matter is, it may be part of uh, the issue. Um, it is not the biggest issue. The issue is the offering. Uh, the City of Adelaide doesn't offer as much as suburban Westfield centres. That is always the problem. They provide a better shopping experience. First of all, there is free parking. Secondly, there is easy access. Thirdly, it is an undercover experience that is uh, insulated from the elements. And finally, uh, and increasingly, and particularly in relation to Burnside, there's a bigger offering and variety of, uh, of retail outlets. Now, these are serious issues. They are the fundamentals we're not addressing. They are the things about which we should be spending hours debating and trying to find solutions to. Instead, we are debating ignoring a state government declared major emergency, which at its center includes uh, measures such as avoiding touching objects 
in, including such things as physical contact through even shaking hands to, to an aid, to the end, to, to enable vehicles to move in and out of the city. Now, uh, I, I feel disappointed to say the least, uh, 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 nostalgic also, because it does take me back. Um, not that I can remember precisely, but I do remember the 60s when tram tracks were pulled up everywhere in favour of cars and in South Australia um, as a means of attracting car manufacturers by demonstrating to them our commitment to the car. Now, those days are past. We are now in a much more sophisticated society than uh, any of us realise, one in which there is a cohabitation of various transport modes. Pedestrians, pedestrians using public transport, cyclists, vehicles, they are all welcome. And the means by which we get them here is to provide them with a satisfactory experience. And it does mean uh, equally for a vehicle stopping at an intersection as it does for a pedestrian standing for five minutes trying to cross a road because the sequencing doesn't work in their favor. Now look, this is a sensible motion that in, in, in addition you can see has, uh, and I do apologize Lord Mayor, it's very late and it's hard to speak at this hour, but this is something that even the National Heart Foundation has endorsed. Now, you know, I, I don't expect it to be supported, uh, not least by councillors who talk about anti-car activism and continue to bury their heads in the sand and do not consider that it is the city that is the problem. We need to address the offering, not the way the cars move. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Um, can I ask uh, administration um, pre-COVID, uh, how many where, how many lights were automated pre-COVID? Do we, uh, do we have a record of that, if possible? It's probably a question on notice, Councillor Kouros. I believe so, yep. Okay, all right, sorry. Um, I was initially not going to vote for this motion um, because my reasons would have been because we are in a pandemic and um, not, sorry, the original motion. Um, we, we're, we're talking to the amendment sorry, now, yep. Councillor Kouros. Yeah, so I just want to just point out that um, there's a lot of discussion here tonight um, about the pandemic, COVID being a reason, um, about, you know, the likes that the Lord Mayor got when you, she ma made the announcement on Facebook, which was when the pandemic hit and why people were liking it. The, um, the position that Councillor Sim said that his group of people commented on his Facebook page. End of the day, um, we have to make a decision here in regards to having these automated lights continue. And in light of recent events with allowing of a protest of 6,000 people to come through into the city, um, a showdown being allowed to happen um, in, uh, on the weekend, I don't seem to think that there is a really a, a fear anymore about this pandemic. It, it worries me that we're actually um, talking about the pandemic when we're allowing numbers in big groups here. So I, I'm, I'm all for an investigation. And I think both of these motions say that, if I'm correct, I'm trying to look at them both. Um, so I'm all for an investigation. I think we could do better, but it is annoying when you come through the city with your car and with these automated lights. It does slow you down. And if that's the purpose for council, councillor Donovan, what she wants to achieve for the city for the cars to slow down, then that's what is happening. But it, but it doesn't all flow. There's something all wrong with, when you're with your car. Hence, when you're walking, yeah, okay. Sometimes it's a little bit frustrating. And I have to admit, um, I have jaywalked, sorry, with these automated lights. Am I allowed to say that? Is it illegal? Because it's been slow, okay? So we, in my walks, I have been crossing when the man is red. So it, something is fundamentally, I know, sorry, I know. Um, 
<laughs> horror, shock horror. Um, so uh, find me, um, but it's frustrating. Something's not right. And I just think we need to investigate this and it's not flowing. So I, I just, I support an investigation um, in it okay. and I, I support the fact that of that. Okay. Uh, I have Councillor Knoll. Okay. Thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Um, first, uh, in, this, in this broader conversation, I mean, each city is different. And uh, you, know, you can't compare us to some of the, the large uh, mega cities, et cetera. And we do, we do have a transition. We have our own uh, uh, transition as Adelaide and how are we going to encourage and enable people to get back to the city? Because that's our problem. I mean, our relevance to, to the greater uh, uh, Adelaide uh, has been very highlighted by our esteemed colleague uh, from the North. And I'm quite amazed that we by denigrating the city to the degree of uh, say, uh, saying that all these others are much better than us, they are certainly the opposition and, and the other su suburban shopping centres are doing a great job. But it is our role uh, to highlight the city and what it does offer. And it does offer a much more than the others, except that it is not as convenient. So first, we must bring the people in. You bring them in by the modes of transport they're using now. You make it easy and convenient. Why? Because you want them to be here. Now you make other modes of transport easy and convenient. That means that they can use public transport and things like that. Because the objective here, a bike is not worth anything and walking is not worth anything if you have to walk or bike between five and 10 kilometers, because that's no longer convenient. You want people to move into these areas. You do that progressively by increasing the need and increasing uh, you know, the desire for these things. So that is how you do that. No, and the other is certainly, once we've achieved these things, I'm all for uh, making things in the pedestrians and for bikes and all that, because you'll see the need, because they'll be there. And the people will be living closer and you can measure that. And we can do all of that. But first is that we have to enable people to use our city better. And then, uh, then you transition those things and you create those environments. Um, you know, like in the Westfields, if you want it, we should do that. We'll bring those sort of motions forward, Councillor Martin, that we should become like a Westfield so that we get people in the city and then we can have a look at these things. But I think, you know, there, there is a path, but there is a thing we need to do here. And I think we just got to think about it and then we can achieve all those other goals. But first, if you know, uh, if I don't make something simpler than something else, then not, nobody's going to do it. And that is behavioral science. So I think we just got to think of those things and we will achieve those goals. And they're my goals as well. But I understand the trip and I don't want to, want to discourage people by, by uh, in, in a sense, forcing them to see this and say, well, I don't want to do that. I'll go somewhere else. And I think uh, that's, it's, it's just one thing after another. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'll go back to Councillor Donovan to sum up. Councillor Donovan. Thank you. thank you, Lord Mayor. And I endorse what uh, Councillor Canol has just stated in that we need to optimise the system for all. This isn't about, no one cares what I think about transport planning. No one cares about what any of us as individual councillors think about transport planning because none of us are transport planners. So if we say, I think we should do, and these, these three people that I spoke to and this comment from the advertiser said, no one cares. Let's go to our transport planners who understand how to move people through the city and let's remove any barriers that we as non-transport planners are trying to impose on them about looking to specific modes of transport. And, and the aim of this motion is highlighted in the only action of point three, which is undertakes a review of traffic signals with DIPTI to optimise the movement of people within the city, considering all modes of transport. Because anyone who has any understanding of transport planning would know that if you optimise it for any single mode, you do not get the best outcome. So we need to remove any of our personal preferences about which mode should be optimised and unleash the possibilities for those who have all of the expertise to do their job. That is the point of this motion. The point of adding in there the, uh, the, the comments about the Heart Foundation is to note that they, as the national body, 
uh, have specifically mentioned automated pedestrian crossings. That was the primary point for including that within the motion, that they have looked to the evidence, they've done all of the uh, review of the evidence and have specifically requested and put out a position statement to every capital city that they should be prioritising these three things in the post-COVID environment. So let's unleash any of our individual preferences. Let's recognise none of us are transport planners and let's actually look to our experts to do that job for us and to optimise the movement of people within the city considering all modes of transport. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Members to the vote. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against? Okay, that is lost. Uh, we go back to the, um, sorry, yes, Councillor Sims? Division, please, Lord Mayor. Jenny? Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. Would all those in favour of the amendment please raise their hand, leave it raised until I raise. No. Councillor Sims, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey. Okay, that takes us back to the substantive. And if there's no other speakers, I'll go back to the well, deputy so, Lord Mayor. Sorry, Lord Mayor. I just I have, I, have, I have a suggestion and a potential um, way to keep, uh, I think, the most amount of people happy, um, noting that I can't actually do it myself, um, but if we were to insert uh, the words optimise for people into the motion, and if someone somewhere could suggest that as a variation, um, and if we kept the bit about removing the inherent bias against cars, so we're still optimising for people and we're removing the bias against cars. I think that would keep um, on balance the majority of councillors um, somewhat pleased. Uh, well, I have Councillor Kouros. Who... I'm happy to move that. So I reckon yeah. it's uh, optimised on point three. Yeah. Okay. So if we could just actually capture that for the... Sorry, Lord Mayor, could we just repeat what is being proposed? I just missed the beginning yeah, of that. It takes a review of the traffic signals with Dipti to optimise uh, for the movement of people. Oh, can't talk. Is that correct? Is that what you're trying to do, Deputy Lord Mayor? Yes, and, and, and keep keep in there removing the bias against cars, etc. Okay. I can and see sorry, your hand sorry, Jenny. Kara, let me just get this first. Thanks. Can I just can I just put to the Deputy Lord Mayor that he may want to consider including after the words uh, the movement of people, uh, including drivers. Uh, then well, that's the cars. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, Jesse. No, what my my point is that we're still we're still at three, removing the inherent bias against car movement in the city. Are you retaining that removing? The yeah, bias? retain. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought you're removing the removing. No, the bias. no, no. Okay, fine. I'm okay, so I also need to. Uh, oh, so that that's mm, so. Uh, I actually need a seconder. Are you asking? Sorry, so I need actually Deputy Lord Mayor to accept that. Oh, okay. Amendment to his motion and also the seconder. I, I think it's agree. an excellent idea from Councillor Kouros. I accept. <laughs> and Councillor Canal, do you agree? Yeah. Okay. Councillor Donovan. Just a point of clarification, and I am loving the um, the attempt to make all things work, but it actually does not work uh, to optimise the movement of people whilst assuming that there is any inherent bias against car movement. It can't be both. It, it, the second part, 
I, I would you could absolutely include optimizing the movement of people, including drivers, but you can't then maintain and remove the inherent bias against car movement in the city. Those two things are at odds with each other. Well, do you want to put in there, including drivers and just take the rest out? I mean, it's the same thing. No. Nah. No? No, nah, that's the best we're going to get. It doesn't work. Okay, so. Members, while we are there, I am just going to mute me all. I don't have any hands raised. I am going to go to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Lord Thanks, Mayor. Lord Mayor. I, I, think, I think this one will still do the trick um, because there definitely is, and it has been confirmed to me by our transport planners, that there is a bias against car movement and it's against it's it's a bias against car movement in a particular direction it's there to impede the movement of people in cars we know that um uh, having said that though uh, there, there absolutely is still scope uh, to improve generally speaking the movement of people um uh, in the city there's I, I believe there's absolutely scope there i confess um as councillor kuros has i do jaywalk occasionally um, uh, and, and I wouldn't contend that this motion, um, as has been suggested, perhaps not in this meeting, but previously over email, that, that it's anti-pedestrian um, or anti-walker. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm an avid walker. I walk most days um, uh, around the place. Uh, I walk around my precinct. I uh, used to press the buttons on the pedestrian crossings quite happily. Um, uh, and yeah, it does frustrate me as well. Um, and certainly at some points in the city, there is space for reclamation of footpaths um, uh, from certain areas for pedestrians um, and other such activities. So uh, I do think we can look at the system as a whole um, uh, and try and get the best of both worlds, bearing in mind the infrastructure that's being built around the greater metro area. Um, uh, it is unfortunate that the city, as we are in the central part of that metro area, we're beholden to other traffic, but um, let's take a look at the whole system. Let's take a fresh look at it um, and see if we can move the most amount of people. Um, of course, we do know those people are, are generally speaking in cars, um, but uh, absolutely the review should consider other modes as well, all modes. Okay, members, we're going to the vote. You just dropped out Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, members, we're going to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, Councillor Sims, division, is that a division? Please. Yep. Jenny? Council members, the division has been called. Please keep your hands raised when I call out. Oh, I can't even speak, sorry. <laughs> Please keep your, raise, your hands raised until I call all names. Thank you. Um, we have Councillor Kuros, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Canol, Councillor Kira, Councillor Ho, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Members, we go to 17.8. Uh, Councillor Kuros, mural on North East corner of Frome Road. You want to take the motion as read? Yes. Um, okay. And I'll seek a seconder. I have got uh, Councillor Canole as a seconder. So if you'd like to speak to your motion. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. It's, um, I guess everyone is familiar with the mural that we're talking about. Um, it's one on the corner of Frome and Rundle Street. So um, this mural is in need of a restoration. Um, so it's, it's perfect opportunity now to bring some life back into the Rundle Street strip. Um, if you can see that the sky um, has faded and the um, underpainting is um, coming through. Um, and uh, we really need to um, take action on this mural now um, as it's fading away. Um, for for everyone to understand the history of it, um, I believe the original, the mural was painted um, by two artists to celebrate the Come Out Festival in 1984. Um, and I, I mean, it, anyone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in approximately about 1998, um, 
and I remember this vividly, I think uh, Driller Armstrong and David Bromley and uh, Bresky Stewart and some other artists blended their style into that mural that was already painted onto the wall. So it's very iconic. Um, it's a very well known, um, you know, as part of the East End precinct. Um, so the restoration of that work is, is uh, it's going to take a substantial amount of money, there's a lot of scaffolding that's needed. Um, and I think it will be a perfect opportunity that since the Adelaide City Council initially supported the work back in 1998, that uh, we can, um, you know, investigate ways um, that, uh, that we can support the renewal and the restoration of the mural um, and add value to the, back to the precinct. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak? Reserve. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I support this. It's a good idea. Um, we do want to make sure, and I'll just put this in administration because it wasn't clear from their, their comment, uh, we will have complete, a complete, complete scope to, um, to approve uh, what may go up on the wall as part of this refreshment or restoration. We're not, because the words are fairly unclear, refresh, restore there might be new material added we don't know but what we want to do is make sure that uh, we all approve what goes forward to make sure that what does uh, go forward for the next 50 years uh, looks lovely uh, is keeping in keeping with the original spirit uh, and is something that we don't um, we you know we, we don't have any concerns about down the track so can can the administration speak to that please I would imagine that it goes around through the public art round table but CEO yes commentary? three Lord Mayor the Part Sorry. three, oh, Claire's there, but part three does suggest that we investigate opportunities. But Claire, any further thoughts? Uh, thank you, Mark, and, and through the Lord Mayor. Normally with murals, it is more about a refresh as opposed to completely um, redesigning or reimagining um, what a mural looks, looks like, and particularly for, for something so iconic as this. Yeah. Um, if there was um, a suggestion um, from the artist that it was a complete revamp and we felt it took it, you know, way beyond what was currently there, then um, yes, that would come through the public art round table. But if it is about refreshing what's there and it could be, it could still could look quite different, but if the intent um, still matches what was there originally, then um, my advice would be we'd, we would just go ahead with with that approach. So it really will come down to, um, you know, what the early um, uh, thinking is from, from the artist. Can, can, I, can, I, can I just submit that if there is any change of content uh, that we ought to be appraised before that content goes up, the Public Art Roundtable doesn't, it's not a decision-making body, uh, simply advisory. Um, so I, I think this is, this is too big, too important. Uh, we, we just must ensure that the, if there is any change of content that we be appraised. So can I at least uh, can I get an undertaking from the administration that if we had to go ahead, uh, that that will take place? Um, so probably. A tempo yeah. Point. So, um, and, so what are you looking to achieve? Do you want to no, approve if, if, what if, the refresh looks like? So that that's unusual, councillor. We wouldn't normally um, bring something like this into the chamber for formal approval because public art is so subjective. So we would rely on the artist reimagining and bringing. Sorry, we're talking over each other. Go. Yeah, I, I thought I might just assist by by clarifying. Um, if there is to be a, a change of content, um, if, if if there is a change of content, and I, I think we know what is a refresh. And what is a change of content? If there's a change of content, can we be appraised? Uh, we, we, we must and should do this. It's a big iconic thing and, and we, we ought to be uh, prudent about this. Um, I, so rather than do an undertaking, because it is a shift in how we would um, normally approach something like this, my advice would be to do an amendment councillor yeah. and that will enable All the right. chamber I, to have, have a view. Okay, okay. I, look, yeah, look, thank I'll you. just put this to, to councillor Kurov. Um, would you consider just adding and varying the, uh, the motion uh, so that uh, 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 number four just says any, any change of content to be approved by council before... Uh, um... 
uh, <coughs> any change of content to be approved by council before uh, execution. Councillor Kouros? Yeah, that's, that's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. I mean, I, I'm sure the artists would, uh, would be happy to do that as well. I don't think there's anything to hide here. If they're wanting to no, no. change anything on the con content of it, or um, I think he'll be happy to... Yeah, I, I, I'm not suggesting there would be. Mary, I, I'm not saying there is, there would be. I'm not oh. suggesting anything untoward. Um, it's just a pure matter of prudence that that's all, because because it's a big, big thing, and, and uh, we, we, it, it just... It's just to cover all bases. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. Um, your seconder, Council Knoll, are you happy with that? Roll. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to go to Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, I will click, then you click. There we go. Okay. Um, may I ask a question of the administration? What is the policy with regard to the lifespan of murals and the action that is taken when a decision needs to be made about murals? Um, I'm trying to unmute you, Director, but it isn't working. Jenny, can you unmute? The... Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm unmuted. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the policy in front of me, Councillor. It's on our website. So um, there is a public art policy. There is street art po policy. There is mural policy. It's pretty much all wrapped up. Um, I don't have it to hand, though, so apologies. But it's on our website. Um, I'm just basing my feedback to Councillor Kira tonight based on um, the last sort of seven years of managing some of this stuff. But we wouldn't normally bring... Um, any sort of update of existing murals back to the chamber. But if you want to, that's fine. That's up to council. Thank you. So we don't know whether this is consistent with or the direct opposite of policy. If what I think, is? I, I think that this motion. The motion as it is, is fine. And I think we've answered that in our admin comment. Okay. All right. Well, look, I, I uh, and uh, there is no no offence intended in this at this hour. I can assure you, but uh, it, it is a bit open ended, in as much as it talks to the renewal, restoration, or replacement, all of which are quite different things and which would produce different processes. To my recollection, you know, for example, if it's renewal. Um, there would be a process that was triggered to invite um, uh, a replacement from uh, different sources, not necessarily the same artist. If it was a restoration, then as the administration says, um, it would be just that, a touch-up. And if it was to be replaced entirely, um, including co-funding from what I don't know uh, sources, including sponsorship, I guess, um, then that would be a problem. Uh, moreover, um, it is a very large step for us to be taking now to um, be asking that works of public art are brought to the elected body for approval. Such matters are usually referred uh, for expert external opinion um, and generally through groups such as the Public Art Roundtable, on which Councillor Kira sits, and which I and the Lord Mayor sit, but in which we are a minority. In fact, expert opinion dominates. Um, I, I, um, I was um, quite prepared to support this, but the further the discussion goes on, uh, the more I can see that um, the options that it proposes are all radically different. And the final note, which requires the council to approve any change of content, um, establishes a precedent with which I'm not comfortable and with which I would think that the, uh, the arts community would be a bit disturbed about as well. So, look, I won't be supporting this. Okay. I will go to Councillor Mackey. Uh, Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, in principle, I, I support um, 
the, the original motion. I'm very, very disturbed, though, uh, by the notion that politicians, and we are politicians, end up putting our noses in and uh, making decisions to approve what is fundamentally uh, uh, an artistic uh, uh, um, process that, quite frankly, uh, decades of, of practice at state and Commonwealth and city government level uh, have has shown to be best left at arm's length from politicians. To take nothing away from the fact that, you know, I might think that I have a decent aesthetic and, and Councillor Kerr, I'm sure, likewise, um, uh, we should not be in the, the, in the business of being the arbiters of what goes up because I can guarantee you uh, uh, once we start doing that, our stores with the community will go down. Thank you. Thank you. I have got Councillor Donovan. I'm just going to make a suggestion that uh, whether you want to make that last um, that last change uh, or, or variation to be uh, any change voted by council rather than approved by council. I, I, I do actually. Uh, it is very very unusual for an artwork to come into council to be approved. That's not the process that we have in any of our policy guidelines. Um, and so it, that would be a very unusual step for us to do that. Um, plus, I do note that the, the motion on notice is requesting an investigation of the opportunities. It's actually not saying that we are going ahead. It's actually investigating what opportunities we have to support the mural, um, given that it's actually in need of a refresh. Just keeping that in mind, councillors. I will go to Councillor Sims and then Councillor Donovan and then count back to Councillor Kerr, I think, for a question. Councillor Sims. Yeah, I'm um, certainly supportive of the original motion, Lord Mayor. I, I do have some concerns around the uh, addition, um, similar to yourself, Councillor Mackey and Councillor Martin, because I think it does establish a bit of a precedent. Um, and I don't think that uh, politicians should be interfering in um, artistic freedom. Um, and I think it's a very important principle that um, artists uh, operate arm's length from um, the political class. Um, and I think it does set a dangerous precedent if this council is going to start suggesting or passing judgment or approving particular artworks and murals that are um, commissioned in the city of Adelaide. I, I don't think that's our role. Um, so yes, I, I would encourage Councillor Kouros as the mover to consider a different uh, a different way of um, capturing that. Maybe simply noting, or as you've suggested, Lord Mayor would be a good way forward. But I'd just urge councillors to be really careful about the precedent that we're establishing here. Thank you. I have Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I was along similar lines going to suggest pot potentially that we could take this in parts because I think um, most councillors would be supportive of one, two and three, but point four continues this um, streak that we seem to be on at the moment of putting in, bringing things back into council for review. And I think, uh, you know, there's quite a few of us who have recently done the company director's course where it was emphasised that council's job is strategic, admin's job is operational delivery. So our job is to look at the overall strategy, not to get in the way of administration delivering on their operational um, uh, plan and, and bringing all of these things back in for an annual review of of, uh, of grants and this uh, bringing in specific changes like this, it, it really does get in the way of administration. So just a suggestion that we could take it in parts so that point four can be considered separately. Um, check with the mover when we get to summation. Um, did you have a question, Councillor Kira? Yeah, Lord Mayor, what was your, so this, I mean, I'm taking on board every, what everyone says, and I don't think it's anyone's intent to veer from the procedure. And, and this is a very unusual, uh, well, we haven't had a motion like this before, we've discussed this before. So I do appreciate uh, Claire telling us that what procedural happens and, and your response to Lord Mayor. But what, what did you say would be an alternative amendment? Did you say? Uh, just in terms of number four, instead of approval, 
approved that it would be noted by council just means that we would know before it's executed. Um, there's no approval process, it's simply a noting process. Um, I will, Jesse, uh, Councillor Kira had his hand up, so I will go to Councillor Kira first. Thanks. Uh, am, I, am I able to comment at this juncture? Uh, yes. Yep. Um, look, can I just say, Lord Mayor, um, I, th this, th there's been a real, there's been some real polarising of this um, being, being suggested by some other councillors. I think it's completely unwarranted. Um, there is no one, and there's nothing in that final uh, at number four that suggests any artistic interference. No one is saying we're going to dictate to the artist what it is that they want to um, include as their refresh or their update or whatever it is. The problem is that we've got um, some very nebulous terms about um, the the actual, there's a, there's a fair bit of leeway. Um, if this is not about politicians interfering with artists. This is about a city council ensuring that the biggest, most prominent mural in the city, the number one biggest and most a well-known piece of public art has at least the councillors themselves uh, some level of approval before it gets before it gets potentially changed. If we don't have this, if we are simply binding ourselves to not be allowed to have any say uh, on what the final on whether something should go ahead or should not go ahead, uh, then what's the point of being on council? We will be in serious trouble down the track if we bind ourselves in that way. Uh, something goes up that is troubling. Um, that is some that is does not meet the approval of the public, and we say to them, well, uh, it's um, what is it? What are the terms? It's 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 precedent or it's uh, practice or it's how things are done. Uh, they'll come and lynch us. Uh, this is just about basic prudence. We're not interfering with the artist's work. We just want to be able to say, okay, listen, well, before it goes up, let's just see what's proposed and just yay or nay. That's it. Okay. And um, I'm sorry, Councillor Kira, but you had spoken before, so um, you got an extra soundbite in there. Councillor Martin, I, you have already spoken, I think, as well. So was this a question? I can't have the same privilege as uh, Councillor Kira. No, I'm sorry. OK, then I have a question. Um, look, I, I, I am looking for um, some confirmation from the administration that the term needs a refresh it is appropriate. I, look, I, I know there are people who think that the Colosseum needs a, a refresh um, and that many of our um, um, uh, protected buildings, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm sorry, Lord Mayor, it's early in the morning. Heritage <laughs> buildings, heritage buildings need a retouch. So uh, what is what is the definition? What is the, the measure by which we say something, a work of art, Public art needs a refresh. I will ask Deputy CEO if the unmute button ever works for me ever again. There you go, Deputy CEO. Thank you, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, so there's there's various um, terminologies that we use in relation to public art, Councillor Martin. Um, and refresh, I would take the dictionary understanding of that, which would be a touch up of an existing work of art. However, for such a large prominent piece, as Councillor Kira has indicated, and knowing that it's quite old and knowing that murals speak to, you know, what the city's feeling or experiencing or sensing at a particular point in time, what I'd be loath to do is restrict um, perhaps what's possible in terms of that site, but note Councillor Keir's concerns around the size and prominence of, of, of the location. Um, so it's not a new piece of art, um, talking to a particular brief that the Public Art Roundtable would sign off on. Um, this is a large prominent mural that the artist and others have said um, you know, they want to refresh. I don't want to constrain what refresh might look like. What I'd like to see is what comes back. Um, and it could be quite different. I don't know. The city's changed. Um, the area's changed. And, you know, what's happening around that um, East End has changed. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure um, I can um, give you the clarity that you're looking for tonight. No, no, that's all right. None of us can provide clarity at this hour. But can you confirm for me that Driller has suggested it needs a refresh? 
Who are you asking the question of? I'm oh, assuming I'm, you're asking the question of Councillor Kuros. I will, no, um, Deputy, Deputy CEO said, I thought, and I'm just checking she did say, Driller had asked for a refresh. So, can I answer that? No, uh, well, I was... I, I it was in the paper. CEO said. It was in the paper. I didn't read that, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but look, I, I, I'm... Just for getting Sorry, I can. Yeah, I can confirm we've been working with Driller for a few months now. Um, Driller has been in touch with us, and he's been working um, with our, our culture team around the the site. So. Okay. Okay. Well, that's thank you, thank you for that. That's you. Really I have. I, great. I have uh, other people who are still waiting to speak, so I will go to the deputy lord mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. It is, um, it is a vexing issue, isn't it? Um, because because I, I mean, I'm loath for us to be the Politburo or, you know, Commission for Censorship. Um, uh, but at the same time, I'm not, I'm not balancing that against, um, against wishing to interfere with any artistic or creative process. I'm, I'm balancing that in my mind against um, the fact that this 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 mural now is um, is really a part of 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 Adelaide. Uh, it's a part of our it's a part of our heritage, um, uh, I think, as well. Um, and so, you know, naturally, with with things that are a part of our heritage, people are often um, uh, unwilling to see them change. Um, sometimes isn't necessarily a bad thing, but um, I, I, I do think we will see we will see some blowback um, uh, if it does depart too heavily from it. If the original motion was more was more prescriptive in, in saying that it is a restoration um, as opposed to a, as opposed to a renewal or a replacement, replacement, yeah, yeah, I, I would be far more comfortable. Um, uh, but um, and I know in, you know in some in some respects an artist's work is never done, and they always often touch up. Um, uh, their works after the fact, but um, yeah, I, I I would just feel uncomfortable with with the substantial departure from what's already there. And I think a lot of people who've grown to love that that little corner on Runder Street um, uh, may feel uncomfortable with that as well. So um, that's why I'm erring on the side of of keeping four. So are there. you? I see. Are you uh, suggesting any variation? to the motion before us, or are you just making a comment? I'm just commenting. I, I, I'm saying that I'm, I'm not at, not completely at ease, but uh, erring on the side of keeping four as it okay. is. Um, noting, of course, that this is a report, an investigation requires that would come back into us anyway. Um, I have no other hands up. I'm going to go to Councillor Kouros to sum up. Um, uh, hmm. uh, something that I thought that was going to be so simple and it's ended up being so complicated. Um, I really, at this, look, the whole intent was to investigate and, uh, and I would want to go down that path. We still have to, uh, we still have to get in touch with the owner and whether he will agree with this. And, um, uh, and we still haven't gone down that path. So if the whole thing is about a, an investigation, I, I'm i going to accept the Lord Mayor to say that, to note it. Um, I think, you know, I don't want to veer from what we normally do with public art. Um, I don't want to, I don't, I understand where Jesse is uh, coming from um, and I, I understand his concerns and, and uh, like Councillor, or oh, Deputy Lord Mayor said, you know, change is hard for some people, but, you know, I guess, um, I think I think just leaving it as what the Lord Mayor suggested, just noting it is, is fair and it's a fair compromise. It comes through council and it allows for some debate if required, um, but we don't know. This may not even happen. It's just a, a possibility of um, it um, being an investigation to allow for some opportunities for this renewal to happen. Um, and that's all I basically wanted. And I didn't want to complicate anything further.
Okay, um, so I, I, I don't, I, sorry, I'm just um, checking. I don't think you can actually change that. It is no. what it is now. Okay. So, um, but with your permission, I will take it in parts. Okay. Yep. Uh, so members, um, show of hands, uh, I'll do this in parts. So we'll go, so, uh, one and two are for noting, so I'll do one and two together. Uh, so members, those that are uh, in favour of one and two, please raise your hand. That is carried. Uh, members, those in favour of uh, number three, please raise your hand. Oh, my apologies, I forgot to do those against for the last one, but I think I have anyone. Uh, thank you, that is carried. Those against, just that last point, number three. I think I've got everybody. And number four, members, those in favour of number four, please raise your hand. Got three, those against. So that is lost. So, members, we have points one, two, and three. Uh, that will, of course, come through with a report uh, to council around um, the opportunities for us to look at that and fund it. Uh, that takes us, members, to 17.9, Councillor Cura, Christmas in the City. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'm going to withdraw this. I understand Councillor Kuros raised a very similar motion about which I forgot. Um, but let's just all uh, reiterate the need to make this Christmas uh, as big and as beautiful as possible, given uh, this is now coming up post COVID. Uh, this uh, year's festival is going to be very much about um, uh, not just uh, comfort and joy, uh, but also about spending. So um, I, I know there's a, there's a workshop. Um, I hope we get lots of detail. Let's, let's dig deep into Christmas, let's all um, support, it, um, support it. Let's all put ideas forward um, and that's it. Excellent, thank you, Councillor Kira. Uh, that takes us to 17.10, Councillor Martin. Yes, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll take the motion as read and look for a seconder. Would you like me to read it? No. Uh, no, I'll take it as read, and um, I have a second in the Deputy Lord Mayor, so please speak to the motion. Oh, staggered. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, now, look, uh, Lord Mayor, this is uh, arguably uh, the most important matter on the agenda tonight. Uh, it's a, uh, a direct request to each member of Council to do something to help our stakeholders, the, uh, the majority of them, small businesses here in the City of Adelaide. And uh, Lord Mayor, we do need to help small businesses in the city of Adelaide survive the, uh, the COVID tsunami. Now, uh, we did see earlier tonight the administration's view of uh, providing direct assistance to business, of which there have been um, very few measures apart from the $4 million package, primarily uh, aimed at giving a rent holiday to our tenants. And while there's nothing uh, wrong with that, it has consumed pretty much all of our COVID measures. Um, and I note also, by the way, uh, there is a claim that the state opposition is somehow m miraculously going to get the numbers on the floor of parliament um, and overcome the majority uh, liberal government uh, to get up some sort of measure that will cost us $9 million a year. That, that by the way, is dreaming. Um, uh, it is perhaps uh, not as big a dream as small business, which is hoping, praying literally, that we will come to their rescue with a measure, much like other uh, councils in the metropolitan area of Adelaide, and in fact across country South Australia have done, by simply providing exemptions. Now this one is for a three month period. Uh, it is proposed that the administration investigate thoroughly so that it comes back to us with a proposal for equitable criteria to determine which small businesses would qualify, um, the manner in which the exemption would be granted, uh, commentary on when it should apply, and I've suggested maybe September, which is when the JobKeeper program ends, 
and what the cost will be. And I say to members, uh, the cost will be substantial. There's no question about that. It could be 17, 18 million dollars, considering small business, not all business, small business. Um, and that is a large amount of money. Uh, you know, the question is, can we afford it? Uh, the answer is, well, can can we afford to borrow a hundred million dollars? Uh, and there certainly is a view that we can afford to borrow a hundred million dollars. But uh, what I'm saying is that for small business, this is uh, an assistance package that is urgent. For us, it represents, sure, a large outlay, but it is not so large that we can't cope. Uh, in my view, um, it is the current plan that we would return to surplus, I understand, in a report to be presented to us uh, sometime in the next four or five years. This might delay it by a year. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, and I'm asking you to support that, that small measure, which will do so much to aid the survival of small business. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor. I'll reserve my right for a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, I must admit, this is something I probably ordinarily would not um, support. However, I will do so in, um, in this circumstance, noting that it is uh, commissioning some modelling and noting that um, our small businesses are um, experiencing extreme pressure at the moment. And when I say it's something I, I wouldn't ordinarily support, that's simply because I'm not sure how we can afford to do it. Um, but I think we should look at it, get the costings done, get some of the modelling done. And also, I'd really like to see us have a discussion about what we can do with our revenue base. I've raised that um, several times now. It would be really good to have a workshop or something to talk through what options there are um, to increase um, our revenue um, at this time um, and, and what we can do as a council to do that so that we can provide uh, relief and support to uh, businesses um, and residents that are struggling. But I will support this um, because it is um, commissioning some modelling to look at some of the options that, that might be available. And I do think we have to do what we can to support businesses that are struggling at the moment. Thank you. I have no other speakers, so I'm going to go to the mover to sum up. Councillor Martin, I'll click the new clip. I clicked. You clicked. We both clicked. Good. Um, uh, look, uh, thank you to the only speaker. Um, uh, look, I, I, uh, I fear that the absence of speakers um, is not a good thing for this motion. Um, but look, you know, it, it is important. We, we uh, have not done anything for small business um, beyond uh, provide uh, the assistance to our tenants uh, and to provide advice to direct them to where they can get assistance. Many small businesses don't qualify for any or they qualify for very little assistance. And we know from the experience of other local government areas where this exemption, this uh, rate free period has been offered, that businesses have said publicly, it's been reported in media, that it has been for them the difference between reopening or indeed continuing in their business. Now, I know that is difficult to believe. I have mentioned previously some of my rate payers in North Adelaide have rates bills ranging between 10 and 40 or $50,000. Um, and therefore a quarter represents a very substantial sum of money to them. Um, members, please support this. You will be helping business. Members, if I can then go to the vote. Those in favour, if you could raise your hand. Those against, that is carried. Holy smoke. Goodness me, didn't call a division? Um, oh yeah, just for the fun of it. Members, 
council members have been called. <laughs> Sorry, look. Uh, could all those in favour of the motion please raise your hand and keep your hands raised until I call all names. Councillor Sims, Councillor Abrahimsaday, Councillor Ho, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Canole, Councillor Kira, Councillor Martin, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Donovan. What a lovely way. Oh no, we're not quite at the end. Um, Councillor Kira, 17.11, car parking levels for infill. Thanks, take a second. Uh, uh, I have Councillor Abraham today. Okay, uh, look, um, it's just uh, it's just a requesting a brief report. Uh, we need a position on this. I, 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 it doesn't appear that we do have a position. That I, I couldn't find the administration comment, but from a discussion of the administration, uh, we don't have a position. The, the issue has been raised. Long-term traders uh, have raised with me the question of whether um, minimum parking requirements, uh, that is, a requirement for builders of apartment towers to supply a minimum amount of parking, um, uh, whether that whether we ought to have a position on it, I know there's some state um, there's some debate in state parliament about it. We shouldn't wait for that. Um, I think we need to be appraised on some of the parameters that might inform a position on this, at the very least. So it's just seeking uh, that the administration devote some time on feeding back to us some of the considerations around uh, whether or not they, uh, we should have a position on what uh, apartment towers should provide uh, themselves in terms of parking, instead of relying on soaking up uh, and taking away from existing parking on the street. That 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 is all this is about. Um, I suggest we support this and get that report. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Oh, I'm apologies. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, I've got a quick question of uh, administration. Um, do we currently, or uh, at some stage in the near future, have a, uh, a plan for the city of Adelaide? CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, we are in the process, the early stages, of developing a plan for the city of Adelaide. And certainly okay. um, car parking is certainly one of those components of a plan, yep. Yeah. Okay. And just 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 to confirm, the the, the plan will be, um, I guess you know, it will it will guide the, the, the growth areas, whether it's residential, commercial, might have some short term, medium term, long term um, uh, goals and other sorts of things. Yeah, it provides a policy framework on which yeah. we expect and anticipate growth and development of the city. Okay. The the reason I ask that. Um, uh, Lord Mayor and, and Council Members is because I think uh, this motion that Councillor Kerr has, uh, has brought in um, actually highlights a, a, a bigger uh, issue and I, and I think that there is, uh, is, is the plan and um, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what that plan um, uh, consists of. So uh, I, I endorse the, the motion to the Chamber, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. This is an excellent initiative by Councillor Kira. Um, if the city has a position regarding new developments and that they should have bicycle racks, then uh, again, we shouldn't discriminate between modes of transport. We should advocate for all of them. Um, if people need space for their cars, then uh, we should be suggesting that um, regarding developments as well. And just like we should be suggesting space for their e-scooters and other personal mobility devices as well. Thank you. I have Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I won't be supporting this one. Um, it comes at a time when lots of other cities around the world and around Australia are actually looking at getting rid of minimum um, car parking requirements um, for developments. And they're doing so not just because of environmental reasons, um, not just for environmental reasons, but because it drives up the cost of um, housing and apartments. And indeed, you can buy um, much cheaper um, housing and apartments in the CBD without um, having car parking uh, attached. So I am concerned um, about this. I think it's moving us in the wrong direction. I did um, some time ago now talk to administration when I was first elected about this very issue and my intention was to bring a motion forward that um, removed um, minimum uh, parking requirements but I'd understood that actually we we're in a, 
a fortunate position here in South Australia that they're not uh, mandated to the same extent as they are um, as uh, in Victoria and um, New South Wales. Um, to my mind, that puts South Australia in an advantageous um, position because it means there are uh, more opportunities for affordable um, housing in the CBD um, and uh, there is um, lower uh, carbon emission uh, transport being encouraged. So I don't know why when so many other cities um, around the world and around the, our nation are um, moving in that direction, Adelaide would be um, hurtling uh, in another direction. Um, so I'm not supportive of this. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm quite happy to support this motion because it is calling for a report. Um, I could happily provide that report in about five minutes and Google, if you uh, Google uh, anything along those lines, um, that information is, is uh, clearly available and supports lowering numbers of mandated car parking, but it's not removing it, it's finding that balance. And certainly um, we know from developers that the market assists with that. And uh, yeah, that information is out there. So it will take our admin about five minutes to pull it together. Um, so I'm quite happy to support that investigation to ensure that everyone has the information that they need. Thank you. I have no further speakers. So I will go to Councillor Kira to sum up. Thanks, Councilor Lord. May I, put, may I just put to the admin, uh, I mean, I thank, this, I thank Councillor Donovan for the support, um, but I would put to the admin that uh, it ought to, to take a bit longer than five minutes. Um, this must... Ten? Maybe uh, ten? <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> ten? Okay. <laughs> Can we have 20? Um, this, must address, um, this must address the impact on businesses of, um, a, of a loss of parking, particularly on businesses who rely, whose uh, trade is directed towards uh, consumers from out of Adelaide, from the suburbs. Um, this must address that. Uh, and uh, it must address um, the very realistic prospect that the future will see uh, not less cars, but a lot more, and they'll be electric. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. And I hope the administration covers uh, every aspect and in particular really covers the impact on business. Thanks. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, members, uh, we have one motion without notice, Councillor Kouros. Uh, I think that has been circulated or it certainly went to um, administration earlier. Uh, sorry, I haven't circulated it to everybody, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, Thank you, sorry. So, Councillor Martin, are you seconding? No. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. So I have a seconder in Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Cross, would you like to speak to your motion? Um, yes, I know this is going to be brought on by some criticism by, I'm sure, uh, several of the councillors here um tonight um but it's not taking away about what's what happened on the weekend and i'm not taking away what is going to happen this weekend but the fact that um to date um it has been reported that we've had zero cases zero new cases we've had zero active cases of covid 19. um so you know the Police Commissioner allowed a protest of 6,000 people to go ahead on the weekend. We're very worthy, of course, I'm not saying, not going to not want to enter into a debate about the reason for the protest. Um, when I wrote this motion at the time, they were talking about 10,000 fans to attend the showdown on the weekend, but I think now it's two with 240 in a confined room with corporate box um, allowed to attend the showdown. 
Um, with taking all of this into account with the, with the businesses like cafes, restaurants, pubs, nightclubs, events, all of that still can't happen, yet we can have a showdown and we can have a protest. And these businesses are doing it tough. We talked about it all, all tonight. We talked about recovery. We talked about rate rebate for them and they need to get on their feet and they need to get on their feet fast. I, we've all done the right thing. I've done the right thing. Everyone's done the right thing and everyone has done very well. And I congratulate South Australia for doing and the people of South Australia for doing such a great job. Um, but we've got zero cases. So my motion here uh, tonight, um, Lord Mayor, is to write to the Premier, the Health Minister, Health Minister and the Police Commissioner to call on the needs of the business community and to open up our state and to allow for our economy to recover. It's time. It's time we move forward. Um, we, we haven't got any evidence of the fact that we've got anything community transmitted. Um, and the fact that they felt safe enough for a showdown to happen this weekend and a, a protest to happen tells me that it is safe out there in our state. I do not want the borders to open. That is not what I'm asking. We still have to continue with the quarantine rules for people arriving for overseas. We know this is where the, this is where all this comes, um, if that comes into our state, it will have a reverse effect but let our local economy start thriving. Let us start picking up the pieces and let us start opening up our doors and having these restrictions that do not work and to continue being, let the businesses operate in the capacity they can, gyms, um, have funerals, um, uh, you know, restaurants, do not restricted cafes. It's just time that we let them have, go forward in recovery. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Kouros. Um, yes, completely agree with this sentiment. Um, uh, I think they should be allowing more people at the football, even if you had 10,000 in a stadium that fits over 50,000, you could still be uh, over and above the distancing requirements. But um, uh, look, it's, it's very clear that um, uh, we are potentially approaching a point where uh, COVID has been uh, eradicated in South Australia, touch wood, uh, notwithstanding some uh, cases are asymptomatic, but we haven't seen any outbreaks. So I'm assuming we don't really have any here. Um, uh, I do think the motion has summed it up correctly. We need a hard border close. We need to keep our borders closed and we need to open up entirely 100% within South Australia um, uh, that's how we get uh, things happening here again. That's how we get uh, uh, significant portions of our economy functioning again. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. You have got to be joking. This is absolutely incredible. We have the CEO of SA Health. We have the Chief Medical Officer. We have the Police Commissioner and their slew of personnel who are analysing every aspect of this and who are giving recommendations and little old City of Adelaide with our journalist and our little health psychologist and our realtor and our whatever else we have, business owners, we think we should be giving advice as to who, how we should be lifting COVID restrictions. Absolutely laughable. This is a great example of how we are meddling in things for which we have no expertise. I do not endorse this in any way, shape or form. And any letter from us to the Premier or anyone else would be flipped off into the distance, paper aeroplanes aside, and no, no uh, consideration would be given to it whatsoever because there are far more qualified people than us who are looking at all of the information that we do not have access to and making much more considered decisions than we could possibly do at two o'clock in the morning in our council meeting. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I totally agree with uh, Councillor Donovan. I think it is absolute madness for us to be telling health experts what they should be doing in terms of managing this pandemic. I mean, we are not health experts. We need to be listening to their advice. And I actually think one of the great hallmarks 
of um, the success of Australia's COVID-19 response has been politicians have got out of the equation, backed off and actually listened to the experts. And that's what we should be doing. It's not our role to be uh, asking or telling the state government what they should be doing with respect to restrictions. I totally understand um, the concerns of um, businesses in, uh, in this regard, but really let's stick in our lane. I think this would be very embarrassing for council to go down this path. Um, and Lord Mayor, if you do send the letter, I will be um, calling a division and I request that the letter notes who voted in favour and who voted against the um, resolution so that that is also communicated to the government because I don't want my name associated with this. Boogada, boogada. Councillor Kira. <laughs> um, Lord Mayor, there seems to be a real uh, taste for, uh, for uh, absolutely cutting off our arms uh, and absolutely delegating away our jobs and our roles as councillors this evening. You know, we can't, we're not allowed, we're not allowed to approve what goes up, uh, what co may or may not go up on, as on the biggest mural in the city. We're not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to advocate on behalf of our ratepayers and constituents to the state government. Well, actually, we are allowed to do that. We can do that. Uh, in fact, that is our remit uh, as councillors. Um, I can see, uh, look, Councillor Donovan has, ra has raised legitimate concerns about this. Yes, um, there are, there will be countervailing issues. Um, I'm going to suggest an, an amendment, uh, which hopefully we'll just see this through. Um, I mean, if Councillor Kouros would, may want it as a variation, I don't want to take claim over this uh, motion, but so whichever it is, I'll just put it up. Um, and that will be uh, that the, uh, at number three, um, ask the Lord Mayor to write to the Premier, Health Minister and Police Commissioner, uh, uh, um, uh, pointing or reiterating uh, to them, oh, sorry, reiterating the vital need for our economy um, to recover rapidly uh, and restrictions to be lifted rapidly, um, bearing in mind bearing in mind current advice from health uh, um, experts, Some, something like that. Do you know what I mean? I mean, maybe Mary, you might have better wording, but um, so we, we basically say to them, what we, the essence I think of this motion is to convey to them uh, that we are mindful, we, our ratepayers, our constituents are noting uh, 6,000 people protesting uh, when uh, there's supposed to be a, a restriction in place. They're noting all of this. Uh, there's nothing wrong with us saying, look, um, we are really feeling the pain. They know this, they're feeling the pain too, but I, I think re reiterating, uh, reiterating the need to renew the economy by lifting restrictions uh, you know, as soon as possible, something of that nature. Mary, do you... Do you um... Okay, so I have to ask Councillor Kuros whether she wants to... Uh, I just, I'm just going to check whether I can... Is, is I'm not whether clear that's, uh, the exact wording. Can we just a have... Variation a... or whether I need a seconder? So, Councillor Kuros, can you have a look at what he's written there? I can't see it actually, but anyway. Okay, can you make the screen a bit bigger? So, it basically says, ask the Lord Mayor to write to the Premier, Health Minister and Police Commissioner, reiterating the vital need for our economy to recover rapidly and restrictions to be lifted rapidly, bearing in mind advice from health professionals. Sure. You don't have to. <laughs> if that helps everybody, I mean, um, the, the whole point of this... Bob's shaking his head, so I think that's a good, that's a thumbs up. Oh, well, you. you know, in all honesty... Oh. Sorry, I have you, I just, I just, um, I don't need you to speak to it. I just need to know whether you're going to accept it as variation and then I'll go to your seconder to see if he will accept it as variation. Then I'll have leave of the council. Okay, Sorry. I accept it as a variation. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, do you accept that? There's a variation. Um, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. No, I need a yes or a no. Uh, yes. Right. Uh, members, I just a quick show of hands. Are you happy to accept that as variation? Uh, I'm assuming, Mary, your hand is going up. Yes, no. So uh, I don't know that I have enough numbers there. I've got 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. That's accepted as variation. Um, you have spoken to it. Uh, Jesse, is there anything else you wanted to add before? No, I, look, I, I mean, I hope this doesn't... I, I don't want to cause angst for Councillor Kuros. Um, I mean, I, I think I think it can still be... I, I, I don't see that this changes the essence. We're writing to uh, the state government. We're saying... I think the essence of this is preserved, and I think it's very good for Councillor Kuros to do this, because that is what we, we're here to do in advocacy, and that is we are noting that we're allowing protests uh, and football games. Okay. That's the main thing. Um, I think that's preserved here. So I, I think this this um, covers all the bases. I don't know why Councillor Sims and Councillor Donovan. I don't know. I can't see Councillor Donovan. I certainly don't understand why Councillor Sims was shaking his head about this. Okay. Uh, I'll go to Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I think Councillor Kerr hit the nail on the head. What we are doing is we are advocating on behalf of 80% of our ratepayers. The 80% of the ratepayers are businesses, and that's who, are, that's who we're advocating for in this instance. Um, to to Councillor Sims' point, Councillor Sims, you had a motion earlier on uh, in, in this meeting where it was essentially writing a letter um, to, uh, to, to the Prime Minister. So... Advocacy is part of uh, part of what we do, but especially given that we're advocating not on 5, 10 or 20 percent of our ratepayers, of 80 percent of our ratepayers. That's who we are advocating for. So uh, I, 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 I say um, uh, this, this is something that, uh, uh, that definitely um, falls within our jurisdiction as, as councillors. And I highly endorse this, uh, uh, this motion to, to the chamber. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Martin, I will click and you will click. Thank click. you. Working. Okay. Um, look, I, I, um, I can't find the humour in this that others can. Um, I, I do think it, it, it is uh, appalling that um, a, an elected member should be suggesting these, and I'm using the words exactly, these restrictions do not work. We have no community transmission. Uh, if the protest is okay, it is safe. Now, uh, I, um, I have a GP, a, a medical advisor, who never gives me advice about real estate. And uh, consequently, I don't take medical advice from real estate agents, uh, and nor should anyone else nor should they take them from a former journalist or um, a, a, a purveyor of um, goods in the central market. No one in this room has any quine, kind of qualification to make any observation about when it is the appropriate moment to rapidly ease restrictions. Moreover, I think it's slightly offensive to a premier who insists he will lift the restrictions as soon as he is able to write to him to say, please lift the restrictions as soon as you're able. Uh, the Premier is well aware of the need to look after our economy. Um, the Premier, his government and his health advisors are well aware of the need to look after the broader community. And uh, uh, to paraphrase uh, uh, Councillor Abraham today's um, um, skewed observation, 80% of the people in South Australia are not small businesses. In fact, I venture to say about 90% of them are ordinary non-business people who have legitimate concerns about what is a state of emergency in South Australia. They are concerned for their health and for their family's health, and they are prepared to leave that in the hands of the experts. For the city of Adelaide to think that it has a better take on how to handle a pandemic is overreach beyond my wildest estimations. Thank you. Councillor Kouros to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm a little bit taken back with some things that are said here because I never said these restrictions don't work. Councillor Martin is really good at manipulating, creating conspiracy theories. I'll give him 10 out of 10 for that. I never said that. I merely quoted what was said 
on the uh, SA Health uh, stating that there are zero cases and you have zero active cases. I have quoted what is on their website. I'm actually even taken back by Councillor Donovan speaking in such a tone that it was so derogatory that I can't comprehend, I just was completely taken back by that. This is an advocacy piece. This is exactly what the former Lord Mayor Martin Hazy went on 5AA today and spoke about how the businesses feel with seeing a protest and the showdown happening and they are suffering and doing the right thing. This is, as what Councillor Abraham today said, for the 80% of our ratepayers who sit, at, sit who work very hard and are adhering to all the restrictions that are in place and then seeing a protest and then seeing a mass gathering happening this weekend are feeling a little bit taken back by this. If, if you cannot see that, I'm, then I, I don't know what more I can do to help them convince you that this is not about me being a medical professional and telling them how to do their job, nor am I telling the Premier how to do his job. I'm calling upon him to actually take in consideration our ratepayers and for them to be allowed to start building their business back and recovering from this. I am appalled at this council, at these councillors that speak to me as though I am here to actually... Yeah, Councillor Kura, sorry, um, I'll stick to the motion before you. That was just completely wrong. I am yeah. not going against the advice of the Health Minister. I have never said the restrictions don't work. This is for the business out there that are doing tough. When you go and get your latte in the morning, they've actually have been there since 6 a.m. When you actually sit down and you eat and you enjoy that food, you don't know the blood, sweat and tears that goes behind the scenes. When that gym owner opens up his gym, right? He has to count the numbers that come in and to reject people that can't come in that are paid for a membership, they struggle. And that is, this is for them that have watched the events unfold over the last week. Prior to, to these events unfolding, I was with you. Let's just follow exactly what they say. I was with you. Let's just tread carefully because they know, and they do know, and I'm not taking it away. But if you allow a protest to happen, and if you allow a showdown to happen, come on. What about the small guy out there? Okay. Uh, I have Councillor Abraham today. You had a point of clarification. Yeah, th thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, Councillor Kuros just confirmed it. I just wanted to um, uh, clarify. Councillor Martin said that um, I said something along the lines of 80% of people in South Australia. I was actually uh, referring to 80% of our uh, uh, rates coming from, from businesses. But as I said, Councillor Kuros uh, just confirmed that for me. Okay. Uh, members, with that, we will go to the vote. Councillor Martin, I'm sorry that we, we've summed up. Uh, I have asked all members if they have a point of clarification or a point of order to please use the chat. If you can use the chat, that makes it much easier for me to know whether hands are just up or not. Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, can, can I just say I made it clear um, as a point of clarification, I urge Councillor Abraham today to listen to the tape. I said in, in answer to his suggestion that 80% of our rate payers are small or business owners, that 80% of the people of South Australia are not business owners. And then I went on okay. further. Okay. No, Lord you. Mayor, additionally, I said, Councillor Kouros said these restrictions do not work because I wrote it down and I urge her to listen to the tape and then okay. she will understand she said it. Thank you. Councillor Kouros, I'm sorry, I am not accepting any points of clarification unless they come through on the chat. It was a mistake, sorry. Thank sorry. you. Members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. <coughs> Members, that takes us to item 
item 19.1, that would be uh, you waving at me, Councillor Martin, uh, at Councillor Sims, which I would say is division. So, members, division's been called. If you please raise your hand until Jenny calls your name. Councillor Canole, Councillor Kouros, Councillor Ho, Councillor Kira, Councillor Abrahams Day and Deputy Lord Mayor. All in favour, thank, thank you. very much. Uh, Councillors, we have item 19.1, which is exclusion to the public. Councillors, there's one further item presented with a request for consideration and confidence. The item will require a motion decision to order the exclusion of public to enable consideration and confidence. Um, if I could have a move and a seconder for a motion to order the exclusion of public for item 20.1. Councillor Martin, notice on a uh, question on notice winter lights. I uh, have got Councillor Martin and Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, members, any discussion? If not, I'll go to the vote. Those in favour? So, Councillor Martin, Rather than saying, oh, Lord Mayor, uh, and I can read lips, um, you, are, you are unmuted. Uh, Lord Mayor, I had my hand raised. It was cancelled. The reason I had my hand raised was to move a motion, a further motion without notice, um, which um, uh, Councillor Moran asked me to raise. And the second thing was to say to you, I am withdrawing 20.1, uh, so there is no need for item 19.1. Thank you. Excellent. Um, the motion without notice, I uh, apologise. The next motion on, on the agenda was actually the exclusion. Um, what was the motion without notice that you're moving on behalf of someone who's not here? Well, um, uh, it now becomes my motion um, uh, that Council One sends a delegation, including the Lord Mayor and the Deputy Lord Mayor, to speak to the Premier to provide input into the review of the delivery of homeless services the State Government is currently undertaking, and two, suggests assisting the review by sharing our intimate knowledge of the City and proposing the possibility of a repurposed bus station or the repair of 430 Morford Street which was built by the Salvation Army to house the homeless and is currently empty. Uh, I will look to the council for a seconder. Councillor Sims, um, electronic hands, please. Sorry, I'm looking down here for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. Um, um, uh, Jenny, have you got that up on the screen? No, I haven't, Lord Mayor. Sorry, I wasn't aware of that one. We had. I was just going back to I'm going to go back to my emails and see if it's the same. As no, Council. if you look at seventeen point five, it is Councillor Moran's motion oh, that was withdrawn that. because she left prior to the um, confidential reports. So. Uh, she wasn't able to be here for the motions on notice. Okay, apologies. I'll just go and get that one for us. Thank you. Do you want me to speak to it uh, to save uh, time, Lord Mayor? Well, I would imagine if, if everybody's seen it at 17.5 on the agenda, um, yes, if you'd like to speak to it, and then I'll go to Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, look, uh, Councillor Moran apologises uh, for not being here to the motion. Um, she asked me to explain that, um, in her words, these ridiculous meetings contravene all our health and safety standards. Please move this motion for me. Thank you. Are you talking to the motion, Councillor? Yeah, I am. I am. I, I'm demonstrating to you, Lord Mayor, that uh, I am representing uh, a motion for another councillor, although... And I must say to you, Lord Mayor, uh, Councillor Moran and I sometimes disagree on uh, matters such as Hutt Street, but this motion in relation to the uh, review of delivery of homeless services does have my endorsement. Um, Councillor Moran has proposed a delegation. I understand that she initially proposed that Councillor Mackey be part of it, but that has been withdrawn. Uh, and that it is the intention that the Lord Mayor and the Deputy Lord Mayor should approach uh, the government, the Premier, 
um, to discuss the delivery of homeless services, but particularly to raise the issues of accommodation. Um, it, it is the view of many people in this city that the Salvation Army headquarters, located just off Whit Whitnor Square on Morford Street uh, at 4.30, um, which has been empty for more than a decade, should be either uh, demolished and replaced or repurposed as instant accommodation to provide a transition for people who are living on the streets uh, and uh, as they are being accommodated in more permanent accommodation. Furthermore, um, it is proposed that the, uh, the bus station, which uh, the city owns, uh, could be repurposed again in the interests of providing accommodation. Now, the detail of how that's done is a matter of negotiation, but it is possible that the, uh, the state and federal governments may well provide assistance and a means by which the city could, in collaboration with other parties, provide that valuable service. Um, I commend this to members and I, I seek their support. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Reserve my right, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Oh, did you? Do you uh, no, it's, no, I'm okay. I'm all good. Thanks. Yes. Thank you, uh, Councillor Abraham. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I've got a quick question of administration. Um, number 430 Morford Street. Um, so, um, who currently owns and operates um, those premises? I, I can answer that. Sure you're I'm sorry? I can answer that if you don't know. Yeah, sure, if you can. Yeah, yeah that is actually uh, owned by the Salvation Army. Okay. Um, well, I, I guess I'll, I'll start speaking to the motion. I, I think I think it's a bit silly uh, for uh, for any elected member to um, throw in uh, an address of a property that uh, council has no ownership of. Um, I, I I think this motion is premature. I don't think the mover of the motion truly understands um, what uh, what homelessness uh, is is all about. And you know what? For the for the sake of the time, I'll, I'll leave it at that, and uh, let's let's wrap it up and go home. Okay. Uh, I have no more speakers, so I will go back to the mover to sum up. Councillor Martin. Oh, sorry, I clicked again. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I, I assure my colleague that I do understand homelessness and I have voted consistently to assist uh, the homeless, um, most notably tonight in supporting uh, the rescission of the motion that will lead to the capping of thank visitations. Thank you, the Councillor Martin. We're talking to your motion that's before us at the moment. Yes, but analogy is important, Lord. Uh, no, yeah. analogies, uh, we, we don't need to speak about other motions. We're talking about this one now. Fine. Um, and I do understand uh, what uh, 430 uh, Morford Street is, and uh, for the benefit of my colleagues who may not know the building, um, it is directly behind uh, the Salvation Army store uh, at Morford Street. It is a multi-storey building. My guess is it's about six or seven storeys. It was used to provide accommodation for the homeless for many decades until about 10 years ago when it closed and uh, other members uh, may have more intimate knowledge but my understanding is that the premises were closed because of fire safety risks and the cost of remediating um, uh, the problem were so great that it was resolved it was better to close the premises. Now that may or may not be the position but the view is and it is a view that is held fairly widely in the community that when we have so many people on the streets who are homeless, who are looking for support. It seems a shame that a building that was designed for that purpose is not being put to that use. And so the intention is merely to provide a discussion point, as the second part of the motion says, with the state government for any delegation that uh, discusses the delivery of homeless services. Uh, and with that, um, I thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, members. We'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against?
that is lost. Members, thank you all for a very pleasant evening. Uh, at the moment, I will now call the meeting close at 20 past 12. Thank you. We'll see you all in the next little while.